Good evening to you, wherever you happen to be in the world. Captain Coder here on this beautiful Wednesday, everybody. Captain Coder on Godot Official. Folks, Godot Engine Official invited me to come on here. Have a great time. Let's get going. It's so nice to see all you beautiful people out there. Go Engine Official, thank you so much for bringing me on. Seribot, great to see you, Nightbot. Always a pleasure. Zaft, how you been, friend? Welcome back. Welcome in. I hope you're excited for a wonderful day of Godotin. Godotin. We're going to get some Godot going. Mr. Glick, welcome in. First time here. Glad to have you. Cubist Dev, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching over us, taking care of us. Jeff86, welcome to the stream. Happy, happy Wednesday, my friend. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to be with you guys. I'm so excited to be learning, to be coding, to be growing with you. Lens and Lantern, so wonderful to see you, my friend. Happy day to you. KV Milos, it's always a pleasure. Plus mid, happy Wednesday. How you been, friend? I hope you're doing wonderful. Injection, I hope you're excited for a project. We're going to be designing a class project today. So for people who don't know, I am Captain Coder. Captain Coder is me, and me is Captain Coder. And Captain Coder is... A computer science, oh, hang on, too close. A computer science educator. I teach computer science and programming. It's a full-time job. My full-time job, Monday to Friday, teaching computer science and programming at a school for ages 10 to 14, young children, sculpting the minds of the future. And this year, I'm so excited to announce I'm gonna be teaching a class about Godot. We're gonna be Godoting it today. Also a Godot teacher, let's go, RG, our Gil, our Gil, how should I, should I call you, RG? Let me know if, I'm, if I ever pronounce your name wrong. Feel free to correct me. I love to see you guys here. Night Owl Game, great to see you. Great to have you here. I hope you're having a beautiful day, everybody. And so we're going to be designing a class project today for a beginner class in Godot. One of my favorite projects to give students is going to be a, uh, 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 one of my favorite projects to do a space schmup, top-down space shoot 'em up game. It's super fun. There's so many different things we can learn about when we're doing it. And, and it's super, super simple to get started, get going, and then expand from there. It's all about getting some on the stream. That's right, Zaft. That's right. We got to get that dopamine going. Got to get that dopamine hit. Does my dopamine command work here? No, my dopamine command doesn't work here. Oh no, dopamine. Here, I can do it on my team. There it is. Oh, I got We're going to get that dopamine. Oh, oh, no, that one doesn't work. What are the other ones? The other one should work. Let's see. Let's try this one. Let's try this one. Does my woe command work? No. What about my nice command? I thought I got it working. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. I can I can do them over here. Here we go. We can do we can do some woe Whoa. commands. We get the nice commands. It's all right. We got this. We got this. We can make it work. Don't worry about it. What about hat? A2 Dre, we're going to see how the hat command works. The hat command definitely doesn't work because it's on my channel points, but we're going to make it happen. So wonderful to have all you beautiful people here. The right project for the youth. Let's go. That's exactly right. Dre, how you been, friend? Folks, I hope you're so excited. I hope you're... I can't... I, I, I'm, I'm so excited, folks. We're going to get going. we got to get that dopamine going. Get your cup of coffee. Get your tea. Get your... Get whatever kind... Maybe you got orange juice. Maybe you got apple juice. Maybe you're drinking milk. Whatever type of fuel you have for your project, for what you're doing today, get it there. Take a couple sips. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's good. And we're going to hop right into it, folks. I have already started out here. I made myself, a, <laughs> this is more enthusiasm than I have in a whole month plus mid. Welcome in. I'm glad you're here with us. Look, that's what we're doing. So we're doing A2 Dre. I, if, you know what you can do? If you happen to go over to my chat, you can still use all of the commands over there. But A2 Dre wants a hat. We'll get a hat going. A2 Dre, we'll get a hat just for you, my friend. Just for you. The Yagich Holy Cannoli. Welcome into the stream. Thank you so much for the amazing raid. How was your stream? Tell us all about it. What were you working on? The Yagich raiding us. We got the Yagich raiding us. 
Tell us all about your stream. Yeah, Geech, tell us all about it. What were you working on? Give us, give us, give us the skivvy. Give us the rundown. Give us the looky loo. Give us the looky loo. Uh, uh, are, are links allowed in this chat? I don't know. I'm not in charge here. I'm not in charge. I, look, I may look like I'm in charge. I may look like I'm in charge, but I'm not. Give the captain a fall. It's a damn freaking contagious photo. I thank you so much for the compliment. I appreciate that. Look, I do my best to do my duty to the crew and the company we keep here. I already managed to get together. I got this, um, we, we went ahead and did a GitHub repository for us. It's working on my node-based stream control app mod in Godot. Yo, that sounds so cool. That sounds so cool. Uh, how's it coming along? How much prog, how long have you been working on it? What's your progress on it? What are we gonna get in there and do with it? What, what, are, your, what are your plans? Also folks, if you have a question, if you wanna ask me something, I know sometimes the chat can get a little crazy. x let's show this, says it. I think I tested this one before. Uh, ask question. I think this one works. Yeah, if you have a question, exclamation point Q, it'll go ahead and queue it up here, put your name in the chat, and it actually logs it for me. Felgorn, welcome to the stream. Great to have you here on this beautiful day. Hope you're having a beautiful day. Where'd my, where'd my question queue go? There it is. It'll actually add it to my questions queue here. Whatever you say, the exclamation point queue. I did get that one working. I thought I got some of the other ones working, but I guess not. I guess not. What's going on with those? Hang on, let me take a look. Let me take a look, why don't those work? They should work. What about sus? Someone try exclamation sus. The Sasquatch works, we got a Sasquatch. What is the dopamine? Dopamine. What is going on with my dopamine command? Oh no, my dopamine command doesn't work. I'm so sad about that. The sus works though. We could probably do a doy as well. Let's try that one. No, the doy command, the hate command, I, they should be here. What's going on? Hang on. Let's see, let's double check it. We gotta get it, we gotta see what's going on here. Maybe is it because if the 30 party chat is, hey, yeah, it should totally work. Is it just not coming through in the dashboard here? It is coming through. I don't know. Folks, it's okay. We're gonna keep going. Been working on it for about a year now. Wow, still in alpha, but it's got OBS and Twitch integrations. The plan is to let people make automations and bots easily. That sounds awesome. I can't wait to hear more about that, Yagich. If you got a raid and run, no worries, but thank you so much for the raid in here. They're not going to be able to pay attention. I'm 25 and I'm too late for this class. It's never too late. Yet, it's never too late. You can always come in. You're always welcome here. You're always welcome to learn something new. Look, I can do the hey. You in the back. There we go. Pay you in attention. the back. Pay attention. I'm 30. You're good. Sketchy. That's right. You're never too old to learn something new, folks. I did go ahead and made a Git repository for us to get started with to use. I've actually already cloned it. And then we're gonna go through the process of starting up a Godot project from scratch. Bot, you're 14, that's so exciting. Welcome to the stream. I hope you're excited to learn something today. We're gonna get going, we're gonna do some stuff. I happen to, I'm turning 18 later this year. I'm turning 18 later. It, it, for the second time, I'll be, it'll be my second 18th birthday. So it's okay, it's okay. You know, you're as old as you feel, you're as young as you feel is what I should say. So what we want to do, I'm gonna be taking screenshots through this process as well so that we can actually keep track of everything we've done here. So I'm gonna go over to my Google Drive. Hang on, oh no! We go to my Google Drive here. Why is this not logged into my Captain Coder account? Hang on. That's okay. Captain Coder's Academy. Perfect. <laughs> I should have hit this first. Then no one would know. No one would know. We'd just be all blurred out. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. What's this asking me? What's this? I've never seen this before in my, in my life. Let's see. Excellent, perfect. Let's create a new document here. We're gonna use this Google document to track. This is the process I use when I create class projects. Take notes for myself, take screenshots as I go, and then I massage it out a little bit later. Let's turn that blur off so you guys can see again. If you're old, you have more experience, and that's good. Look, experience comes in time. What they, you know, what they say is it takes about 10,000 hours to become an expert at something. So I am not even close to an expert in Godot. 
I do consider myself an expert in computer science and programming. I have, what would we say, something, uh, uh, how many years of experience? I think we did a little bit of a study. We did a, I had my students try and calculate. I think I have about 40,000 hours of programming experience. Somewhere between 30 and 40,000 hours is probably pretty accurate. So I do think I'm pretty good at programming. I'm, I'm relatively new to game dev. I've only been doing game dev for about 19 months. 19 months and I've been using, I've, I've known about Godot for a long time. I thought game dev could be a good way to learn how to teach programming, but I just recently started dipping my toes into the game dev world and it's exciting. I've had so much fun doing it the last couple of years, but as we go along here, uh, the Twilight Imperium back there. Yeah. Look at, look, I, we have a couple games. Some people, th I, look, I'm not that into board games. I do have a few back here. I can almost fit all of them on these shelves. When I got these shelves, I was excited. I thought it's going to be able to fit all my board games. I just have a couple. I just have a couple. I thought I'd be able to fit most of them back there, but I was able to fit at about half of them, about half of them. So, but that's okay. That's okay. Maybe someday I'll have a big enough wall to have all my games on it. <laughs> completely off game dev besides back end APS. I worked in the industry for a long time uh, working on compilers. It's sort of like what my background compilers programming languages, and then I did a bunch of machine learning stuff for a startup. Sketch 011 and Luch94, great to see you. Waves offline, it's always a pleasure to have you around. Yeah, Twilight Imperium's a fantastic game. Now, compilers are cool. Yeah, my first real job, my first real job as a programmer was actually working on a Java compiler creating a custom Java virtual machine for a computer. This was back in the days of Java 1.5. We're on Java like 9,000 now. What version of Java? Java 20 or something? Back when it was before it was Java 5 and 6, Java 1.4 was the version of Java we were using. And we wanted to be able to compile for a supercomputer that had 6,000 cores. And so my first real job was having a custom Java virtual machine that we could use to compile Java projects to take advantage of this giant supercomputer. It was a super cool project. I, will, I have fond memories of it. All right. So the first thing I want to do is we have our Godot project here. And for my students, we want to go through the process of showing them how to create a new Godot project. So what we're going to do is we're going to create this little screenshot here. I'm using this program here. Take a screenshot of this. We're going to go ahead and open it up in our image editor. And what we're going to say is we're just going to draw some boxes here. We're going to click new, draw some arrows to it so that we have this whole process marked down for them. So click new, and then I can copy this to my clipboard, save this image for later use. And so I'm just going to document my whole process for my students. And then we're going to come back and then we're going to come through and add in text. We're going to add in text later. But basically, I said, uh, create a new project. This is like step one. Create a new project. I'm going to take some screenshots as we go to get this going along. I worked on AI, artificial vision, a lot of mass production projects, mobile and helicopter testing hard software. Very cool. I did some work in what's called computer vision. It wasn't called artificial vision, but computer vision, human vision. And I worked for, I worked for this company that uh, did oil drilling. They did oil drilling and they had, they wanted to, there's a couple different jobs they did, but this is the one that comes to mind. They had a drill that it was, it had a fisheye lens at the end and they needed to take that fisheye lens camera and do some analysis to know what type of material they were coming in contact with and using human vision, computer vision, and machine learning coming up with some algorithms for them to detect different stuff uh, because the remote control driving of it was very difficult uh, without being able to see. Um, okay, so we're gonna create a new project here, click new. This window's gonna pop up and we're gonna say create a new project. We're gonna just go ahead and put this in. I'm gonna put this in, hang on, let's blur it real quick just to be safe just to be safe here. I worked for a project of wheel production and quality assurance. Nice. Are you also going to be publishing the student tutorial online? Yes, everything I'm making today is gonna to be open source, available for anyone and everyone to use in their classroom or for their own purposes. Yeah, this is a finite singularity blur. So I didn't write this blur, but Finite Singularity, this is an OBS plugin that is open source and available to anyone. Let's go ahead and go over to 
my project here. Interesting. I'm just navigating my computer file system here. Uh, you guys don't, there's nothing here. I'm just planning to be safe, safe and secure here. Um, this is called Godot class project. Let's create a new folder here. It's going to be called space shooter, space shooter like this. Select current folder. Okay. So now we're going to unblur. We're going to take another screenshot here. So do space shooter, space shooter compatibility. We're going to take a little screenshot on this here. We're planning to deploy this for the web. So we want to make sure we're on compatibility. So I'm going to take another screenshot here. I'm going to open up my image editor and I'm going to mark each of the different spots here. So we're going to highlight this. 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 I have my students use Git. This is sort of an optional one. And then we do the create and edit here. And then I'm going to put little numbers. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, and five. We're going to go ahead and copy this to my clipboard and go ahead and save this image up here. So I sort of have this as a documentation. Wormius, welcome into the stream. Hope you're having a beautiful day. Happy Wednesday, my friend. I hope you're excited to be here. I'm super excited. We're making a space shooter. We're going to document the whole process, create a whole thing. Instant tile map. Um, oh, yeah, with the with the, the blur. Absolutely. Wormius, what a cool name. What a cool name. Okay, let's hop over here. We're going to come back over. We're going to go ahead and create and edit. This should open up the Godot editor. And then we're going to get started on it. We're going to get going. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be great. It's going to be grand. So here's our Godot editor. The first thing we want to do, we're going to make a 2D game. So we're going to go ahead and click over on 2D scene here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another screenshot here of the editor. And I'm just going to mark that I want the student to click on the 2D scene. All right. So I'm going to mark over here that I want them to click on 2D scene like that. Okay. Just draw an arrow to it so it's a little bit easier to see. Copy to clipboard. Go ahead and add this to our documentation here, 2D scene. And then they should see this. So we'll take a screenshot of the screen that they should see here. And then we also are going to want to press save. Let's take a screenshot of this 2D scene. The most important thing is that they should see this in their scenes and then it should say unsaved. Oops, one more little thing here, unsaved. And we're gonna put a little number here for them to, to, to sort of note one and two. We'll call that out in our write-up. Copy that to our clipboard. Go ahead and save this over in our documentation so we have it for later. All right. And then uh, click save. And when this pulls up the save scene, we're going to call this our main scene. So I want to go ahead and screenshot this now as well. And denote that when we create this, going to save our scene, we want to call it main. And then we want to click save. So we'll go ahead and do that as well. We'll put a little one here, a two here, and this will be part of our documentation we actually do that right up as well okay like that save and then i want to call out to the students that once we save it the things to notice when they've done this successfully is that they're going to have a main here and then a main down here these things are related these two things are related we'll draw a little arrow between them there let's change the color of that arrow Oh, sorry, that line. There we go. So it sort of matches. Go ahead and copy this to my clipboard as well. Bring this over to my documentation. Perfect. Lance, wonderful to see you. It's doing wonderful. I'm doing absolutely wonderful. I'm still recovering from COVID. I got, I still, still a little bit sick. So I still got a little bit of something in my throat here, but it's not too bad. Habuka, I am official. That's right. Great to see you. Excuse me there. Binary State Machine is the easiest way to start doing AI, and it's easy to allow you to control other stuff like animation. So yeah, enemy AI, uh, State Machine is a great way to do it, especially if you have different sort of transitions and zones and different behaviors that it can do. That's a great thing. Lance wants to get another hat on this deck. Let's do it. Let's get another hat. Thank you for the hat, Lance. Let's do it. 
How's this hat? Do you like this one? How's that one look? Lance, what do you think? What do you think? You want this hat? Hang on. Let's take a vote. Let's take a vote. We can do hat one, hat one, hat two, hat one, hat two, or hat three. Which hat do we want? One, two, or three. Hat one's perfect. Let's do it. Hat one. There it is. Thank you for the hat, Lance. Hope you're having a beautiful day, my friend. How you been? Thank you so much for joining in on us here. All the hats, Wormius, that's right, all of them. Mr. Glick, we'll get there. We'll get there. Don't you worry. We're going to be wearing many, plenty, many, many, plenty of hats. Don't you worry. We'll wear many, as many hats as we need to wear to get there, if you know what I mean. And, and I don't know what I mean, so I hope someone does. Limitation of SF, FSM is in the finite, so no creativity, but that is a more complex thing. It depends. Game, board game engine stream, that's right, EGO, Ego VP, welcome in. Greetings from Argentina, greetings from the United States. We, it's so awesome to be here. We got people from all over the world here. It's amazing, doing great. Thank you for uh, working on something for two nerdy nerds. Very cool. I thought I'm on Godot stream, not TF2 stream. <laughs> that's a Dr. Revert. Not to revert. We're doing some good dough. We're learning. Uh, 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 I don't, Anna. Anna, I'm going to go with Anna. Let me know if I'm pronouncing right. Anna Lu, Luzizia. I'm sorry. Anna Luisa. Anna Lul Luisa. Anna Lul Luisa. I got it. Perfect. First time. Easy. Fashion has no limits. Look, look. The only limit, the only limit is your imagination. When it comes to fashion, the only limit is you. The only limit out there is you. I love watching the videos from the TF2 voice actors. <laughs> All right. So we're going to hop back in here. We got our main scene going here. All right. So we have a main scene. We have a node. We want to get in a, a, a thing to represent our player character. Didn't want to just have a small set of states, but maybe generate with AI as well. Well, we'll get there. We'll talk about AI a little bit. I don't know if we'll do finite state machine for this project. This is like a starter project. Someone who's never done any game dev, any program, and I want this to be approachable for them. So we'll probably won't do finite state machine on this project, but that would be a great add on. Say, okay, well now we want to start talking about, we have different types of enemies, enemies that patrol, enemies that uh, chase you, enemies that have different behaviors depending on the state of the world around them. But you can do, Finite Stay Machine is a great way to reduce complexity. One of the things I love to do when I am teaching classes, I don't like students, students get nervous about making art, doing those things. One of my favorite resources is Kenny. There's tons of open source, copyright free public domain art that Kenny has made for us to use. And one of my favorite assets that Kenny provides for us, there's a look at all these amazing assets. Actually, these, I love coming here and trying to be inspired on what should I do? Uh, being inspired uh, on all of these things. Oh, just an enemy. It makes me think of chat. GPT. Yeah. Artificial intelligence is a super overloaded word, isn't it? Absolutely. One of my favorite ones. Look at all these cool monster builder pack. This is a, a really cool one. If you want to teach, ooh, maybe we'll do this project instead. This is a really cool project in which you have a like character creator. So this is a project I've done with students before. A character creator where you, you have different body shapes, different eyes, different antennas, and then you can swap these colors out. You can swap these colors. This is a really cool project too. It's a little less exciting for some students because you don't get to move around, but this is a really good project if you wanna teach students about doing user interface. So adding buttons, sliders, different like a color wheel. This is such a perfect asset for doing that. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna make a space shooter today. We're making a space. I don't wanna get too distracted. I might get a little bit too distracted here. Uh, but my favorite one, maybe I should just search for it. My favorite one or one of my favorite ones to work with students from Starta is the space shooter package the space shooter redux package this is a perfect starter asset that anyone can use to create a space shoot 'em up game in godot or any engine but godot is what we're going to be using today and their creative commons c0 this means they're open source 
public domain. You don't even have to give credit to, to Kenny, but we're going to. And the best part about this type of license is you can take these and you can modify them. You can change them out, do all kinds of cool stuff with them. So we're going to go ahead and download this here. And it's probably going to say I already have this file downloaded because I've downloaded this particular asset a million times. All right, so we're going to pull this in here. Um, I made it public. RG, what would you make public? Sorry, I missed it. Um, working on a mini app to create storytelling dialogues and quests using Llama 3. Ooh. What data set are you using? What data set are you using to make your stories? That sounds really cool. I have this idea. One of the classes I teach is a class on writing um, one of my favorite classes that I teach. Oh, Milos, I missed your questions. Let me go check those out real quick. Uh, apologies. I didn't, it doesn't, didn't play a sound for me. Uh, let's take a look at this. KV Milos, I'm so sorry I missed your questions. Do the teenagers teach you some Gen Alpha slang while you're teaching? Um, I definitely overhear it, right? So I don't, so no cap, it apparently means like something is amazing. Something's like really cool or, or so that I, I, I don't know all the slang, but that is one. So that is how it works. Uh, I just missed it. I just missed it. I didn't play a sound. I thought it would play a sound for us, but I didn't hear the sound when it goes up. I'd say no cap means for real. Um, I have heard quite a bit of slang. I, I try and listen in on it a little bit, but I don't understand all of it. I don't understand all of it for sure. No cap equals for real. Yeah, no cap is one that I find interesting that I don't quite understand. What's the other one that they're always saying? Um, they do like their memes. They do like their memes and I don't quite understand the memes. And they like to, um, what's the word that they use for cool? There, there's a word that they use for cool that I can't, I can't think of it now. I've been, I've been on summer vacation a little bit too long. Uh, slang changes, yeah, when I was growing up, you would say ill. When something was cool, you'd say, oh, that's ill. I L L like, uh, and then that sort of evolved into people saying, Oh, that's sick. Um, ill was the word we use when something was really cool. I do work with really young kids, 10 to 14. So it's a little bit uh, interesting here. You've heard, I haven't heard that one sketchy. I have not heard that one. Um, yeah, that, that one's new to me. I wondered what is that one? Is that, is that like some, when something's cool? I start with five Y with scratch. You started with scratch. Gotcha. Scratch is a great pro a tool to get students excited about computer science, to get students excited about computer science. All right. So we have our Kenny space shooter. So this project here, and let's see if I can get this open up. How do I close this left side here? Um, view navigation pane, go ahead and turn it off there. Okay, so switch to icons. So this is the project we just downloaded here. And there's a lot of really cool things. They give us a bunch of different options. We can do it with vectors, but I like to go and go with the PNGs here. So when we're, we're doing this, we're gonna download this project. We're gonna download this asset and then the students are gonna pick one of these to be their player ship. So we're going to tell them, pick one of these to be your player ship. So we're going to take a screenshot and we're going to tell them to take one of these. Um, and let me actually do it a little bit differently. I want to show them that they're going to drag it in. So they're going to pick a ship that they want to be their, their player ship. They can choose anyone they want. They can choose anyone they want. So select a player ship. So I'm going to select this one here. So we're going to highlight over here, select the player ship. And we're going to tell them to drag it into their resources. Select the player ship, drag it in. All right, so we're going to go and copy this to the clipboard. And I'm going to record a short little video for them that's going to, that we're going to save and show them the actual process of dragging it in. So I have a different tool to do that. The tool I like to use is called, um, what's it called here? screen to gif gif perhaps make a texture file ghl6 we could do that so there's a bunch of different ways we could do it so we do actually have they give us a couple different ones we could do it as a sprite sheet right 
So we could do it as a sprite sheet and it comes with all of these. You, one thing to keep in mind for this particular project is this is gonna be my students. This project is designed, if you're reading, clip it and ship it, exactly. This particular project is targeted for someone's very first time using Godot. Their very, very first time using Godot. They probably, they may have never programmed before. They might not even know what the word Sprite means. And so to keep it as simple as possible, we're gonna actually have them pull it in just as an individual image here to keep it as simple as possible so we can build up that knowledge set as we go. And then in the future, we say, oh, by the way, here's this really cool thing you can do that actually keeps all of the things together in a single file, we create a sprite sheet. And this is a common, a common way to reduce sort of a load, make the compression better. Do, there's lots of benefits to doing it. But for this project, we're gonna do it this very simple way. Elf Adventure, what a name. Welcome into the stream. Hope you're having a beautiful day. Happy, happy Wednesday. All right, so what I wanna do is I wanna pull this down here. We're just gonna do a quick recording here. All right, so I'm gonna press F7 to start the recording. I'm gonna show just dragging the ship over here to add it in, and then we're gonna go ahead and stop that recording. Oh, did I hit the wrong button? No, we got the right button. There we go. Oh, did it? Did I hit the? Oh, there it is. We did. Okay. We're going to go ahead and export this now. So we're going to go ahead and save this. Uh, we're going to save it as a GIF. GIF, GIF, a GIF file. Don't, don't get mad. No wars here. No GIF wars. No GIF wars. Uh, we don't want any of that. First time I heard that. My thought, it was a fluid thing as that is one of the soda drink brands. Yeah, yeah. Sprite is a drink brand, isn't it? Um, it's like uh, Seven Up is the competitor. Another another thing we want to avoid. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Let me save this. I'm just gonna put it in. Let's make a new folder here, so it's a little bit easier to access. New folder. We're gonna call this uh, Godot Projects. Just gonna be a temporary file for me. I'm gonna be adding all of these into my call this drag. Uh, in sprites like that. We'll go ahead and click save. It's going to generate a file first, then we're going to add this to our document once it's done here. Give it a moment. Do, 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 do. We're waiting for it to process. We're waiting and waiting, waiting for the gift to be done. All right, folks. All right, folks, it's almost there, 60%. Why does it take so long? Sprite is a list of images with more information on it. Um, yeah, so Sprite, typically you have what's called a Sprite sheet, and it's a, an image, a texture with lots of different things, and a Sprite happens to be just a small crop of a, of a portion of it. That's not always the case. A Sprite could also just be one image. Wow, that's a big, that's a big file. Um, there we go. We're gonna go ahead and drag this into our Google document here so we can save this. Drag this sprite in here. So now we have it here. So we just have the little video showing it getting dragged in like that. Okay, let's go ahead and continue on into our project. So now we have this in here and we can actually take this sprite and we can add it in to our main scene. All right, so we're gonna have them, we're gonna show them dragging it into our main scene. There's stuff like Limbo AI in which the tutorials are done in engine. Did you think about that? Jeff, I considered that. So I, it's a good question. It's a good question. This is again going to be for a student who has never used Godot before. So I'd have to go through a process where they have to install an asset and then I'd have to make the it internal. I want to make it as accessible as possible. That's my goal, as accessible as possible. All of those built-in things are super cool, super cool. They do require a little bit more effort. I've actually never done it. It might require a lot more effort, I'm not sure. But I think it could be really cool to do that for a future project. For this one, we're gonna keep it simple. Keep it simple, keep doing the things I know how to do a little bit as well. But having it available so that it can be used by anyone, anywhere is the goal. And in Another thing is making it so you could potentially read through the whole thing without having to follow it directly in the um, editor itself, which can be super useful in and of its own. Okay, simple is great. That's what we're going for. Managing complexity, keeping it as simple as possible. Let's go ahead and record another 
little video showing us dragging this in. All right, so we're going to start another recording here like this. Go ahead and record uh, F7 to start the recording, drag it in like that, and then F8 to stop it. There we go. So we're just going to show that getting dragged in. Go ahead and save as uh, drag in sprite. We're going to go ahead and save it over and we're going to add that image again to our document here just so we have each one of these steps as we go. Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay, are you done processing? Still encoding? I'm surprised how long these take. It must be because I'm doing it at the GIF format. Sometimes I do WebMs, but those don't always work nicely on everyone's computer. So I work at the school where we have cross platforms. So we have people on Windows, we have people on Linux, we have people on Mac. And so we have to be careful which ones, well, what formats we use. I never know which browser someone's gonna be using. I never know what platform they're gonna be on. So it's really important to try and keep things as general and cross platform as well. So we'll go ahead and drag that in there like that. Perfect. So now we have our player ship up here. So I'm gonna take a little screenshot to show the change that this did. So we should tell the student to go ahead and look up here at the player ship. All right. And we're going to highlight that it is over here, player ship like that. Okay, copy this to our clipboard, paste that into our document and keep going here. So the next thing that we really want to do is we want to add a script to make it so that the player can control this script. We want to be able to move it around. And the way I'm planning to do this is we actually want to make it so that this ship is gonna be a character body 2D. Wanna make this a character body 2D or have a character body 2D attached to it. So it's a little bit trickier to do it here. We have to actually create a parent node that we're gonna put this in, reparent to new node. All right, so we're gonna come in here, we're gonna reparent to a new node, like so, reparent to new node, like that. Okay, right click. I'm gonna put a little note here. I'm gonna draw an arrow. We're gonna put a number here. There's gonna be, oop, wrong, wrong button. And draw an arrow. I'm gonna, in the text, I'm gonna say right click, and then we're gonna select reparent to new node. Here, it's gonna be the second thing we do like that. And then when we do this, we are going to create the parent node, which happens to be our player. So right click, reparent to new node. And then we need to find the node. We want it to be a character body 2D. So we can go ahead and screenshot this. Open an image editor here. I'm gonna type in character body 2D, click this, and then click create. And we'll have some text in here explaining what a character body 2D is. It allows us to have an object that has a collider that can move around on the screen and sit like bump into things, be bounded somehow. All right, copy that to our clipboard, paste that in here like so. And then we'll repeat that process one more time. Create like so. We're going to tell them that, hey, there's this little warning icon here. Uh, take another screenshot. Oops, I have a little bit of extra text there that I don't want on just yet. But we're going to point out the warning icon here. Okay, and this warning icon is actually giving us information, trying to give us a hint saying, hey, this thing is supposed to have a shape on it that we're going to use. How does the node 2D fit into this whole thing? Never got to the point of that first node in the scene. That's the whole scene itself. Yeah, so that's the whole scene itself. That's sort of like our main scene. So right now we're adding things in and then I'm gonna add a little note saying, hey, we actually wanna be a little bit more organized. Let's go ahead and rename these things so they make sense. Right now, this is just our main scene. 
our main scene here. And it doesn't actually make a lot of sense, but we have this sprite, we have a character body, and then this main scene is actually the overall thing. And we're gonna end up pulling our character body into its own separate scene as well, probably. We're gonna at least do that with our enemies so we can have multiple of the same enemies. We're gonna actually go through the process of, well, why do we do those things? What is the reason for doing those things? And it's because it's about managing complexity. So I don't like to just show the correct thing to do. I often show the thing that's sort of incorrect but works first, or maybe not the incorrect way, but what I'd say a more complex way. And then we say, okay, well now, how do we simplify that thing? Anytime we're copying and pasting something, anytime the complexity feels awkward, what are the tools that we can utilize? What tools does the Godot provide for us that's gonna reduce the complexity? The tools often provide ways for us to reduce complexity, manage the complexity, and make things simple for ourselves. And if it doesn't exist, usually we can actually write some of our own. So that's the whole point here, is make it so that way, show them sort of like the hard, annoying way, and then be like, oh, by the way, there's this really nice thing that you can do to, to make this not go there. Um, is there a place I can post it? I'm not, I probably on a Discord. Discord's probably the best place to post it. Is there a Godot Discord with some share stuff like that? You made a story for my game specifically. How long is it? A rookie pilot ventures into a new space vector, unaware of the secrets it holds. Ooh, ooh, mystery. Okay, so we got our character body 2D. What we need to do is we need to actually add, if we click on this, it says there is no shape. So we actually have to add a shape collider to it. Maybe I'll take a screenshot of this as well, just to show that if you click it, it gives us some hints. <clears throat> we'll save this here. If we click this, it actually brings up this little error message warning here. All right, I'm gonna save this. I'm not sure I'll put this in the actual tutorial, but we'll save it there. Okay. But what we want is we're gonna add a child node here and one thing I want to call out when we do this is that you can actually use the control a here so I like to teach my students the hotkeys there are many ways to do the same thing in a lot of situations so there was a right click and then we're gonna select add child node but I want to call out hey there's this control a thing here that's sort of optional optional that you could use instead. Let's go ahead and copy that to the clipboard. We're gonna add this in here. Add a little picture for it. It's okay for me to post a link to my first uh, G game design document. Is that a GDD or a GGD? It is a link to a Google Doc. I decided to learn Godot and make a game. We're gonna avoid um, links here just, just for the most part. Do I, you guys could join, if you want to share it directly on Captain Coder's Academy, you could do that as well. Um, if you wanna join my personal Discord, there's places for you to share there. Not my personal, but Captain Coder's Academy, my community's Discord. You can post links there and we can take a look at them. You can also use exclamation point Q to add a little message here to remind me to take a look when we have a break here. So we'll be taking a break in about 30 minutes. Uh, to get a little bit more bean juice for us, and then we'll take a look at it. Better post it on Discord. Yeah, I think that's the best place to do it. But if you have a question, feel free to use exclamation point Q to get it in there. It'll add it to the queue, and we'll go over those when we have a little bit of a break. All right, we're going to add the child node in here. Okay, and specifically, we are looking for a collision shape 2D like this, or a collision polygon 2D, our shape here. And so I'm gonna have them do a polygon 2D. I'm gonna create the collision polygon 2D. And I'm gonna show them, hey, notice, notice it's sort of in the, this weird place up here. Oh, I forgot to take a screenshot of that. Hang on, add child node. Collision polygon 2D. Okay, take a screenshot here. Let's go ahead and get that marked up from Collision Polygon. Select this one, click Create. Here like this, it's gonna be a one, a two, and a three. And likely at this point, 
in my documentation, I'll probably stop showing this type of picture. This is the second time that it says, well, if you, we need to add a new node, how do we add a new node? It's important not to just, in, so this is sort of like the difference between a tutorial and a project, in my opinion. A tutorial shows you every single step to take. The project will often show you a few times and then have you repeat that process, getting those muscle memory built in so that way you actually learn it. If you just copy what someone's doing, you're not likely to learn as much. You're not likely to learn too much, actually. It's really important to practice going off here. Um, here we go. Okay, so we're gonna go and create this collision polygon 2D. And then what we want to do is we actually want to move our ship here to be in the center of our character body. So I want to highlight these things and talk about them here. And we're going to have a little thing saying, well, we actually want this to be in the middle here. So our player ship is here, our collision polygons here. All right, so we're going to actually copy this to our clipboard. And we're going to show the user, the student, that what we want to do is we're going to select this. And then in the inspector, we're going to hit this reset button. So we're going to click on our player ship here. And then we're going to actually click this reset button. So we have that selected. We have this reset button that we're gonna click on. And this is gonna center back on the scene there or, or on, on sort of the center of the object. All right, let me go ahead and record that. We'll get a little GIF of it again, like so, so we can actually see what happens here. All right, so we have the record here, we're going to click on the player ship. We're going to go ahead and reset the position and show that it moves it to the center here. Okay, and we'll go ahead and do that. Um, the reset all the children, it does not. It does not. I don't think it does. Let's double check. I could be wrong. Reposition sprite. You know, I could be wrong. Let's move this back. I'm pretty sure that it only resets it here. So there actually is no reset on it. The reset only shows up if it's not the default value. So notice that this is relative to the parent position. So this is called the parent. The character body is the parent of these two things. And if I move these around, if I adjust these, they move with it. And so resetting that does not reset the children there might be a nice way to reset all of them. I'm not sure. It's a great question. Um, Kavo, uh, Kavo, thank you so much for that. Thank you so much for that. We'll check it out. Remind me when we get back from our break in 30 minutes to check it out. I'll take a look. Okay, so we have our collision shape now. This thing is centered. And what we want to do is we actually want to draw this. You'll notice when we start clicking and drawing, it actually will draw our shape around here. So I'm actually gonna show the students, we're gonna go ahead and record. Let's do another little record here. Oh, did I upload that recorded one? I almost forgot to. Let's upload our recorded, our last one, so I don't lose it. It's always kind of painful when you lose these things. If you lose them, then uh, you have to like go back, rewatch the whole video. So I am recording all of this so we can come back. We can actually record the whole, go back to the video and find it. But it's so much easier if you just get it right the first time. So I'm going to set the same property to zero on all of them. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. So if I have all of these uh, and I select transform, and I set zero on all of them. It doesn't seem to do that. Right? So... can do it on all the children. If I have all the children selected, it lets me do that. If I have this top one selected at the same time, it's still relative to that parent, I think. Let me see what happens if I do this. Yeah, so I can select all the children. Awesome. Cubos, thank you so much for helping me out with that. Yeah, I didn't know that. That makes that makes sense to me. Um, set to one, then to zero. Sometimes it doesn't get it. Yeah, I did that. So if we did this, set it to 50. 
and then to zero. Oh, there we go. Nice, nice. Cubos, do you know? I was curious about this. <laughs> I would like to be able to do something. All right, let's say I have a bunch of these ships. This is just a little thing that I, I might want to do. And I want to position them evenly out like this. I want to position them evenly out like this. And I know that I want them to be offset by like 50. So I, I want them to be offset by 50. Something I would like to be able to do would be, so in other tools I've used, I could do something like L0 to 200. And then what it'll do is it'll position them evenly between pixel zero and 200 and I press enter. Do you know if there's a nice way to do that? I know when I'm working with canvases that I, they're, they're sort of like alignment tools I can use, but I don't have those if I'm dealing with just like generic game objects, I don't think. I have like ruler I can snap to, I could like drag them out. Um, I was just wondering if you knew if there's something like that. I don't know if there is. There could be, I've just never found it. I'm pretty new to Godot. I'm pretty new to Godot. I've only been using Godot 4 for a month or so. In code, it can be done. Yeah, so but I couldn't do it in the editor. In code, it would be easy to do, yeah. Sometimes we just have to code our own tools. Yeah, ironic, moronic, welcome in. Exactly. So I've thought about doing it. It would just be a nice thing to have. It's one of those things where it's like, hasn't I haven't needed it enough to do it, but it's something that would be really nice to have. And I would be surprised if there isn't a library that someone has already done to make it possible. Okay. Um, where was I? What did we just do? Uh, um, uh, yes, we got to draw our collision shape now. So I was going to record drawing the collision shape. Okay. We can actually bring this in and I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit here. Let's have them zoom in. We can actually record drawing the collision shape. Um, oops, go ahead and stop. Let's restart that. I had the wrong tool selected. All right, so good record. Tell them to click on this, click on this, and then we can actually draw the shape of our ship here. Another thing that I was curious about, is there an auto? Does anyone know? I don't know. Is there an auto polygon that we can use? Go ahead and press eight to end that here. Is there a way to automatically draw a polygon given a sprite? Does anyone know if that tool exists? We did write one in code before. Um, no built-in way, I'm relatively sure, except doing 50 plus two. Yeah, yeah, so I know I could do that. I was just wondering if there's like a nice little way to interpret it with multiple things. So it's a better long-term to do and start C-sharp rather than a GD script. Wonder if it's better long-term to do and start C-sharp rather than GD script. It's a good question. So I mainly teach C sharp. I mainly teach C sharp in the class that I'm going to be teaching for this. We will be using GD script. One of the things, and don't get me wrong. I love C sharp. I love that Godot support C sharp. I am not yet. Um, I find that C sharp and Godot is still has a lot of room to mature and get better. And so I think it's so much easier to let my students use GD script and it's so uh, first class and inside of the editor, all the things to connect things together are so nice in the editor. It's just so hard for me to not use GD script. It's one of the top things in the top bar, I think on the sprite node. Yeah, I know we can do that in, um, in canvas things, right? Can I do it with just you know, any object here? All right, we're gonna draw polygon. Go ahead and save that. Um, I will say that GD script is since it's built into here, Corfliss, welcome into the stream. How you been friend? Happy to have you here on this beautiful Wednesday. Hope you're having a beautiful day. Uh, I teach normally GD script. One of my concerns with teaching GD script, I focus, I'm the class I'm going to be teaching with Godot is going to be a game dev class. I primarily teach programming and computer science classes. So when I've done game dev in the past, it has been programming and then we'll we'll dive in and do a little bit of game dev using something like Raylib or another uh, tool, another tool. I really like to have the ability for students to write 
code outside of an engine. So just start from a text file and write code and produce something that takes inputs and produces outputs. So one of my biggest wants with GD script is to be able to use it separate from Godot. That is one of my biggest wants. As long as there's a type instead of duck typing, GD script is amazing. I am a big fan of types. It's one of the reasons I actually use GD script in my classes. I have actually found students learn really, really well. Uh, in fact, I find my students learn better or, or, or not, not better. I have found one second. Give me a second here. Hang on. Something's going on. Boom, 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 boom. Fixed it. Okay. I have found personally students going from C sharp to Python from a typed language like C sharp. They do much better going from C sharp to Python, C sharp to JavaScript, then going from Python or JavaScript to a typed language like C sharp or Java or whatever typed language you happen to be using. And it's because students start thinking in types first rather than secondary. It's not a secondary thing. You have to think about it. You have to think about it versus the other way. I do think that in my experience with intro to programming courses, students pick up the languages. Excuse me, you'll have to excuse me there. I'm still recovering from being sick. Students pick up their first language about the same speed, but the transfer to a new language is much harder for, in my experience, for students going from a non-typed language to a statically typed language, or I should say a dynamically typed language to a statically typed. I find that they struggle more when they're doing that. Let's go and get this draw polygon added into our document so that we can save it for our students later. So here's the draw polygon that we just did. Okay. Um, Hamza Concepts, welcome to the stream. Hope you're having a beautiful day. And Nixa, as long as, yeah, exactly. Nixa, welcome in. Great to have you here. If I ever pronounce a name wrong, feel free to correct me, but it's so wonderful to have all you beautiful people here on this beautiful Wednesday. I hope you're having as much fun as I am here making this project. Okay, so now we have this character body. We have this character body, and when we hit play, Oh, I don't want to click this yet. I'm going to show them. We're going to click play. Can I just do play current scene? There we go. It's going to show you guys when we click play. Not a whole lot happens. Hang on. I was actually expecting. Oh, I didn't use the template project. That's OK. I was expecting gravity to pull it down, but I didn't use the template on it. And that's ah, should have used the template. I think we can fix this, though. I think we can fix this. Um, hang on. Create. Oh. Oh no, we have to, oh, we, it's because we haven't added it yet. You know what? We're gonna add a script here. Okay, perfect. We haven't added a script yet. I wanna use the template. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is add in the template uh, file here. So we're gonna go ahead and shrink all of these. We're gonna show add in the script. We're gonna select new script. And we're gonna show them that we wanna use the character basic movement template here. Okay. We should, we studied Pi in our first semester, but in the second semester we got, to learn Java, well, it wasn't hard for me, but other students had some problems. So one of the interesting things in the United States, we have what are called advanced placement classes. These are classes you can take prior to going to university where you can get college credits, university credits for doing it. And there are two computer science AP courses. One of them is called AP Computer Science Principles. And this is a class that is more about like tech concepts. You do very little programming, a little bit of programming. It's language agnostic. So a lot of places you can use Scratch, you can use Python, you can use any programming language you teach this class. It's agnostic to the language and you end up doing a little project. The second class is called Computer Science A, Advanced Placement Computer Science A, and it happens to be a Java specific class. And this one is more along the lines of a intro to programming class at university. And in this AP computer science A class, you learn about uh, recursion and for loops and methods and object oriented programs. So you learn about interfaces, inheritance, abstract classes. So it's a lot more stringent on the type of programming you learn. 
Uh, Zoomer Boomer, welcome in. Isn't this skill transfer bear simply a knowledge bear? And once students overcome the bear from untyped to tight lunge, people do profit from algorithmic skills still? Isn't it this the same for iterative loop, iterative versus functional? Absolutely, absolutely. All I'm saying is that transition in my experience is easier. In my experience, my students, that transfer is easier when they start with a statically typed language. I think it's fine to start with anyone that you want. I personally start my students with a statically typed language. I use C Sharp usually as my first language. That said, I've been experimenting. I actually have kind of fallen in love with uh, Lua a little bit and have been. Ex I started experimenting with it last year as a starter language. And it's it's not, I haven't had as much success as I want with it, but I'm hoping to fine tune it. I've only taught it once, so I'm hoping to iterate on that class specifically. Uh, if the algorithmic stuff is stuff is rushed when typed is not cemented, good luck on pointers. <laughs> Point, it depends. I actually find if it, you know, never did anything with Lua. I, you know, I was surprised how much I liked Lua. I was surprised how much I liked Lua. And it is uh, essentially so simple. It doesn't have a bunch of extra stuff. I love the simplicity of it. So you can focus on the algorithmic topics rather than saying, oh, well, now we're going to go use this library or we're going to use this feature. We're going to do this thing. It's very, very simple. It's super concise. You don't have things like overloaded operators. Uh, op everything does one thing. And I really, really like that. And um, also has dictionaries. So, so I, I really like it. What's my opinion on Go? I haven't used Go that much. I do think Go is a very, very good language for building uh, APIs building APIs, very fast, very safe language for doing that. Um, that said, I haven't used Go all that much. I've, I've played with, I'd say I've played with Go maybe 40, 50 hours. Lua and Love2D was my intro to game. They have really nice, we used Love2D as well. I, I enjoyed it. I also used Tick80 um, to get straight to writing code, to draw and move around sprites in the window. Yeah, I, I really enjoy using Tick80 as well. Um, pointers are interesting. I think pointers are just tend to not be taught super well. Um, and so there's a lot of confusion around pointers. I teach memory maps when I teach, when I teach, I teach a class called uh, data organization. So after students have taken an intro to programming course, they can take a course called data organization, which is a C class, a class that's in the C programming language. And we learn about pointers, but we actually have students draw out memory diagrams to understand, oh, it turns out everything in a computer is just an integer, even pointers. Pointers are just integers that happen to reference a place in memory. And so we learn about the stack. We learn about the heap. We learn about, uh, we implement a couple data structures, a couple algorithms, and students end up writing their own um, memory allocation garbage collector, like very, very dumb, simple garbage collector. Uh, the play date made me curious, but Lua is a bit too minimalistic for me. So Cubis, uh, that's why I like Lua as a beginning language because it's minimalistic. That is why I've been, I, I, I think there's something about Lua being so minimalistic. I actually think it, could be a perfect starter starter language if I can figure out how to teach it. I haven't quite figured it out. From the InfoSec perspective, how safe is GDScript with other languages? Um, I don't think I don't think there's anything unsafe about GDScript, and specifically because it's built directly into Godot. I don't think we're using it for anything critical. I, I mean, I would be surprised if you could. I think. But I don't think anyone's really using it for anything like mission critical. The biggest thing with GD, and then everything is sort of, uh, there's not a garbage, is there a garbage collector? It's sort of like resource counted. So there's not a garbage collector, but things are resource counted. So it's a little bit different um, than something like C, where you can end up losing, having like memory leaks or having stack overflows or having you know, like null no pointer injections, like these different types of things. Um, yeah, so, I mean, we, we need, do we, are we going to get node for GD script? Maybe, maybe. And then things will, I, I hope we never, maybe we'll get there someday. Exactly. Cubis. I don't think it's really a language that you would want to use for mission critical things. Um, oh, no garbage cluster, only delete queue. 
What are you making today? Hom's a great question. We are learning, we're actually creating a class project. So we're going through and we're documenting the process of creating this space sheet. I'm going through and taking these screenshots as we go so that I can actually create a little tutorial, not a tutorial, class project. It's not gonna be a tutorial because there's gonna be problems that students have to solve in here, but I'm documenting all the things we're doing so we can make a space shooter. It's like a top-down shooter game, kind of like Galaga, kind of like um, Xanak is the, the closest thing in my mind, but kind of like Galaga or another top-down shooter. So we're in the process of creating this here. Um, <laughs> except the virtual ones, Cubis, exactly. We're gonna use it to control virtual ships here. So what we wanna do is we wanna show the students now over here in the inspector to create a new script. I'm gonna take a screenshot here and I'm probably gonna end up editing this one down uh, because we don't need all this stuff in the middle. It's gonna be a really big image, but we wanna select the character body 2D. And then in our inspector, can I actually cut this out? I can't remember, can I do this effects crop? I wanna cut out just the middle section. I'm gonna do this in post. I'll do it in post with a different tool. I think there's a way I can just cut out the center of this image. I don't know if I can do it in, can I do this? Hang on, cut. I don't think cut actually does what I want. That's okay, yeah. So we're gonna go over to our inspector here and then we're gonna come down to node, uh, sorry, script, select new script here. So we're gonna click character body. Then over in the inspector, we're gonna select this drop down and then new script but I wanna make a call out to the inspector tab. This is the first time we've referenced the inspector tab in our, um, no, no, we did, we did the, the other one here, but I'm gonna tell my children GDScript script stands for game dev script. Uh, uh, it, it, you know, very well could, but I believe it stands for Godot script. Although Godot, what's interesting is Godot is one word. And so GD script is interesting. Um, unless you want to teach the inspector, of course, there's a more script. I want to show them where they find it. Yeah, there's a more handy plus script fund over the node tree. Ooh, let's check that out. We could actually show them both ways. Um, attach script. Ah, let's do that. I like that. That's better. That's, that's going to be a little bit easier to screen schedule. Well. we'll do both. We'll do both and we'll show them. We'll, take, we'll say, hey, you can actually do this multiple ways. Multiple ways here. I like that. Let's take a screenshot. Thank you so much for that. I love it. I love it. It'll make this image smaller as well. And so we're going to right click. Oops. Right click, attach script. Ah, my arrows. I have two different programs. This program draws arrows different than my other one. Let's go ahead and copy this to the clipboard here and add this in. So I have a program here that lets me draw on the screen and the arrows draw, I click and then pull away and it draws an arrow. And in the screenshot editing tool, the arrows draw the direction that I'm dragging towards. So I always get a little bit backward. Um, on top of the sprite 2D, you can create the mesh of or collision for the selected sprite. So I miss that. Giganzo, welcome to the stream. Great to have you here. Ghost Lupo, how you doing friend? Howdy, 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 howdy. Hope you're having a beautiful Wednesday. Mmm, creating it automatically. That was my question. Yeah, yeah, let, let me, let me, you're saying, do I have to add, um, you can create the mesh or collision for the selected sprite. I wanna try that real quick. I wanna try that, let me save this. Um, hang on, I wanna call this uh, Godot uh, screenshots. So we'll have all of these sort of grouped together here. Uh, you were saying, okay, I have my sprite here. Um, right next to the search over the node tree, that's the plus script I met. Some, oh, oh, uh, oh, here. Yeah, so isn't it cool that there's so many different ways to do it? Let's do that. Let's go ahead and click that as well. Let's show them this button as well. Enjoy your break there, Corflis. Thank you so much for hanging out. Do a screenshot of that as well. We're gonna show them all the different ways to do it. So we'll click on this and then click on that there. 
top of the clipboard. And we say, hey, look, look at all the different ways to do the same thing. This is why it gets a little confusing. G, one, two, three, four, five. Welcome to the stream today. G, how you, how, how you are, my friend? How you doing? Great to see you. Right, so we have all these different ways here. All right, so you were saying that I can select this and I can get this collision shape generated from this sprite. All right, so someone, how do I do that? So someone was saying I could do that. I've never done it before. Okay, walk me through it, walk me through it. Give me this Gibby. Wait, all right, I'm waiting. Select Sprite, select the Sprite, okay. It's a bit early today. Yeah, not a mod here, that's okay, G. Still great to have you with us. You can select the sprite. There's a context menu on the top bar. Okay. Sprite, convert to, oh, that's cool. Oh, I like that. Hang on. I don't, I don't, I clicked some buttons. Can I get rid of this? All right, so this would be, I'm super confused. Um, all right, let me get rid of my collision polygon here. I would be Sprite 2D, convert to, create, I don't, how do I get it to attach? So this is still complaining that it doesn't have the mesh. Convert to collision polygon. Okay, let's try one more time. Sprite, create collision polygon. Here we go, this is what I want. Oh, oh, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna do this. I've never done that before. Today I learned there's a sibling option. Yo, toggle bit. Toggle bits, thank you for raiding us today. We got a toggle bit raid in the channel today. Toggle bit, how was your stream? Raiders, welcome in. Tell us all about you, what you were working on. How was your stream? What were you doing? Let us know what's going on. Folks, if you don't know who I am, I am Captain Coder. Captain Coder is me, and me is Captain Coder, and Captain Coder is a computer science educator. My full-time job is teaching computer science and programming at an online international school for ages 10 to 14. So it's so wonderful that I was invited to come and make a project for Godot on the Godot official channel. We're here having a blast, so much fun. Toggle bit, uh, just Rustin. You're Rustin along? Are you a Rustation, my friend? Thank you so much for the raid. Happy, happy Wednesday. Hope everyone's having a beautiful day. Welcome in, welcome aboard. We just learned, check this, check this cool thing out. Check this cool thing out. I just learned this. I just learned this. I didn't know about this. <clears throat> Previously, I had to draw this, this shape here. But there's this magic button I can press. There's this magic button. We're gonna take a screenshot here, showing that we can do this. Put this screenshot here. Bo bo bo. Ba do 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 do. We're gonna open it up. We're gonna tell our students to click the player ship here. Click Sprite 2D. Create a collision polygon 2D sibling. So it's gonna be a one, a step two, a step three, a one, a two, a three. Ah, ah, ah. And let's go ahead and come into our document here. We're gonna replace our previous steps in here like so. So we're gonna put this in here so that we have it here. Building a, 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 t a terminal user interface framework in Rust. Let's go, Modproc. Thank you folks for telling that. I added basic movement 3D and I run on one frame per second. It's weird that it takes all my research, even by having a decent PC. Do you know the solution? I don't, I don't. Uh, streamless, I'm sorry I don't have a better solution for you. Um, it sounds like there, there must be something going on if you're stuck on one frame per second. Um, my gut reaction, my gut thought, hang on, we gotta pull this down here by one. Okay, 
create this polygon. Um, so let's go ahead and do that here, create collision polygon. This context menu comes up, and we have to tell the student to actually click the create polygon. Oh, I love this. This is so cool. Oop, wrong direction. Copy to clipboard, save it in there. I'm sorry I don't have a better solution for you. If you find one, be sure to share what you ended up figuring out. Create a collision polygon, and then it adds it in there. Perfect. Perfect. I love it. Okay. Thank you guys so much for your help there. Today I learned. Today I learned. Green shot reminds me of my time working in... Sorry, I missed something. Green shot reminds me of my time. I lost it. I lost it. I'm a big fan of green shot. IT making guides. Yeah, yeah. IT guides here. Um, I'm a big fan of green shots. The Windows tool version of it is much better than the Mac version. I'm sad that the Mac version isn't too good or isn't as good. I should say isn't as good, isn't feature complete. Okay, we were in the process of adding a script here and we want to have them create this template here. All right, so when I click this, I'm just gonna put a little thing here. Uh, we're, we're, oh, hang on. Script, I'm gonna tell them to call this player ship controller like this we're going to have them oh in gd hang on gd script we like to do player ship controller gd uh scripts like to be named lowercase snake case like this so trying to follow the godot conventions as well you can often see uh, you can see my c sharp showing a lot when I when I program in Godot because I'm I do so much C sharp programming I end up camel casing a lot of things and so I, I like to say you can see my C sharp showing <laughs> you gotta be care I gotta be careful with my C sharp there um, I don't like that the let's do a different screenshot I didn't like that my cursor was blocking some of the text there it makes it a little hard for students okay okay there we go. And we're going to say, make sure that our template is on. That we have the character body 2D. This is the default, but just make sure that it's in there. We want to set the path like this. And then finally click create. So we're going to have them, one, change this. Two, change that. But just verify that these are checked. It should be the default here. Okay, copy that to my clipboard. Go ahead and add this into my documentation so I have these screenshots for them. Can't you move the cursor in green shot? Um, could I have moved it? So it was this little line here, looked like a little extra L, and that's what I wanted to move out of the way. It wasn't that it was the mouse cursor, is that I had the line there, and I think that would make it hard for some students to see the spelling on it. Not enough YouTubers' faces. Yeah, we need more. <laughs> Two, not enough arrows. Just enough arrows. I'm right, going to click Create, and it's going to pop this up here. So I'm going to go ahead and have it pop this up. Oh, let's take a screenshot so they can see all the things that got added in here. Most specifically, let's have this selected like that. This is one of the things I do really like about GD Script. I do really like about Godot is the integrated experience. You don't have to have multiple tools. Download Godot. You're good to go. You don't have to do anything extra. Have this open here. And then the code editor over here. Okay. Uh, just to call these different things out. One, two, three here like that. Copy to our clipboard. The two nerdy nerds, welcome in. How are you two doing today? The nerds. Two nerdy nerds, how's it going, friends? Welcome into the stream. Hope you're having a beautiful day. How is your game coming along? Um, yeah, I couldn't move that exactly, Mod Prog. We're in the process of creating a Godot project for my students. It's gonna be one of the first projects that they're gonna do in Godot. We got two hats. We can get more hats. You want more? 
More hats, less hats. More hats, less hats. One's in the chat if you want to see more hats. One's in the chat if you need more hats. Of course more. One's in the chat. I need one's in the... One, one hat. One hat. Two hats. We've got... We've got... A, do I have a red hat? I don't have a red hat. Red hat. One two hat. Two hat. Three hat. Four hat. There we go. Four hats. Five hats. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. We got six. Five hats, six hats. So we got six ones. There we go. Six hats. Thank you guys so much for the hats. Thank you so much for the hats. There we go. Look, Captain Coder wears many hats. Now I have nine times. We're, we're, we're 11 hats deep today. Now I got 11 times the programming power. 11 times the programming power. All right, so I wanted to get to this point so that way we could see the ship falling. That was the whole point here, was to get the ship to fall. The next thing I want to do is just point out, let's go back to the script here. Do one more screenshot. I want to point out the run button here in the top right. We're going to have them click this button. Oops, click this button here and have it start the scene. All right, so copy to clipboard. Boom, run. And then we're going to go ahead and record our ship falling like that. So it is a lot of hats. M star on Twitch. We do have a lot of hats. It's not it's not the most hats I've ever worn. Going to call night. Thank you so much for hanging out with us, Sketchy. Have a beautiful day. Remember to keep coding. Maybe retake the screenshot. Did I take it wrong? The screenshot looks okay. Uh, this one displays the tip for the... Uh, oh, gotcha, gotcha. Thank you. I didn't quite catch that. Dr. Revert. Thank you so much for the help. Boom. There we go. Open an image editor. I often will blur out the unimportant things as well, but we're going to... We're gonna keep it simple, simple like that. So just point it out there, perfect. Copy to clipboard. Thank you so much for the assistance there. All right, and we can always come back in the video and retake these screenshots. It's just a little bit easier to do, do it right the first time, right? Okay, so we have that. Let's go ahead and get a video now. We're gonna go ahead and record, um, the the window showing up here all right so we're gonna record the window showing up so we hit f7 we're gonna click play we're gonna show it falling like that and then we're gonna sh we're gonna explain oh hey this is because of gravity it's because of gravity we're in the default script we have gravity so we're gonna change it here he said everything will be open source and easy to find on the internet the document with screenshots too yeah this document with the screenshots i'm gonna take these screenshots this is just my document that has all my screenshots in the order of the project and i'm gonna end up writing out i'm gonna turn it into a web page and we're gonna write out each of the steps as we go along and 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 it will be open source it will be posted. I can even give you the link to where it's going to be. It's just not there yet. It's going to be over here at the Godot, uh, Godot class project on GitHub. I'll probably rename it a little bit. And then there'll be a website associated with it as well. Let's go ahead and save this as a GIF for us here. It's going to be run project with gravity. There we go. Let this process, we're going to get that in there. And then let's go ahead and make a commit. We got our first, the first whole couple steps going on here. Uh, the hats are amazing. Godot Game Dev, welcome in. Great to see you on this beautiful Wednesday. Yeah, we're 11 hats deep so far. We are about to take a break. So the hats are going to reset. But that's okay. We can always add more when we get back from our break. All right. So we've been going for almost 90 minutes. We got we've been going for 90 minutes, but there were 10 minutes of just like the stream starting. So in about seven minutes, we're going to take a break here. The built in documentation when you press F1 or control click in the script editor is nice. Giganzo, it's one of the again, everything just being built into the editor is so nice. So nice. Um, you were the first star. Mm. Oh, that water tastes so good, folks. Don't for, don't forget to hydrate. Keep your body's fresh. Look, the captain loves you, which means you should love you. And if you love you, you got to hydrate, you got to keep yourself fresh, got to get that water flowing, keep that body going. 
All right, there we go. We got our little video in there. Let's do a commit on our project so we don't lose this here. Uh, that's not the project. Do I not have, where is it? Where is it? Um, this is also not in it. Hang on, do I not have a window open for it? Hang on. Bear with me. Grab your bears, bear with me. We're gonna get this show on the road here. There it goes. Boom, easy peasy, got it open. Um, it's going super well, MD Fury. Welcome into the stream. Are you always so positive and energetic or only during streams classes? So during streams and classes, I try and keep it positive. I would say, so I get asked this, Milos, I do get asked this question. I do feel, let me do it. Let me get it, get ad here. Make sure this is in the right spot. I, hang on, uh, move, get ignore into my space shooter folder. There we go. Git commit dash M feature uh, add basic ship slash controller. I do tell people that Captain Coder is the character I play on stream and as a teacher. I feel like I've had a lot of practice as a teacher playing the Captain Coder character. I want to, when I, when I teach, my goal is to be as excited and positive for my students to keep them excited and engaged in what's going on. I, I think that's so important for young people to be able to have a positive role model, to see all the good things that in life and, and smile. Get them to laugh, get them to, uh, you know, I'm saying, get them to laugh, get them to cry. No, don't make them cry. Get them to laugh, get them to smile. It, and you sell yourself to them. A student is going to do better if they see you and they want to, to engage and be happy and excited about something. So I'd say 75%, 80% of the time, this is how I am in real life. There are, you know, it's not always, not always. I got to turn it off sometimes, right? It's a good question, but I do, I do try. I do try. Um, okay. All right. We're going to take a quick break here. I am almost out of being water. We're going to refuel here. Mm. Oh, yeah. We're going to refuel here. I'm going to get myself some more bean water. We're going to chug a little bit more hydration liquid here. You're telling me this is not, <laughs> you're telling me you're not on the bridge of the ship right now. That's right, Tuner. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to destroy the illusion. I'm sorry to destroy the illusion. I do my best. I'd say this is this is who I, you know, aspire to be. I, ins you know, I try and aspire, uh, inspire myself sometimes. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to keep going on our project. We're going to get our ship moving around the screen. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be grand. It's going to be great. It's going to be glorious. Don't go anywhere. Captain Cutter will return in about five minutes. We're going to put a different screen on there. I forget that my YouTube channel has so many. Hang on. Hang on, we're gonna put a different uh, uh, be right back screen because I don't want there to be any issues uh, with my Unity videos there. Hang on, let's go. Let's not get uh, let's not get too crazy here. Hang on, we're gonna go into our uh, studio mode. Uh, let's fix that. Yeah, I needed to have a different need to have a different scene here for my uh, getting coffee scene. I think. Oh no, did it switch to? Do you guys see my face or do you see the? I think you see my face. Do you still see my face? I think you see my face. Yeah. All right. Um, we see you. Okay. Good. Good. I want to. I want to change this scene here. Uh, we. I don't want that. Nope. Uh, let's turn off the slideshow. Let's turn off the slideshow. There we go. Uh, let, all right. Let's see what happens now if I go to this scene. It's a little bear. It's a little bear, but it works. All right, folks, I'll be back. Don't go anywhere. Oh, the hat's reset after after the break. The hat's reset. Got to give my neck a break. Got to give my neck a break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back.
All right, everybody. Thank you so much for bearing with me. We are back. We are with it. I'm sorry that took so long, but I got myself a fresh cup of Don Francisco's Butterscotch Toffee Coffee. Oh, oh, it's so good. It's so good. Black, no cream, no sugar, just black with a little hint. That little hint of butterscotch. Plus, Ben wants a hat. Let's get a hat. All right, one for a hat. There we go. We'll get another hat on. Thank you so much. Don't forget about your GDD. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. Thank you so much for the reminder. You posted this over on, let's see if we can find it. A project forum. First game. Let's check it out. Are you making this for the uh, Pirate Jam by any chance? Let's see if we can get this to open up here. Letters versus numbers. Yeah, let's take a look. Let's take a look. Que votos. Thank you so much for the reminder. Thank you so much for the reminder. It's wonderful to see all you beautiful people. For those who are just tuning in, I am Captain Coder. Captain Coder is me, and me is Captain Coder. And it's great to be here. A black coffee drinker. Yeah. Oh. Mmm. We can't post Discord links here, right? Um, there's a link. You can do the link to my Discord. Uh, and I think we have, we do projects here. Uh, we actually have the link to my Discord here. Uh, Discord GD slash Captain Coder. If you want to join Captain Coder's Academy, we have a lot of fun over there. Uh, we taught, we have a lot of people who are wanting to learn about game dev. A lot of people who are wanting to share what they have about game dev. So this is K Vothos. Thank you so much. Game based on Warhammer 40K Dawn of War 2 Retribution and Warhammer. The game will be about two enemy factions of letters and numbers. There's a little bug in my face here. The higher the number and the late, later letter, the more advanced unit it is, so numbers and letters. Game will have two factions, 3D isometric. I just did a 3D isometric game. I thought, I taught, I, I learned a little about doing 3D stuff in Blender, super fun. We made an isometric game. One building for units, mechanics of choosing place elements. Yo, this looks cool. So would this be a real-time game or a turn-based game? This is just the first time ever thing like that. Uh, initially, it was a bit more complicated, but I toned it down. Yeah, always good to simplify. Man, is it complexity. Make it as easy, as simple as possible. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for sharing it with us on the Discord. How long have you been working on it? Or is it just the GDD you got? Or are you planning to do more with it? Oh, you had to leave. Okay, well, I, I'm so sorry. KV Milos also has a question for us. Um, RG, post it on the Discord. We might have time to check it out. I don't have time to look at too much here. We're focusing on creating a game today. But if it's something brief, maybe a picture or so, we might be able to take a little bit of a look here. Uh, Milos, Milos, uh, what do we have? What do we have here? Where are you? Where are you? One second. There's the question. Maybe later on, if you need a pause, you can make... You can talk about one of your board games what are your favorites etc sure we could do that yeah so create a post in the project form that's right that's right if you want to share something of yours with the academy you can do that over there mm. coffee's good uh yeah normally milos i have a on my channel we do have a board game redeem where we can take a little bit of time to look at one we also one of my favorite ones maybe we'll take a break and do cue list at the next break here Cueless is one of my favorite games. If you like word games, uh, we might play a little bit of Cueless. Here, wait, yeah, that gamer, we don't have a here command here. We don't have the here command here. But, but, but what's going on? Hang on, I lost? Where's OBS? Where did my OBS go? I'm realizing that I don't have OBS. Uh, uh, there it is, there it is. Oh, into the void we go. There we go. I was adjusting it before. How do you spell that? Cueless. Yeah, Cueless is one of my favorite. We should do Cueless on stream later. Yeah, we'll do a round of Cueless. Mostly Maxi. How are you today, my friend? Thank you. I do have a nice hat. I do have a nice hat. We got a couple. We got a couple nice hats. Here, let's get another hat on this stack. Let's get another hat on. There we go. I, most of you are probably used to seeing me with more hats. Get a second hat on there. Well, we're, 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 we were here today. Would have for, wouldn't forgive myself if I missed it. That gamer, oh, oh, you make me feel so feel so good. I'm so glad you could be with us here on this beautiful Wednesday, Maxi. I can't wait. You're coming back. You're back tomorrow. Are you back tomorrow or Friday? You're back tomorrow or Friday. Red Mur, great to see you, my friend. Hope you're having a beautiful day. We are in the process. Hmm. Oh man, that coffee's so good, folks. I haven't had coffee. 
<laughs> Where are my points at, Dramalks? No points here, my friend. But you can still, look, I'm still connected to the chat. If you, look, people, we can still do the crazy, like, look, you're over. <laughs> <laughs> If you're on my chat, you can still do all the crazy things. Still do all the crazy things. You get a sus in there if you want it. Uh, I'm flying back home from but probably not doing anything good. Good. Get your rest in, my friend. Maxi, we want you to be at your peak. Your peak. You know, that's what. give the people what they want. They want you at your peak. But yeah, the, why do some of They don't work. They were working here before. I don't know what's going on. I'm losing my mind. I must have put the cool down or something. Hang on. I want to double check here. I swear, did I put it as 30 minutes? Cool down. Here, let's turn off the cool down. <laughs> Thank you for the toy. Hang on. Let's try it. Did that work? Oh, that's not right. Whoa. There it Whoa. is. There it is. Okay. Let me just turn off the cool down. This is gonna this is a terrible idea, by the way. Without the cool down, we're gonna things are gonna go bad. Because if, if someone knows. They're gonna know. All right, maybe they'll work. Maybe they won't work. This is the one I, I want. This is the one I really want to work. The get did, did the doy not work? Try it again, RG. Oh, or maybe it did work. Getcha. Getcha is one of my favorites. I'm gonna get you. That's a good one. That's a good one there. All right, let's turn it off. I must have put it. It must be on thirty minutes. I bet that's thirty minutes. I bet that's what uh, is the problem there. All right, maybe these will work now. Maybe these will work now. Okay, there we go. All right, folks, let's get in here. I think someone redeemed a hat over on my channel, so we're going to add another hat to the stack. Thank you for the hat redeem, whoever you are. I, I heard the sound for a hat go off, so we're going to get a third hat on here. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you guys very much. You guys are incredible. Okay, what, what the heck are we working on? Who am I? Where am I? Where are my false teeth? Does anyone know? Have you seen, have you seen my map? Let's hop back into our Godot here. I got a bunch of Godot projects open, apparently. We're doing one of my favorite starter game dev projects, a space shmup, a space shoot 'em up We've created a scene here. We have our player ship in the scene. It's in the center. When we hit play, though, when we hit play, it actually has gravity and it just falls. So what we're going to do is the next step is actually to remove gravity here. So I'm gonna do a little screenshot here for the students so they can see that if they hit this button here in the top right, they can actually get a little bit more. So I wanna make it so that they can click this button. It'll take up the whole screen. If they want more space, they'll be able to see everything. <laughs> Milos, thank you for the, the for the hat. Let's get another hat added to the stack. Oh my goodness. It's gonna be wild here. We are using the Mad Hat encoder. That's right. We are using GD script here uh, in the Godot's, Godot's built-in language, of course. Um, C sharp is another option, but I'm for simplicity for my students because it's all built in. We are going to be using GD script for this project here. All right, so we get that added in so that it'll take up the whole space here. Take up the whole space. And I want to show them that we're going to actually remove the gravity. So I'm going to take a screenshot of the code here. Let's highlight this code. And we're going to remove that chunk of code from it. So open in the image editor. And we're going to highlight this code for them and then we're going to record it getting deleted. So we're going to go ahead and copy this to the clipboard, paste that in here like so. Do you teach Python to your students? I don't teach Python, but there is another teacher at my school that does do Python courses. I don't teach the Python courses, though. Dragon Spirits, welcome into the stream. Hope you're having a beautiful day, my friend. Yeah, I'm a big fan of C-Sharp. I mostly teach C-Sharp, not exclusively. Dragon Spirit, let's get a hat, another hat added for you. Thank you so much for the hat. All right. So we're going to record this here getting deleted. Uh, where is that? All right, record. And we're just going to show this code getting removed. Okay. So we'll do a little bit of an F7 select that code and delete it and then we'll do an f8 there 
Okay. Save as, and we're just going to remove Rabbity, like so. I am a big fan of hats. I wear many hats. I wear many hats, if you haven't known. Let's just double check, make sure this is correct. And so now we're able to move around. Oh, up and down don't work, though. So we can move left and right. Up and down don't work, which makes sense. So I have to add those in in a moment. Okay. Let's go ahead and save this into our document. We're going to remove gravity here. Add remove gravity to our document here, like so. <laughs> only hats, only hats. All right, RG, uh, thank you for letting us know. Okay. Not going to close that yet. Uh, now when we run, sorry, now when we run, we can move left and right. So I'm going to show this little video here as well. So we'll go ahead and run it and let me get our screen capture again, record like so. We'll F7. I'm going to show them that we can move left and right, but we can't move up and down. No up and down. All right. Go ahead and save that. Left and right. I've been doing some things in TensorFlow. Ooh, ooh, Milos. TensorFlow, doing a little bit of uh, AI stuff. Do you know some algorithms? Yeah, so depends on the, you know, I've done a lot of data structures and algorithms. Is your plan to teach Godot to your class? Yeah, two nerdy nerds, I'm teaching a Godot class uh, this fall. I'm actually teaching a 16 week, uh, 15 week Godot class. Uh, this fall. And so this is going to be the, the first project that students do. It's going to be a shmup here. And I'm thinking, so we're going to start with this one and then we'll evolve from there. I'm thinking we're going to have this be the main project throughout and then have some side quests they go on. So usually my projects have like one big project that they can do. And they have what are called side quests where then there's little videos, there's different sets of things you can add. So not everyone has to add in a menu. Not everyone has to add in different types of enemies. Not everyone has to add in asteroids. Not everyone has to add in a high score, but I'll have different topics that show the different ways to do those things. And then students pick and choose which ones that they want. So they do their side quests and they do a presentation at the end on the, the game that they ended up making. So everyone ends up with a slightly different game with a variation on a theme. Absolutely belongs in the classroom. Absolutely, I agree. All right, so this one here, left and right. We'll go ahead and add this in here like so. Okay. So we show up moving left and right. And now we want to actually add in that we want to move up and down. Up and down, get the input and handle the directions here. So essentially, this is going to be one of the first times where I don't give the student the code that they're going to solve. Instead, I'm going to tell them, hey, what? look at this code. This controls velocity x. How do you think you can modify this code or copy this code to produce an up and down? So this is going to be the first challenge in the project. So you can move left and right. How do we get it to move up and down? How do we get it to go up and down here? So I'm not going to actually tell them this. It's an important part to read the code try and copy it and reproduce it. So with that in mind, what do you, someone, someone tell me, someone tell me, what should we do here? If I want to make this right now, we can move left and right. How do I get it to move up and down? Someone who's new to coding, I find it will do bigger projects. I really appreciate it when you make tons of super small things just to, exactly. That's exactly what we're doing here. This project is all about doing repeat, repeat, add another sprite. Add a new enemy, create a new enemy with a minor slight thing. So is this a teacher preparing Godot for school or the official Godot? I am, so I am a, a host here on, on Godot today. I am a teacher. My full-time job is working at a school for ages 10 to 14. I'm a computer science and programming teacher, and I am showing you the process I go through for creating my class curriculum. This is the first year I'm going to be doing a Godot class, but I teach a lot of programming classes um, and this is my first time I'm using Godot. Is the engine using fixed time sets so you don't need to use deltas? So we happen to be using something called a character body 2D and it's built into this moving slide. So the de it's, it's one of the things I actually find slightly annoying. This isn't like a considered a traditional rigid body. 
and move and slide takes into account the delta. So the answer is delta is hidden inside of this move and slide. So I, I kind of, it kind of drives me crazy that it does it that way. I'd be much, I'd much prefer not to. I'm currently choosing so which country, if I may ask, I'm in the, the school I work at is actually international. So we get students from all over the world. Our main demographic is United States. But I happen to work in an, a, a remote international school. So we actually have students all over the, the world um, who, who attend these classes. It's really, really cool. All right. So, yeah, the delta time is built in here. But let, let's talk about it. How would I do this if I wanted? All right. So let's start here. I'm going to take this code. And we're going to duplicate it. Just, without knowing anything, without knowing anything, well, let's read this error. There's already a variable named direction. Okay, so I can't use the, it's There's already a variable named direction. So I need to change this a little bit. It needs to be something else, direction two. And I'm going to call this, I'm going to go ahead and come in here and call this left, right. Left, right. And we're going to rename this left, right? This will be essentially one of our first classes we talk about. This will be like their first homework assignment. Sit in a group, talk with each other, breakout rooms. How do we change this? What do we modify here? Up, down. Up, down, up, down. What are we going to change here? How do we modify this here? UI up, UI down. And then the next one is we want to change this to Y. What's up, dog? Two nerdy nerds. I don't know. What is up, dog? What is up, dog? Velocity.y, yeah. Yeah. And it turns out that there's an even better, in my opinion, a slightly better way to do this as well once we start talking about vectors. So it's going to be the first student challenges. Can you write code to get your ship moving in all directions? This is the first challenge. Okay. And there we go. Now we have a ship. Look at this go. The, the the first thing you always, the first thing to do in game dev is get something moving around on the screen. Once you have something moving around, it's all it's all magic from there. It's all magic from there. Uh, has such a school. If the teachers are also international, maybe you could send me a link to that school. Having good dough in their plan is definitely a plus. Uh, Nam is stream. If you join Captain Coder's Academy, I'd be happy to chat with you about that. So it's a Discord. If you have Discord, feel free to join our Discord. Be happy to chat with you about that offline. So you're really going to describe that feeling. It really is magic from there. Yeah, at this point, it's like, oh, I like to tell my students. And in fact, I felt like this almost my entire life is that writing code, I feel like I'm a wizard. I feel like I'm a magic user writing these scrolls, writing these scrolls, writing these magic spells, and the computer is, you know, the tool that runs the spells. I feel like a wizard when I program. It's super cool. Mmm. That coffee is so good, man. So good. All right, so now we have this moving around. That's the first big one. Now we're going to go through a refactor process. We're going to go through a refactor process here. And so now I do want to teach my students a little bit more about uh, vectors. You don't need to change the second velocity.x to velocity.y on line 28. Oh, thank you. Yes, I do. It turns out this is almost not necessary. Thank you so much, Hamza. Thank you so much for getting it. Natural flavors. How are you today? We got the natural flavors. Yeah, thank you guys so much for correcting me there on line 28. Turns out we're going to rewrite this code again here. We're going to actually talk about this where I'd like to introduce a vector two. So right now we have this variable. We have an X. We have a Y. These two things are related. And in fact, if we hover, if we hover over them, no, no. If we look at, hang on, hang on. Oh, there we go. Velocity. Here we go. Control click. If we control click on velocity, it brings us to the documentation and it gives us some descriptions here. What is a vector two? Vector velocity is a vector two. The current velocity vector in pixels per second used and modified during calls to move and slide. This is inappropriate for the point of your lesson, but I always struggle with find a means to make movement easier to edit 
for finding the right fill. Yeah, I always try to find a way to have a variable such as a set acceleration, etc., to try and struggle with finding a nice one. Implement this. Yeah, so you would want to have a speed multiplier. Here, let's do it. Let's do it. We'd want. I, I typically have a speed multiplier. So we have this speed here, right? This is our speed multiplier. Let's change this. And we're going to go back because I need to take some screenshots of this. Let's export this as a var here like this. All right, so we export it as a var. And now in my inspector, I have this speed that I can adjust up and down to find the right filling. I can find the right filling for it. And even cooler, watch this. This is even cooler. While my game is running, I have my game running here. While my game is running, I click over on remote, come over to my character here. I can say, okay, well, what would 600 feel like? Oh, 600 feels a little too fast. 600 feels a little too fast. Uh, let me drop it down. How about 400? Ooh, that feels pretty good. 300 wasn't enough. 400 is almost right. Maybe 450. So I can play with these numbers live while my game is running. Play with them, figure out what feels nice figure out what feels nice here. So adding in this variable here can help us find the right feeling. Is that blue willing always on top? Yeah, this is an always on top feature. It's part of Windows. It's part of Windows. Uh, I can make it so that this window will always be on top. Uh oh, <laughs> I, I made it. If you wiggle your window, if you wiggle your window, you will find on Windows that it hides all your windows, but the one that you wiggled. So don't wiggle your window unless you want only one window to be wiggled. Luckily, I discovered that if you wiggle your window and you want to get your windows back, if you just wiggle that one window one more time, you'll unwiggle your waggle and you'll be ready to go with your windows where they once were. Um, or so or, or so I've heard, so I've heard. All right, so that that's one way we can do it. And that's one way I like to do it. Gregor, I hope that was helpful. Uh, but yeah, goodbye. I did not know you could wiggle more to unwiggle the wiggle. Now you know how to wiggle and waggle your way to perfection. What a tongue twister. I don't know what you're talking about, Maxi. I don't know what you're talking about. Those are just the words that came out of my wiggle waggler. Uh, it was, yes, okay. All right, perfect. So we can do that. Let's go back in time here. We're gonna go back in time. We're gonna take some screenshots of what we did. We're gonna go back here. We did this now that we can move around. That feature is useless. Uh, yeah, I, I never, I, it's a feature that I have never wanted. For what it's worth, it's a feature that I've never wanted. Um, I've never used it. It, it. just It's a feature that happens to me when I'm trying to demonstrate something and I'm really sad because all my windows went away. And I don't want to wiggle my windows away. I want to wiggle and waggle to sh display what I'm trying to demonstrate. But in fact, Windows doesn't want me to wiggle and waggle. It wants me to hide the windows when I waggle the wiggle. Um, it like the wiggle personality, I know. It's helpful if you want to just isolate that one screen, right? Okay. So I want to now demonstrate that, oh, well, we have a vector too. We have a vector too. So I'm going to show that if you click, if you hold control and you click and on Mac, it's command and click. It'll open up the documentation here. So let's go ahead and close this. So let's take a screenshot here. Take a screenshot. Can I not? Oh, I can't take a screenshot while I'm holding control. I can't take a screen, sc screenshot while I'm holding control. That's too bad. Uh, I guess I'll have to take a screenshot and say to hold control or command and then right click, uh, control click. All right, so we're gonna do a control click on velocity. Okay. Uh, okay, at this point, students should uh, attempt to implement the velocity for moving up and down. Well, let me take a screenshot. Uh, should have taken a screenshot of the previous code. We got to go back in time. Let's put this here. We are going to do that. 
Um, let's go back in time. Back in time, we got rid of that. I want to get a screenshot of this code here. Okay, then we're gonna say, ask student, ask student to copy and paste this, the code below. How can they modify? What changes do you think you should make to move up and down? The window wiggle waggle feature isn't wanted due to the unnecessary waggles that you must unwiggle with wacky wizardry, mostly maxi. Thank you for that beautiful tongue twister. We can twist that tongue by saying that 10 times fast, but I won't because I can't. Okay. And then we'll show them this is the solution. This is a solution. And so I might have this, I might not have this. I probably won't have this. Uh, in the initial, it'll be like on a next page here. The idea though, is that students should struggle through at this point, struggle through and try and get it to work here uh, and learn a little bit about reading the errors. Never twist your waggle before speaking to your physician. I think the Frank too, that's probably correct. That's probably correct. Okay, so now if we right click, show how to right click to access documentation. Since I couldn't hold control, control plus click, flash command plus click. I'm pretty sure it's command click on Linux uh, or on Win uh, Mac, but I'll have to double check that uh, on my Mac, which I have right here, but we'll have to check it uh, live. So let's put this back in like so, okay. And we're going to do this. It's going to bring this here like this. Let's take a screenshot of this. I'm going to show that, hey, this opens up our documentation. And this is the documentation here. Copy to clipboard. Go ahead and uh, paste that in as an image that we'll use. Next, we're going to go ahead and tell, we're going to talk about what a vector is. Talk about what a vector is. And it is a combination of two numbers. In Godot, it's a combination of two numbers that represents, it happens to represent a position on the screen in two dimensions. Okay. And so we're going to talk about how to modify this code to get the input vector. So if we do input dot get vector do an input dot get vector and then if we read the documentation for get vector negative x positive x negative y positive y we can actually get this whole value all at once okay so i want to show that if you do input dot and start typing you can actually get this nice autocomplete feature so we're gonna take a little screenshot here of this And then we're actually going to do a little video of it. Let's do a video of it. That'll be a little bit better. Let's get our recorder. Pull this up here. Do we'll actually have it be the whole window here. So I'm going to open up the documentation, show them how to get the whole thing. Do an F7. Input dot G E T vector. And then we can control click to open up this documentation here. Go ahead and end that video. There's a Godot conference sold out. Oh, I didn't know it was sold out. We do vector two, uh, vector two, or input get vector here, and then this will pull out the information we need to understand what arguments to put into this. Right, we'll let this process for a moment. Anyone here going to the Godot conference by any chance? 
wonder if anyone's going here in October. I can't believe it's sold out. That's too bad. Don't forget to hydrate, folks. Keep yourself nice and hydrated. Got to keep that throat nice and fresh. Maybe next year, two nerdy nerds. Maybe next year. Yeah. Yeah, it would be fun. I bet it'd be super fun to meet all the people doing Godot stuff. I think it'd be super cool. I bet a lot of people who work on contrib contributions, contributing, contributing to the Godot engine will be there. I'd love to talk with people who are active contributors. I think that would be super fun. Super interesting too. All right, still processing. We're almost there. Loading up. <laughs> I say we're almost there, but really we're only 50% of the way. Berlin is a bit far away for me. Yeah, same here. But also it's expensive to stay there. I've been to Berlin before and the hotels were costly. Interesting. I wonder if I could get my school to, if I if I looked ahead enough, they usually will pay for conference and stuff. I wonder if I could talk my school into uh, funding me going. I think it would be really interesting to give a talk next year on teaching Godot in a classroom and how that went. You know, so I do a lot of computer science education research. I don't, I don't, but I could learn enough, I think, to get by. 50% almost there kind of, Captain. Yeah, look, look, it was easy. That was a long one. That was a long one. All right, input get vector. Probably end up converting these to um, WebMs uh, as well, because they're a bit long here. All right, so we got that. And now what we really want to do, take a little screenshot of this as well. And the important parts to understand are that we want negative X, positive X, negative Y, positive Y here. So negative X, UI left, positive X, UI right negative ui up was oh, that right positive yeah this one should be positive you is up positive oh negative y i bet i have these backwards i bet it's down then ui up I can never quite remember and so now we're going to create a ver uh movement input like this and then instead of doing all of these things, we're actually going to do our velocity equals our movement input times speed. So we can actually reduce that whole thing to this, I believe. Let's try it. Well, I have my up. Ah, I got my up and down reversed. There we go. Easy mistake. Yeah, that's what I'll tell them. Easy mistake. There we go. There we go. Now we got a nice little move around here. We're able to reduce it to just these two, two little lines, which is super nice. Yeah. So we'll take a screenshot of this and say that the whole code was reduced down to this uh, after the fact. So nice little thing showing. This also helps us introduce the word refactor. Introduce the word refactor. And for anyone who doesn't know, refactor is a word we use to describe when you modify the code, when you change how something is done, the implementation, without changing the actual behavior. Do you have to keep these parameters in order or you can use, uh, can you also use keywords as well? Hams, I don't understand the question. I don't quite understand what you're asking. The inputs, need to be in this specific order. So the inputs to this are the negative X, positive X, negative Y, positive Y. If you change your key bindings, you would want to change which strings you put in these spots here. So these are string names. The string names are coming specifically from the user input. These are just some built-in strings that are part of every project. So in our project settings, the input map here, if we show the built-in ones, these are the inputs that are built in for moving left to right. I mean, I have seen keywords to denote parameters like K, 
Ah, so that's what I was thinking about. No, these are very specific ordered. These are in a very specific order. Yeah, I hope that answered your question. All right, there we go. Now we have our ship moving around on the string screen. This is our part one that's going to commit in here so we can save this in our stream. So we can save this up. All right, so we have our ship moving around. Uh, not too bad. Not too bad. Nice, nice. We almost have a. It, it's almost a game. We can move. We can do things. It's a. It's a thing where the user can control something. There's not a whole lot interesting going on, but I know students get super excited by this. Super excited. Let's go ahead and get a commit in here. Go ahead and save my progress. Welcome back, RG. Hope you're having a beautiful day. Uh, git commit dash m. Uh, beat refactor player ship controller. You're super so excited, mostly Maxi. I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to hear you're 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 so excited, so excited. Okay, what do we want to do next? What do we want to do next? We want to add in. Uh, so there's a couple different things. We did Qlist now. Ooh, Qlist would be a good one. Do you want do you want to play some Qlist G? Is that what you're suggesting? We could do a little right. We could take a little break, take a little breather, get ourselves a nice round of Qlist in here. Someone was asking, Kit Milos, are you still here? KV Milos, are you here? Because I know you were asking about one of my my favorite board games. We can I can show off one of my favorite board games right now if you're interested. We'll take a little quick breather here. One's in the chat if you want a quick breather. One's in the chat. We can take a quick breather here. We can switch to this game here. One of my favorite games of all time. One of my favorite games of all time here is called Qless. Qless. Thank you for the one, Lance. This game's called Qless. The solitaire crossword game. 12 dice. Serious fun. Serious fun. If you've played Scrabble, you might be kind of familiar. It it'll feel familiar. The solitaire game, you play it by yourself, you play with a friend. You take these dice, you shake them up, you roll them, you roll them, and then your goal here is to create a crossword, create a grid of continuous. Oh, we got a, only two vowels. I put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, we have all the dice. Lately, we've been getting a lot of, of rounds where we just have two vowels. The Y's make it hard. We got a lot of repeat letters as well. And our goal here is to create a grid of using only these letters, all continuous, all connected. And there's one little, they have to be real words. They have to be real words. And they also have to be three letter words. So the word bow, even though bow is a, a real word, the, the words all have to be at least three letters. So you could use bop, but not bow. Top, top's one we could do. So keep in mind, we want to try and get some long words in here because we only have two vowels. We're going to use these Y's somehow as well. Uh, top might work. We could do so botch. Botch is pretty good. B-O-T-C-H. Use one of those C's. Um, and then we can maybe have some come down here. Um, do, do, do. Cause I was thinking... Um, I was thinking, what was the word I had? I had a, a Y. Using these Ys might be tough as well. We had some H-Y. It'd be cool if we had a P. Could it, clay patch. Patch. We could do patch. We could do batch. Patch is a good one in here. Uh, bald. B-A-L-D. Bald is okay. Baldy. Do we, are we going to say, maybe, maybe we could say baldy is a word. We could do baldy. A patchy. Ooh, ooh, we're making crap and coy. Yachts. Ooh, yachts another good one. So we could have done yacht. There you go. I think we got it though. We could do yacht. Uh the P is gonna be harder to use here. I like that we had a patch. You didn't know stream was early in Finitani. Welcome in. Hope you're hope you're having a beautiful day. I'm gonna go with patchy. Patchy. I think we got it. Is patchy a word? We're gonna verify it. But we got baldy, patchy, and koi. I think we got it. This is one of my favorite board games of all time. I'm Kansas. Thank you so much for the patch there. That saved us. I thought this one was going to be much harder than this. Let's add this to our Q list Hall of Fame. 
I want to make, so I've started making a version of this in Godot that I want to make a version that is an infinitely scaled a board. So every time we'd play, we'd have a board and we add to that existing board. I think that could be really cool. That could be really cool. You have a sector that you have to add in, but it has to be connected to a previous sector. Let's get a screenshot in here. We're going to add this to our Culus Hall of Fame. Take this screenshot. Thank you so much for suggesting we play a round of Culus here. Bald Pat. <laughs> Infinitani, just wait, just you wait. Someday you too might have a bald patch. You could be just like the Captain Coder, have yourself a bald patch. Um, <laughs> hope everyone's having a beautiful day. Thank you guys so much for being here. Nerd Waffle, uh, is this Godot or Cap? Maybe it's the Godot and Cap. Captain Godot. All right, folks, over on the Discord, if you join the Discord, you will actually be able to find. Our Culus Hall of Fame, where we put all of our winning rounds, all of our winning rounds. Uh, so if you want to join Captain Coder's Academy, you can do so. We have it on Discord. We have a lot of fun over here. People asking questions, people sharing results, people sharing their projects. We've got a lot of really awesome people hanging out with us. Uh, sometimes we get together in the voice channel. Hasn't happened as much as it used to, but I've just been so busy. Chat looks a little different today. It's just a, just a little bit, Infinitani. Just a little bit. All right. So here's what we have so far. Here's what we have so far. Is we have a little controller here for our ship to move around. A little controller for our ship to move around. What do we want to do next? All right. So we'll, we'll, we can vote on it. So there's several things that we want to do in our game. We can add in an asteroid. So we can add in an asteroid that becomes an obstacle that we can destroy. So that's one thing we could add in. One of the other things we want to be able to add in is a background. So having like a star field, star field. Tani, we're going to, we're keeping it simple. This is a first time. So this project, you got to keep in mind, this is a first time project for a student who has never used good dough. So it's their first time using good dough. We could add tweens. Um, I don't think that's, I don't, I actually don't think it's very unsmooth right now at all. If I'm being completely honest, it doesn't feel unsmooth to me at all. So we could add in an asteroid, we could add in a background, we could add in a laser, we could add in a bounce so the player can't fly out of it. So we could add like a, uh, the star field, we could use particle effects, that's the plan, particle effects to add a little background. Batman9459, welcome to the stream, thank you so much. Yeah, we got a couple hats here, we got a couple hats here, what do you think, what do you think about this one? What do you think about that one? Let me get that one on there. Better, worse, better or worse? Better or worse? What do you think? What do you think? Better or worse? But thank you so much. Is it as cool or cooler or less cool? I think on the sprite texture filter nearest. Um, I think that's what it has by default, doesn't it? Let's check it out. Flight, uh, sprite, texture, filter nearest. I think the default is nearest. Um texture uh, oh defaults linear um but if i'm not using do i want to do nearest why would i want to switch to nearest i'm not going to do that because i don't want to teach about it's the captain shaman 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 only if you want pixel art. yes these aren't pixel art so we're not going to do that for pixel art. yeah that's what i thought all right, great to have you here. I finally fell in. You fell into a Hadrian Collider in an alternate reality. Welcome to the welcome to the the real welcome to reality. Welcome to the reality. Okay. So I think what I want to add. This is totally for noobs. Yeah, this is totally for noobs. We're making a tutorial. I'm actually going through the process of creating. Uh oh, creating. Hang on. We're creating a document here. We're documenting everything we can do. So I'm going to turn this into a class project. It's kind of pixel art. We're going to turn it into a class project. So I'm actually screenshotting every step along the way so that we can turn it into a class project. So it's totally for beginners. Uh, yeah, of, of pictures here, of pictures here. We can share this too. Let me, let me see here. Yeah, let's go ahead and, and share. Anyone with link can see it. If you guys want to go see all the pictures, We'll be, we'll be cleaning this up here. 
Yeah, so you can go ahead and find that if you want to. Go check out all the stuff we've done so far. We're gonna be turning this into a class project that I'm gonna be using in the fall for my intro to Godot class that I'll be teaching. Okay, let's go ahead and we're gonna add in. I'm gonna go ahead and add in. I'm in the class, <laughs> maybe, maybe, possibly. I think you might be a little too old for my class, Tommy. Uh, ages 10 to 14, 10 to 14. So we had, it's so much fun to just move around here. Let's go ahead. What I want to do is add in a bounding box that's going to prevent my player from moving outside of this area. I don't want, so what's funny is I have, I'm pressing up here and my ship is drifting off to the right because I have a controller attached and my controller's analog stick is slightly, slightly messed up. So pressing up on the keyboard, actually, I'm going to unplug my controller here. Pressing up on my keyboard actually is making me drift. It's making me a little bit crazy, drifting off to the to the right a little bit uh, when I press up and down. Did I get all my cue list dice here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We did it. We done it. All right. Let's hop back in here. Let's add in a bounding box. We want to prevent our player from moving off the screen. I want to prevent our player from moving off the screen. So there's a couple ways we could do this. There's a couple ways we could do this. We can force it. We could do it through code. We could do it through colliders. We could do it in a in, in many different ways. Can I? I'm curious. I'm curious. Yeah, I. I want to have a collider. I usually like to use it to do a collider to, to for my bounding area. Let's go ahead and do that. And I'm not exactly sure how I want to do this. So I'm going to do it once without taking screenshots. And then we're going to redo it again once I feel I understand how I want it to work. Thank you so much for the hat, Tawny. Let's get a hat added to this stack. Let's do it. Thank you for the hat. Spending those points. Thank you for the hat. There we go. So I want to add in. I don't think this will work. Maybe I do want to do it with code. Really what I want to do. Is there such thing as a collision line or a collision? I want a box, but I want you to be stuck. <laughs> Thank you for the test. I want you to be stuck inside of the box. <laughs> Saying that this serves no purpose. We need to put something inside of it. Um, segment, segment shape, new segment shape. Have I used this one before? World boundaries, four of them each side. Yeah, that world. Oh, there's a thing called a world boundary. Let's look at that. World environment or with that part of my collision, what was part of the collision shape? It's collision shape. Oh, I'm just, I'm just uh, a little bit daft and didn't see it world new world boundary shape here we go okay i've never used this one i've never used this one uh collision shape only serves to provide collision shape to a collision object 2d all right so we need to create a parent here reparent collision um hang on hang on what why why am i having trouble here Collision shape only serves to add it to a collision object 2D. Please only use it in a child of area 2D static body. That's what I'm looking for, static body. So we're going to create a parent here. Static body 2D, like so. Multiple collisions, all the world boundaries, yeah. So we're going to add these here. And can I draw... Uh, I see. So here it is. I see. Here it is, like so. And I'm wondering if, how do I, do I need to scale this or can I actually, Is this the, the best way to do it? Or is it better to be able to drag? I'd love to be able to just click 
in a spot and move it. It scales infinitely along one axis under the line. Yeah, that's sort of what I want. I would love to be able to scale it by clicking. Is this scale here? So I could grab it like that. That's sort of what I want. I want it to be centered. So there's a couple things I want to do here. There's a couple things I want to do. I think I want to add a camera. So to make my position a little bit easier, I think I want to add in a camera. When it's scaling, not if you do it, if you do it dynamically while you're running, I think it does. Let's try it. How would, well, that's why I was asking, can I, now might be a good time to open the docs for the world boundary, Captain. Yeah, let's go look at it. World boundary, good job. A world boundary shape intended for use in physics world boundary shape 2D works like an infinite straight line that forces all physics bodies to stay above it. Ah, I see. The line's normal determines which direction is considered as above, and the editor, the smallest line over it represents the direction it can, for example, use for an endless flat floor. Okay, so really, I just want to put this at zero, zero. That's really what I want. I want to move my character. Oops. One of my character here. And now I shouldn't be able to move below it. Hang on. This appears to be my uh, bottom. So it should be at the bottom of my camera. Is it scaled wrong? Ah, let's reset the scale. I still think it must be the top here. Let's move it below. Yes, so it's it's the bottom. Okay, so I want this to be at the bottom of my screen. And what's interesting here is I, I'm going to have to specify a number. And let's go see what our window size is. All right, 648. interesting here i think i want to actually create a if you click on the world boundary next shape you can change the normal well i don't want to change the normal yet I, this is my bottom this is my bottom what's interesting is i'm finding 648 should be the size of my window i'm surprised it doesn't show up over there i'm surprised it's not i don't understand why i need to move this lower um rust floppy we are taking over welcome in i hope you're having a beautiful day great to have you we can kind of eyeball it i just don't quite understand get yourself a good oh sorry it's nightbot telling me to get a plush i gotta get one if i click on the world boundary next to shape you can change the normal smab welcome in captain coder here i hope you're having a beautiful day smab i hope you're doing well Where is this value, this normal? I see him modifying that. I don't know where it's modified here, which is interesting. I'm kind of surprised that when I modify this here, that I don't see a value being changed here. Shape, that makes sense. That makes sense. There it is. There it is. Ah, distance 54. That's where my distance was off. 648. The distance was off here, which was setting that off there. So this makes sense. He's a hacker. He used Godot to hack into Godot's Twitch. Floppy. I was invited here. I promise. I promise. They invited me. They invited me. All right. Oop, not what I want to do. It's interesting that the default is... Uh, set normal. So we'll be able to do this. So negative one here. This is going to be our bottom. This one will be our top. 
And so this one's transform will put it at zero. Zero. Somehow this ended up at four. And then this part one on the top, we want this one to be a one. So we have a top, we have a bottom. Ooh, maybe. Did that not adjust? Hang on. Ooh, zero and one. Yeah, it should be zero, one. Interesting. Interesting. Why? You were at a bottom here. But I mod but then I modified it. Oh, why are they oh they're using the same resource. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, a little annoyance there. Need to make this a new one here. Yeah, so it modified them. That's probably something I should explain to students. Um, all right, and then we'll move this up to zero, zero. We have our top boundary, we have our bottom boundary. And we're gonna add in the left and right boundary here. Uh, duplicate, you were saying, all right, so I can do a Right click, make unique on a resource. Oh, you're saying I can make the the resource unique. Yeah. There we go. We'll call this left. Okay. And same thing. We're going to make this a zero. Oh, can I not make that zero? This will be... Interesting that I have to set it that way. Fine. That really doesn't matter. The transform here should be zero, zero. Make sure that is correct. Okay. And we'll make the right boundary next. Right. This is another spot where you can say, well, I'm going to show you how to do the two of these. Now, can you repeat the process? It's only annoying until you start duplicating stuff you want to have the same. Yeah, it's only annoying right now because I want them to be different, right? When you want them to be the same resource, it's actually not a bad thing. So there's like a little bit of intuition there. It's important to understand what's going wrong there. Shintai, welcome to the stream. Hope you're having a beautiful day. All right, and then this one, let's go find the size here, 1152. Oh, wrong one. X 1152 like that. Okay. So now we should be trapped within the bounds. And we are. We are. Perfect. We have the students adjust it from there as they want. Okay. So now that I understand what I want to do, we're going to go back. We're going to restart it here. And we're going to take screenshots as we go saying, okay, here's what we want. Here is the process. Here's the goal. We want to create a bounds for our player that they can't get out of. And here are the steps that we need to do it. All right, so we're going to go and delete these things. We're going to reset our player here to be in the top left position. And so the first thing I want to do is we're going to move our character into the middle of the screen. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to have the students move their player into the middle or maybe into the bottom there um i hit the wrong thing where did my recorder go f8 huh i lost it there we go recording let's go ahead and move this here and we're going to tell the students that we don't want to start in the top left we want to start in the bottom center I'm going to go ahead and record. I'm going to click on that, select move, move it to the bottom center there. Like that. We'll go ahead and save that. And we're going to have that added to our steps. Move player to bottom center, like so. So 
so this is one of those next steps we're going to take here, move it to the bottom center. Then we need to talk about, okay, we want to add in a boundary. We don't want to let the player leave the bounds of the scene. So we want to show them, okay, so how do we figure out what is the size of our scene? What is the size of that screen? So we're going to show them that going to the project settings here. Make sure we're on sort of the default. You in the back. Here. Pay attention. <laughs> Thank you so much for the pay attention, Tani. All right, so we're going to print the scene from the top here. Open an image editor. We're going to show, we're going to go to project menu and then project settings here. So this is going to be the old, give it the old one, two. Copy this to our clipboard. We're going to add this into our document here like so that was interesting I accidentally added a little comment to myself there i'm in like suggestion mode hang on editing mode somehow i switched to suggestion mode there we go let's go ahead and get that file now that was saved here for moving it to the center Move player character to center. We're going to add this in here like so. All right. I'm going to add a little a little header here for myself. Header. It's going to be um, adding boundaries. This is just so myself. These are notes for myself. Why do you have four hats on? Why not five? Five is better. No, let's see. Shin. Shin, let's get another one on. Let's see. I have. I do have one, two, three, four four five six seven we have seven hats but now we got eight thank you for the eight thank you great suggestion get another hat in so we got eight eight hats now so we're doing all right hey tebow wants to add another one all right we'll do nine hats. nine hats seems like enough if we if we run into trouble we'll add another one we'll add in another one thank you for the hat suggestion there definitely helpful okay because the more hats you have the more powerful you are. All right. So we have our project settings here. I'm going to show that we want to type in window and then click on window and look here. So we're going to have the student then come in here. We're going to take note of these values. Okay. So type in, you can search, select window. Ah, my mouse was in the way. My cursor, cursed. Put the screen one more time. Go ahead and pull that out for him. Open in the image editor. I wish I was as powerful. Mr. Ratatat, you can be. You too can be this powerful. All you gotta do is send 10 easy payments of $19.99 to Captain Coder's Academy and you too We'll get yourself. A, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Don't send me money. Don't send me money. Please don't buy any of my hats. <laughs> 10 easy payments. All right. We're going to keep track of the width and height here. So we're going to search. We're going to search here and then we're going to find that information under size. I'm going to copy this to the clipboard. I was just now looking at what is Godot. Never done game dev before. Well, welcome into the wonderful world of game dev. Godot is a free and open source, puts credit card away, yeah. It's a free and open source tool that anyone can use to make games and it's super easy. So we're actually here creating a classroom project. Creating a classroom project. Let me get this link for you. We're going through, we're taking the screenshots of what to do. I haven't added in all the text, but this document's gonna actually be the entire process for creating a shmup. And I'm going to be using this in my class that I'm teaching in the fall. I'm a full-time teacher, teach computer science and programming at school for ages 10 to, t uh, 10 to 14. And we're actually going to be doing a Godot class this year. And this project's going to be there. So feel free to check out this project. Uh, it's going to be turned into a web page. But yeah, I hope you'll find it useful. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I love, love, love when people ask questions and we get help in, in getting those things going. So the next thing we want to do is we actually want to add in a static body 2D. All right, so we're going to come over here, have students add in a static body. So we're going to have them click that plus. We're going to search for static body 2D. Take a little screenshot of this. And we're going to make sure that they add it to the node 2D here. 
hang on from the top so you want to make sure it's here add child node right click here click that in our scene this is the main so you want to add it there we want to make sure they don't add it to the player's character body um shin i hope they yeah i think it'd be awesome i think it'd be awesome for anyone who wants to learn how to do it cloud jr welcome into the stream hope you're having a beautiful day happy wednesday my friend we're in here making a godot project this would be a the idea is create a project that's good for a first time a first time thank you for the clip tawny thank you for the clip first time game dev first for someone who's never done any programming any game dev this is what we're designing this project for someone with no background at all to get you excited about the new process. All right, so we come in here. We're going to take these. We're going to search for the static body 2D. Static body 2D. Select static body 2D. And then click create. We got the old one, two, three here. Someone with no background. <laughs> yeah, I have. Yeah, like I have a, I have a background here. I have a background here. Yeah. Behind me is is a. I guess I don't. Would you say I have a background? There's a background behind me. I guess it's real. So if I had a green screen, would that be a background or no background? Now I'm con now I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So we're gonna create a static body 2D, and we want to make sure that it shows up here. All right, so we're going to open this up, make sure the student knows that it is a child of our node 2D. I'm going to put a little, a little cross across this one here to make sure they know it shouldn't be the child there. So I want to make sure that it is directly a child of the node 2D. Is there a place in the universe without a background? Great question for a show. I don't know. I don't know. It, you know, is that a philosophical question? Perhaps it's philosophical. Perhaps it's not so philosophical. All right. Then we want to add in a new child node here. This one was our collision shape 2D, like so. Um, hang on. We got to do the fall. I'm going to do right click add child here. This will be the old one, two. And we're learning, a, this is where that whole process of learning that muscle memory of like, oh, this is how I add a node. We're adding these nodes over and over and over. Uh, yeah, I love, love, love GreenShot. It's a fantastic, unfortunately, it's sort of like a Windows only tool. But it is a really, really good tool for creating documents like this. It is a fabulous, fabulous tool. In fact, I have all of these open. Let's go ahead and close several of these. Give ourselves a little bit. You can't see it, but I have 90 of these windows open that I'm closing. <laughs> there we go. All right. And then we want to come in, add this node. It's going to be a collision shape 2D. Like that. Collision shape. Like this. Um... If you're getting the one on, it should be free. The uh, The Mac version is not as, uh, so I will say the Mac version is different than this one. I am not a fan of the Mac version. Um, it's different. I don't think it's as good. I do have the Mac version as well, though. Um, I prefer the Windows version. <clears throat> and the Windows version is free. I think the issue with the Mac version, the reason the Mac version is not free is they have to pay $100 a year to keep it on the App Store. Yeah, the official is free and open source. All right, so we're going to call this Top. So we have them rename this. Rename. like so and i'm going to record myself actually doing the rename here so we'll get this 
do a little recording here. Shrink this down. Record. Uh, hang on. We're going to have to make that longer. Or the first one's actually going to be the bottom. Let's do one more time. F7. I'm going to right click, rename, bottom. Stop. All right. We're going to save this as a uh, bottom world rename. Thank you for the Googles, Tawny. Yeah, I think it's harder for developers to make free software on Mac because there is a hundred dollar per year. I believe it's per year fee that you have to pay to keep something in the app store. So it's really hard to create free things. So like if you download Godot on Mac, you're not getting it from the app store, you're downloading it separately. And then you actually have to, I believe say that, oh, by the way, I trust this thing. So getting it to run on Mac's a little bit different. Okay. Let's go into our uh, document here. We're going to add this in it's just so that we can show the rename. We're going to rename it to bottom. And then in our inspector here, we're going to come over to our shape, new world boundary. So it's going to be the new world boundary. So we actually have to click this first and then select the world boundary shape too. All right, save as, oh, no, nope, save as copy to clipboard. We're going to go ahead and put that on here. Uh, fee to be able to sign Mac applications. Yeah, and it's a yearly fee. That's the thing. So you have to continue to pay that fee. Um, to if doi. you're a developer. Thank you for the doi, Tony. <laughs> See, Tony's over on my uh, my stream chat uh, playing with the commands there for everybody. Okay. Add this in as a new world boundary. And then what we need to do is move it down to the bottom. So our transform here, we need to show the transform. We need to set this to 648 and then we need to also okay so it has that by default 648 let's take a screenshot of this our inspector and we're going to show these values down here transform and then the y position setting to 648 so we want to make sure that we find transform and then set this value to 648 or whatever our width happened to be if we changed the width which they shouldn't okay and then when we run it we can't go past the bottom we're stuck on the bottom there so we're going to go ahead and record this now um showing that we cannot go past the bottom I always love recording these dark black or these solid color images. Uh, they end up being much smaller. We can go up. When we go down, we can't go past the bottom there. Okay. Go ahead and save this as a uh, bottom boundary like this. We'll go ahead and add this to our document. Bottom and it's loading. It's processing, encoding. Give it a few moments here, then we'll go ahead and be able to pull that in. All right, we are approaching our three hour mark. We're gonna have to take another break here in a moment. I do have some bean water left, but we are approaching our three hour mark. So you are gonna take another break. I'm gonna get myself some, some leaf water, get myself some Earl Grey tea, maybe throat coat. You might be hearing my voice get a little bit dry, but we're gonna take a small break. We're gonna get ourselves a little bit of voice conditioner. Uh, the stream goes much longer than you. Yeah, we're going six hours, so maybe seven. We'll see how long this takes. Hopefully, we'll be able to finish this up here um, on stream 
and then I'll be able to go ahead and transfer it off. So our goal here is to finish it on trim. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. We can get as far as we can with it. But yeah, going at least six hours here on stream today, making this guide here, this project for students. All right, let's go ahead and close some of these. All right, we're gonna go ahead and now duplicate. We're gonna duplicate this bottom here. We're gonna duplicate the bottom, call it top. So we're gonna right click, is there a duplicate? Yeah, so take a screenshot of this. Open an image editor. So we're gonna say, go ahead and duplicate bottom. Bottom duplicate like this. That's the next step. Duplicate the bottom. We're gonna rename this. And I'll show that one more time. I'm gonna rename it like this. Oops, click that too many times. Copy to clipboard. Like that. We're gonna name it top. We need to move this to be at our position here in the top. So we're gonna to select our top and our inspector. We wanna set this to be zero. Open our image editor. Um, interesting that it didn't open there. There we go. Make sure that we're on top in our inspector, transform, and our position here is gonna be zero, like this, to move it up to the top. Is your neck tired of all those hats? Not yet, not yet. And you know, Hamza, we need a few, before, for my neck to get tired, we really need some more hats. So we'll get another one on here. Get another one on here. We'll see how, we'll see how we do. See how we do. Let's get another hat added on to the top here. Perfect. Hamza concepts. There we go. What do you think? Is this hat a little bit corny? A little bit corny. Too many hats? Just enough hats? All right. So we're going to go ahead and move that one to zero. And then the next thing we need to make sure we do is actually click here in the inspect. We need to click on that and set the normal to be one. Like this. So we're in the inspector again over here, open our image editor. And we're gonna say that we're in our top. We need to click on this, and then we wanna make sure our normal, and we'll explain what a normal is. We'll have to write some text about normal, one. We need to click that, and then we need to set our Y to positive one. Like this. His neck doesn't get tired, it gets stronger. Yeah, it's like, you know, getting thick, getting beefier. You gotta get that beefy neck. So that's why they, they used to call me beefy neck in school. The word normal is new to you? Uh-oh. Ah, this is where our problem comes along, where it actually modifies this issue. It modifies the one here. So we actually have to come back. We need to right click and select make unique. Okay. Actually need to come in and mark it make unique. Copy to clipboard. And we'll go ahead and put this above here. Rename, make unique. Um, let's put it down here, actually. Perfect. So we're gonna mark that unique. And then this one needs to actually be negative one. Now we should be okay. Yeah, so normal is the line perpendicular to the plane. That's right. So it th basically says which direction is going away from that plane. So if you have a line, if you have a line that is flat and straight here, if you have a line that's flat and straight. So let's say we have a line here. The normal to this line 
is the line that is perpendicular to it going straight up in this case, straight going away. If we were going down, this would be the normal. So you can use the normal as you rotate to say, well, which direction is up? Usually it's which direction is up relative to this. So if you had a line that was going across like this, you want the line that's perpendicular to it. That's not a good perpendicular line. Ah, why can't I draw arrows? Ah, I can't draw arrows. Would be a perfect 90 degree angle here. So this angle is 90 degrees. And so the normal is the line that's going away from it. So it's usually called the up. Not usually, it can often be called up. Yeah, you're welcome, you're welcome. All right, so when we're done, we should be able to move all the way up, all the way down and be stuck between them. So if all went well, so we're gonna say if all went well, oh, not a screenshot. Let's go ahead and add in a video. And then we're gonna take a break. Go ahead and start my, my player close to the bottom here. So we can't pass it that way, we go up. We can't pass it that way. So if all went well, we get in there and we do that. Okay. So go ahead and save this video, uh, top and bottom. And so then the next challenge is gonna be for the students. So this is where this challenge comes in. I'm not gonna show them how to do the left and the right. I instead, I'm going to challenge the student, can you now add the boundary for the left and right? So they'll have to play around with the normals. What is the Y normal? Now they'll have to figure out the X and the Y. And I'm not gonna actually give them the, the, the video, the direct, cut of how to do this and said this is the challenge at this point it says you can you use what you learned to solve this and if not that's where your teacher comes in work in a group ask someone for help you get a little bit stuck here because it's important to take these concepts not just copy them flavius welcome in not just copy it directly the first time you can do the monkey see monkey do and then it comes down to applying use that information can you apply that to the next concept there can you reuse that concept in a slightly different way that's where the real learning comes in so let's come over to our document here we're going to add in the top and bottom flavius wants another hat let's get another hat added to this stack here we go here we go you ready for it flavius oh I don't, my arms may not be tall oh my arms just barely long enough let's get this added on there thank you so much for that let's pull there we go there we go Excuse me, excuse me. All right, there we go, we got it. So we got our up and our down, and now the trick is to make sure the ears look funny. Look, I've been told that all my life, it's okay. It's okay, luckily I don't have, well now I have to look at them. Luckily I don't have to look at them. Let's, here, let's fix that, let's fix that. Let's get the ears, perfect, perfect. How, how do we do Shin? How do we do Shin? Better, worse, funnier, cooler, less funny? Hopefully I look better. Look, going for the handsome. Go for the handsome look. I think I'm pretty happy. Seven out of nine. Thank you so much. Perfect. Seven out of nine. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Stip, thank you so much. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're having a beautiful day. <laughs> These hat look, I know it's spicy here in this room. The temperature's off the charts. 3 a.m. local and it's already 80 it's all it's 85 degrees fahrenheit 85 f what is that in in a non-american 85 f to c so we're 85 degrees fahrenheit 79.4 it's 3 a.m here it's gonna get hot today 3 a.m here 85 fahrenheit 79.4 celsius it's a little bit spicy in here. you're right so it is hot i'm feeling a little bit hot all these hat warming me up okay we're gonna take a quick break here we're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we're gonna keep working on our Godot project. Oh, actually, let me add in the right and left boundaries first. All right, so I wanna add a little note here in my document. Student should now attempt to add left and right boundary. So we're not gonna give them the instructions to that. We're gonna say, challenge, add the left and right boundaries. So this is sort of like the homework in class work, that type of thing. I actually don't, typically give homework in my classes um and so it usually gives them time in class to work on it so we go over that 
Okay, let's go to our scene here. We're gonna duplicate this. We're gonna follow the process left. We are gonna make unique here. We are going to adjust our normal here like that. This is our right. So we can move this up to zero here like that. Double check to make sure that we have that. Can't go off the left side. Sweet, we done did it. Let's go ahead and duplicate this. Let's add one on our right side now. Again, we need to make this unique. We need to come in. We now want a negative one on our X. You'll notice that the arrow changed when I do this in our transform. What is the size here? I forget exactly. 1152. 1152, not bad. There we go. Let's give it a shot. And now we're stuck on the boundaries. Are you an online teacher, son, course, or school teacher? Great question. So my full-time job is working as a instructor. I work as a teacher at an online international school for students ages 10 to 14. So my full-time job, I actually don't sell my courses. All the courses, all of the projects I do are typically open source. My goal is to make things as free and as accessible as possible. As free as possible, as accessible as possible. Does it mean that it's always free? But it means it's as free as possible. The goal is to have something available to the widest audience as possible. But yeah, my profession, my full-time job is working as a teacher at an online school. And I love doing this stuff. My stream is dedicated to learning and coding and growing as a crew. So we have this nice community. If you wanna join the community over on the Discord, you can. We have a lot of fun there, sharing projects, sharing ideas, a lot of people doing game dev, a lot of people doing algorithms. I don't just do game dev, I do a bunch of stuff, but one of the classes I'm gonna be teaching this year is a Godot class. So we add in our boundaries here. We are gonna take our second break here. So we're gonna take a quick break. I need to get myself some more leaf water here. You are in the community, Tawny. You're, you're a stand, an outstanding member of the community indeed. We're going to hydrate. Remember to hydrate. We're going to come back. Thank you for the sus. We're going to come back. We're going to zaff. That's right. We're going to get ourselves a little bit more bean water. We're going to come back. We're going to get some stretches in. We're going to take care of our body. So get ready. Get your mom. Get your dad. Get your cousin. Get your uncle. Call them up on the phone. Say, hey, Captain Coder's over on the Godot official channel. We're going to get some stretches in. The captain loves us. DJ, welcome in. Is there somewhere we can view this from the beginning if we are new to using Godot? Yeah. So let me send you the link here. So this is the project here. I don't have all the text in, but all of the screenshots of everything we're doing so far, and I'm gonna be cleaning this up. You can find everything we've done so far here. And you can also go back and rewatch the VOD. So you can go all the way here. I've taken screenshots. I've done little GIF videos here. You can come through and watch it. Um, I'm having so much, yeah. So I'm gonna be going through today and we're gonna be cleaning this project up here, adding in more descriptive text. But right now I'm just going through taking screenshots of everything as we go, getting the outline ready to go. So we have added in boundaries. Let's go up to the top here. Uh, one more thing I should add in. And maybe we should could come back to this and start cleaning up and adding in text here. But the goal is to finish this today or, my, we, pr we probably won't finish the whole thing on stream, but we'll get close. All right, create a new project. All right, we'll do a little outline here. And then we're gonna create the player here. Create player ship. All right, so these are the three things done. So create a project, create a player ship, adding in the boundaries. All right, but welcome into the stream, Dizzy. I hope you're having a beautiful day. We're having a blast here so far today. We're gonna come back from our break. We're gonna add in some more. So be ready when we get back. We're gonna add in some more here. I think we're gonna add in an asteroid next. We're gonna add in a little object that we can't, that we want to avoid or that we can destroy. We can shoot, we can add in a projectile. We'll make it so we can destroy some stuff. So hang tight, don't go anywhere. Captain Coder will return very soon. Two to three minutes, three to five minutes. Not too long. Don't go anywhere. Get your mom, get your dad, get your uncle, get your cousin, get your coworkers in the room so we're gonna get some stretches in, then we're gonna hop back to it. Don't go anywhere.
Tomatoes, you know, I love me a good tomato. I don't know why I feel like I can't trust you, but, but we'll give you a pass. Folks, Captain Coder's back. We're not, I, I am getting mugged. I know it says coffee. That's a lie. It's Earl Grey tea right now. We did have two cups of coffee. Tomatoes, welcome in. Hope you're having a beautiful day. Folks, Captain Coder loves you, which means you should love you. And if you love you, you got to take care of yourself. And one way you can take care of yourself is getting up and stretching. I'm going to implore you to stand on up. If you're at work, say, hey, everybody. My glorious coworkers, I love you so much. Tell your coworkers that you love them. Tell them that they need to take care of themselves, that you want, that you love them so much that you wish they'll take care of themselves. Get them to stand up. I'm going to implore you. I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to engorge you, you to in stand the back. on up. Pay attention. That's right. Pay attention. Get on up. We're going to get some stretches in, folks. we got to take care of ourselves every every hour Every 90 minutes, three hours. We've been going three hours without getting any stretches in. Go and get on up with me. We're going to get those arms up at the side, feet shoulder width apart. We're just doing a nice trunk twist. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice and slow. Back and forth. You don't want to go too fast. We're taking care of ourselves. We're loving ourselves. We're loving our body the way we deserve to be loved because you're lovely people. You're lovely people out there. If you want to last a long time, you don't want to get those RSI's repeated strain injuries. Go ahead and put those arms up nice and high. We're going to lean to the left. Oh, yeah. Lean to the right. Oh, lean back to the left. Oh, to the right. There we go. Deep breath in. Stretch up nice and high. Oh, exhale. As you do, you're going to hinge at the hips. Hinge at the hips. Exhale, come down nice and slow. You're gonna hang here. We're gonna hang here for 15 seconds. Just getting a nice lower back. Get that those glutes, get those glute muscles stretching. Get that lower back stretching. And you're just gonna hang here for five more seconds. We're gonna take a slow inhale. Here we're gonna inhale for five seconds in. As we do slowly roll up, we're gonna bring those shoulders up. Back and down, we're gonna roll those shoulders back. Two. You in the back, pay attention. Four, add the elbows. Two, three, four, full arms. Yeah, two, three, four, roll them forward. Two, three, four, add the elbows. Two, three, four, full arms. Two, three, four, there we go. Shake it out. Shake it out. Tawny with the D&D. &D. You want to see my Dungeons and Dragons? Oh, yeah. Thank you guys so much for joining me in those stretches. I'm glad you did. I'm glad you're taking care of yourself. I'm glad you're loving your body the way it deserves to be loved. Two nerdy nerds. I'm glad that felt good. It felt. I hope it felt as good for you as it did for me. Hope it felt as good for you. Tawny, you're just, you're just admiring some of my, my Dungeons and Dragons here. And this is my fifth edition section here. I don't know. I, I got some magic the gathering as well but over here is my favorite over here is my favorite and it's hard to decide i think this forgotten realms campaign is the best but i really do like my dragon lance 
my fifth age dragon lance is pretty sweet too the fifth age my dragon lance fifth age i do love this collection here this campaign setting is super cool has all these cards has some maps has some nice figurines that we painted as well some awesome stuff in here the forgotten realms campaign setting from the advanced it wasn't called dungeon and dragons second edition it was called advanced dungeons and dragons and that's what I like. This campaign setting is too cool. This can this campaign setting is super cool. The dream setup, yeah, yeah. I loved. I played a lot of AD and D um, back in my day. Back in my day, I played a lot of AD and D. Then I got some of the Ravenloft stuff, was really cool too. The original Ravenloft. I know you guys are all into the Curse of Strahdly days, but we do have the the original Ravenloft. For, for uh, four to six players, levels one to three. Night of the Walking Dead, the beginning, the intro to, to uh, Strahd stuff. I was a big fan of that back in the day. All right, we're going to hop back in, folks. We're going to hop back in. We're going to hop back in. We are in the process. We're in the process of making a 2D top-down space shoot 'em up game. As a project, really, we're making this as a project for learning the basics of Godot, the basics of GD Script. What I find amazing is how far we, you can, how far you can get without writing a lot of code. This is why I think it's okay for me to be teaching this class and and focusing less on the code and more on the tool itself. How far can we get with the tool? How far can we get with the tool? Can we lean into the the tools? that the engine provides to reduce our complexity, to manage the complexity for us. We could, I often lean heavily into the programming aspect. This particular class is gonna to be touching lightly, really lightly on the programming aspect so you can learn the tool. And then as we get into further things, say, okay, well now, how can we use programming to do more complex and interactive stuff? Okay. So let's go ahead and add in. I want to add in to my scene here. We almost have a game. We have a ship somewhere. We have a ship. We can move it around. We're, we, we, we are clearly stuck within the bounds of the screen, like so. Let's give ourselves some obstacles to avoid, some things that we want to make sure that we don't touch. Okay. So we're going to go back into our assets that we got. These are the Kenny assets here. And we're going to select some asteroids and, and bring them in to our game. You'll notice our resources are starting to get a little bit chunky. A little bit chunky here. And we'll probably do something about that in a moment. But we're going to take this meteor. And we're going to add it into our scene here. So we're going to go ahead and... See if we can have our students remember how we got this in to the scene. Ah, had the little pop up there. Print screen, we're gonna go ahead and drag this into our resources, but we're gonna have them organize this pretty soon. So when I tried the absolute best for our right function that would break down a curved 2D into weighted points and use a collision shape, and all I had to do was use the built-in test light. Yeah, it's all about push toy, that's right. We got some asteroids we're gonna add in here. I hit the wrong button again. Hang on, open an image editor. There we go. And so we want to tell the student to take our asteroid and we're going to drag it into our resources here. Go ahead and copy this to our clipboard. Throwing Godot logos at the player is always fun. Ooh, we can do that. We could do that. That could be fun. So this next section here is going to be adding in. When we go, oh, we'll make that the enemy. We'll make that the enemy. So we'll have we're going to have asteroids, but we'll, when we add in the first enemy, we'll use the Godot logo. I, I do like doing that as well. It is a classic Godot thing to do, adding an asteroid. Uh, I'm not a true Brodo, Bro, uh, Brodo, Brodo. That's a funny thing. That's a hard one to say for me. It's spelled better than it sounds in my mind. So the Bro, so it's like Godot, so it's like Brodo. Roto sounds weird. We're going to add this in here. We get our meteor. And we want to add it in like this. Godot is the enemy. Got it. Godot is the enemy. 
we could have made the player good dough and then we're going to show adding this in we want to add it in to our as a node here i guess we could just drag it in it's not really what we want um so maybe we'll have them add it in we're going to have this thing we want it to move around so we're going to make it do i really want this to be a character it doesn't really listen to physics here's the thing this doesn't listen to physics it's going to have an area 2d on it yeah so this is interesting here this one is not going to be a character 2d or should it be a character 2d and then we'll just use different physics colliding bodies Every time I thought Godot was the enemy, it turned out the enemy was me. We'll have it be a character body for the following reason, to get the practice of writing that code for having things move around. I think that makes sense. Here, use Godot Loki for a copy of Vampire Survivor Depressed Games. Welcome, welcome back. Yeah, uh, Godot logo for the copy of Vampire Survivor. <laughs> we can make it the vampire. Um, make, a, make hordes of it. We'll have them add this in like this. I wish this was done closer to where we had done it before. But we're going to have them add in a meteor. wonder if I need to do the whole thing. Um, the challenge here is going to be to add in. They've added this stuff in. Can they remember how to add it? We drag the sprite in. No, I'm going to have them. I'm going to do it this way. And then we're going to have them add in different sprites here like this okay so we'll have them drag it in so i'm going to do a print screen here and then show that they should drag this into the scene like that Um, one second, lost my document. So we're going to add that into the scene. The Werewolf Endurer. Tell us about the Werewolf Endurer. Add that in. Drag and drop to add child as a current scene's root. Yeah, that's what we want. Okay, then we're going to reparent this. All right, so we're going to right click reparent node. here so right click reparent node so we got a one two <laughs> you could be on you, you can choose your team make it so you can choose your team it's like vampire survivors but with the werewolves yeah exactly exactly genius genius so let's reparent and then again, we're going to pull up the character body 2D. Character body 2D. Boom, boom, boom. Like so. <laughs> we got the Freedom Forge. Yeah, that's right. Freedom. Then we're going to rename this. This is where things start getting interesting. Let's go ahead and right click to rename. The, re the repeat process here. So it's going to be one two and a lot of these things i may not actually have these pictures included because we've done this already once it's important to be able to go back and find these so we'll rename it asteroid take a screenshot of that here oops and then i'm actually going to 
have the student, I'm going to say, what does this error mean? Can you solve this error? So this one is definitely, I want them to be able to go back and redo. It's important to remember to do this open image. I'm going to say that, click this. How do we resolve this? Challenge. So this is going to be a challenge. Challenge. How do we resolve this warning on the character body 2D? Um, I've also said F3. So is that that's something you've manually modified? Is it too often to have a shortcut for that? Yeah. So you re um, change the node type. That's interesting. There's nothing wrong with that. All right. So now. To do this, let's recall we click Sprite, create a copy of it here, and becomes our collision shape at the end of the day. And so then we'll take a screenshot here of this whole thing saying this is the end result. end result should be this and then finally we actually want to have this be centered back on zero so we can select all of these things and make sure we set them to zero zero to get them centered hang on I'm going to do a recording of this. So we're going to watch this whole process. We want all of these to get centered. OK, I'm going to select everything, go to transform, type in. We set this to one and then zero and then one and then zero. It'll actually move all of these things to the center there. It's going to be a little thing I say to put them into the middle. Uh, collision shapes are usually bigger than the actual sprite when you do this, aren't they? Yeah, it actually ended up being a little bit bigger. It seemed like we could potentially adjust it a little bit. I think it's close enough, though. But yeah, when I was looking at it, the collision sprite, it was actually a little bit bigger. I find drawing it to be horribly tedious, though, uh, when you make the actual shapes. You're saying if I were to manually draw it, I could control the grow and shrink when you make the actual shapes. I don't understand quite what that means. I find doing the actual drawing really tedious. I like when you click the button to make it. Yeah, so you can make it any shape you want, right? It doesn't have to match it. I like that it automatically matches this way. They don't have to use that. In fact, in the original tutorial, we showed that there are many ways to do it. There are options to control the grow and shrink. Um center asteroid apparently it's called a meteor not an asteroid as well yeah i think there were some options there to do that so when it, let's get rid of this shape here potentially should have had him center it let's do it create collision sibling simplification yeah so it grows it i could make this be a shrink here to make it smaller, right? So that would be fine. The famous game should have been called Meteor instead, yeah. So we could do that if we wanted to. Asteroid's been wrong since 1979 and it worked out okay for them. Yeah, I'm not too worried about being, look, look, I'm a computer scientist, not a wordologist. I'm a computerologist. I'm a computerologist, okay? All right. <laughs> Abyssus, Abyss Us. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're having a beautiful Wednesday, my friend. Let's see here. We got this encoding. Still encoding. This one's a big encoding. We'll get it there. It's not rocket science. It's just asteroid science. It's game science. So we have this asteroid in here. Um, asteroid, meteor, whatever. All right. So what's interesting is we can't move into this. Really, we, we kind of want to be able to move into it. So the next thing we're going to do 
And we're going to add a little bit of a script to this to make this have a trajectory. So we're going to have this thing automatically be spinning and updating. So we are going to end up adding a script to it. And the script's going to be rotating the sprite first. We're going to have an asteroid controller added to this guy here. Um, let me get this still processing. Such a big, such a big image. 82%. All right, but we can actually come in here and make it add a script. What if you fire a rocket? Yeah, we're gonna, it'll shrink. The goal is to make, <laughs> then, it, then it's rocket science, exactly. Exactly, so we're gonna add a script in here to it. So we're gonna add a script to our asteroid. Print screen like this. I'm gonna show that we can do this by selecting the asteroid and selecting this button. So it's going to be the old one, two, the old one, two, like that. Go ahead and copy this to our clipboard. Let's put this into our document. Oops, wrong button. Had the old slip there. And then we can actually get our little video in here as well, centering the asteroid. Like so. Okay, now when we move this thing, it's gonna be off of this. Please teach them about file organization from the get-go. So what we're gonna do is when, as soon as we get to, we, we are gonna add in, since we're gonna add in a script here, when we turn this into a scene, we will be doing that. So I have actually found, Tani, it's kind of, what? how do we do a good file structure? I haven't quite found the best way to do it. I actually don't know if there's a perfect way to do it. I think each project depends, but we're getting to this point here where we have like quite a few things. There's a lot of different file management schemas. Yeah, yeah, so that's where it's hard. Everything goes in reds. Macatap, you know how to do it. You know how it is. Macatap, welcome to the stream. Right now we're not quite there, but that's sort of, I like to teach things. This is one of my, my complaints about so many tutorials is they just show you the correct way to do things. I like to show why we do those things. So when we get to a point where it starts becoming painful, then it says, okay, why do we do it that way? Why is this helping me? Why am I doing it from the beginning? I don't know. It, you know, if I just said, okay, well, instead of making this asteroid here like this, if we made it as a scene first, they don't understand necessarily why we're doing that. Yeah, exactly, Wolfric. I like doing that with my students. So I show them the painful way first and then show them, okay, when you start seeing this pattern of pain reappearing, that is a sign to do this. It's like, oh, wait, we fixed this. I I've done this before and it ended up being painful later. And I often force myself to do things kind of a painful way. I've had people say, oh, you should totally do it this way. It's like, well, let me, let me understand why first. Let me get to, if I don't necessarily understand it up front, let me get to the painful point and then go ahead and do it. Oh, that T is good. That Earl Gray. One file management track could be to the file assets by game entity or by asset. These are, but yeah, I tend, you know, I actually think I like doing it by object type so those things become a single asset it's a single four that you can do uh, i'm a big fan of by type so zach you're not a uh, when you say type do you mean by oh no i wouldn't want to do like a sprites folder i would do by type i mean asteroid is a type everything that's related to asteroid is going to be in a folder together everything that is my player is going to be in a folder together so that way i can actually pull them out separately exactly when i say type I don't like assets and scripts, exactly. So I've kind of stopped doing that. I've seen so many videos, I've seen so many projects, I've seen so many tutorials that do that, and then it ends up being a mess. Entities, not sure if there's a convention for that, and uh, I just use that in my project. I like that, yeah. I like the word entity there, especially if we're doing like entity component system type things. All right, let's go ahead and add in a script here. So did I add in this picture to add in the script? Hang on. Um, I did. Okay, so we're going to click script. We're going to add in the script in this one. And we're going to rename it asteroid here. Lowercase. See, it's interesting. It's because I had a capital A here. 
I'm gonna add this in like this. I'm gonna show them to do the default. I'm gonna show them, I'm just gonna highlight this saying to rename this to lowercase asteroid. And then we're gonna click create. Like so. And the interesting thing here is when we click play, we're gonna have gravity and then the asteroid moves with us. So we're gonna do a little video here. I'm gonna get my video set up to record this. Um, oh, let me fix that. Let me fix that. Thank you for thank you for pointing that out. Uh, I don't like that. Yeah, the, the cursor in there always drives me crazy. Let's go ahead and um, clear. Let's delete this. Let's go ahead and add in the script. Asteroid. And I want to move it over to the right like that. There we go. Thank you so much for Shin. Thank you very much for that. Sometimes I get ahead of myself. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I want it to be good enough. I want it to be a high quality document. All right. But it's at the end. It's not in the middle of the word. So the problem with the previous picture is that the cursor is in the middle of the word. So it looks almost like a character. It's hard to tell where's the dot. Is there a space in there? Yeah, so in this one, it's not that it's the cursor there. It's where it happens to be inside. So now it's very clear that that is over at the end there. Or I think it's more clear. There's no, no ambiguous letters. Is that a comma? You know, that type of thing. Go ahead and close these. Uh, create. Now I want to show that if we run this, that we end up with this weird behavior. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and do restart F7. So it moves with us when we move left and right. So there's two bugs here. Bug is a strong word, but uh, let's go ahead and move this up so that we start right on it loaded. So we'll delete these frames here. We'll go ahead and save this as um, a gravity asteroid. And we already talked about gravity on the previous one. So in this part, this is going to be a challenge. The student says, okay, can you modify the code such that, this is interesting, I'm not sure we can quite do it, such that it doesn't fall with gravity. That's the first challenge. Make it so it doesn't fall with gravity. Then the next one is going to be, can you make it so that it doesn't move with the arrow keys? I'm not sure we can easily do that because there's going to be Oh, oh, I think we can. It's going to basically delete everything except move and slide from the template. Okay. I'm going to mess up. I'm remarkable in a terrible spot. I keep setting my teacup on top of it. I don't like that. All right. Got that moved here. So we're going to go ahead and say run, run it. And we're going to end up with this. We don't want that. This is bad. Challenge. Can you update the code so the asteroid doesn't fall? We're going to get to that, Zaft. We're going to get to that. We haven't added that in yet, but I'm going to add that in. That's going to be something that we're going to add in. Yeah, so we're going to, again, it's one of those things that when the problem arises, then we're going to explain why we need to do it. Or maybe not. Maybe we can actually just say, oh, by the way, we need to go ahead and do this thing. So we're in top down mode. Um, yeah, so might, might make sense to go ahead and add that in there. Anyway, like I said, I often like to say, okay, well, why are we doing this? It's because of these things. That one's actually kind of self-explanatory. We may not need to do that. Challenge, can you update the code so the asteroid doesn't fall? Okay. So that's that one. And then can you do it so it doesn't do that? Yeah. 
That's those are the two things we're gonna do. So that it doesn't fall and it doesn't move with the player input. Right, so that's sort of the challenge. Can you delete those lines of code? The answer is probably. All right, so now our asteroid is just there. The next thing we want gonna want to do is make so we're, so we're trapped on it there. I actually don't want the player to stick to it. We want the player to be able to move through it. We're not gonna get there yet. We're gonna make it rotate first. What's interesting is it's actually not gonna collide with the player. It's gonna be an area 2D that triggers, and we're gonna add a signal says when we trigger into it, we'll destroy the player. That's what we're gonna do. And so then we're gonna have to turn layers on and off on it. This is why I was debating whether or not to actually make this a character body 2D, but I like the idea of having the practice here. Uh, the good old sticky moving slides. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got the old, good old sticky moving slide. We're gonna make it so that these don't collide with anything essentially. And instead they're gonna have some, um, they're gonna have area 2Ds that trigger when we enter and they'll destroy the player. Uh, Sonko, welcome to the stream. I hope you're having a beautiful day. And if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, feel free to correct me. So what we want to do is have the player uh, sorry, the the student modify the code here to update the rotation of our objects. So rotation um, equals, can we do just plus equals? I'm curious if we can do it. It's going to be times our delta times speed. And we're going to find, this is probably going to be way too fast. And this is going to be in rotation degrees it's gonna be way too fast i'm pretty sure although this might be 300 degrees per second maybe it won't be too fast technically it should be pronounced sean co thank you but i don't really care i think we crossed paths online before oh awesome yeah you may have been to my channel previously so welcome i'm hosting on godot engine official today uh, working on creating a project, a classroom project uh, for Godot, for a class I'll be teaching. So this said we get the rotation in there. Okay. And so I'm going to just give the students this code. Classic Lake. Classic Lake. Welcome in. Hope you're having a beautiful day. So we're going to have them add this code here. Copy to clipboard. I'm actually going to take a bigger, oops, almost knocked my microphone over there. Sorry if that was a loud noise. I don't know if that came through as a noise or not. But we're going to actually have them add in this code here. And I'm going to make sure, say, hey, make sure you're in the asteroids GD file. And you're going to update this code here to modify the rotation. And then we'll talk about what Delta is doing here. What is your journey with Godot? Um, I've been using Godot for not very long. My journey with game dev, I've been doing game dev for about 19 months, almost two years. And I've been a software engineer for over 20 years and I've been teaching computer science and programming for over 10 years now. Um, I've been working in a school as my full-time job for the last five years. So I've been having a lot of fun here. I'm actually teaching a class in the fall. This will be my first class teaching Godot. I think it's super fun. I think it's super lightweight. I think Godot is awesome. And I think it's a great opportunity for students to learn critical thinking, problem solving skills, and dabble a little bit in programming. So I think it's a great way to start a game dev journey. And more importantly, get young people excited about technology. Get people, young people excited about programming get young people excited about what they can do not in the future right so what they can do that they can do these things that can do awesome stuff so my godot journey is i've been using godot um on and off actually for the last two years and just more recently started using it more seriously because i want my students to use it so i've only been using learning godot for about uh i'd say two months if i'm taking seriously i've only been using gd script for about a little bit less than two months, actually. Now that you're in the official Godot channel, is there something you'd like to see improve Godot, like web experts for C Sharp? Yeah, so I really am looking forward to C Sharp, Godot's C Sharp bindings to be more mature. Um, 
The fast could don't have to be featured on the official channel. Well, you know, they, there's a lot of people that get featured on this channel. A lot of awesome people. I just happened to be in the right place at the right time to uh, be asked to to do this. And I'm super excited to do it because I think Godot is one of the coolest tools coming up here uh, in the future uh, for, for future development. So we're going to have to talk about some little note, notes. Talk about Delta uh, times speed here, because this is the first time we're actually multiplying by Delta. So this is going to be really important. And actually, I think we can actually get rid of move in slide. Let me check here. We're going to maybe I shouldn't get rid of it because we're going to be using it later. Actually, we will actually be using it later um, for moving this thing a little bit. We're, yeah, we're making a shmup. That's exactly right. So I'm going to leave it in, actually. We have that speed there. And the next thing I want to do is actually show that we can make this a variable here. We're going to get rid of jump velocity. I'm going to say delete this line. And we're going to change this to export their lowercase speed. So I'm going to take some screenshots here and show that we're going to modify these. We're going to get rid of these lines like this. Okay, I should actually do a few things here. I'm going to first show that we want to delete these lines. These are unused. Okay. I'm going to delete these. Okay. I'm going to put a red box. Unused. We're going to make this a red box. So there's a couple steps here. I don't want to show too many at the same time. We're going to remove those lines. And then we're going to, so we're refactoring. This is the thing. We're going to talk about refactor again in our code. Refactor is the process of removing or, or, or modifying your code without changing the behavior. This code is uh, what I'd be called vestigial code. It does nothing. I wonder if there's a meaningful performance between GDScript and C Sharp. Um, there is. There's, there's, in different aspects, there are different uh, different parts that there are meaningful. C Sharp has to bind into so GDScript. Couple things. GDScript is a uh, first class citizen of Godot. So in many cases, it's actually going to be faster than C Sharp because with C Sharp, it is actually binding into Godot, and there's like a translation that happens. I believe. I read in an article, this is me reading an article and, and recalling, I believe C Sharp is typically about four to, coupled, yeah. Um, it's about four times slower. C Sharp is about four times slower, but in most cases, that's not a big enough difference. It's a constant difference. That said, there are aspects of things that you can do in C Sharp algorithmically that I think when it's compiled, I think, this is my personal opinion, you could get faster with C Sharp than GDScript because GDScript is, is going to be, it probably doesn't matter if you're not making a 3D game with high, exactly. I don't think it matters in most cases. Um, GDScript is a lot more capable than a lot of the former Unity that's coming to Godot, give it credit for it. I love all of the editor features that come with GDScript. For what it's worth, I tried using C Sharp in Godot and it drove me up the wall a little bit because this is where I was saying like the maturity of it's not great. C Sharp, all of the benefits you get from using C Sharp don't really exist in Godot. So static typing is a thing that you get when you use C Sharp. So you know what types you are. You know the compiler is going to tell you a bunch of information. When you're doing stuff in Godot, you ended up using all of these Godot bindings that you lose the type anyway, and you have to do extra work to cast it to the correct type to make the compiler happy. Um, personal opinion, Dr. Best, is the mix of using custom fork C++ and GScript. I've heard really good things about that. Um, oh, I, I typically do in my own personal projects, I do. I just didn't want to overcomplicate things for my students. The next thing I want to do is show them refactoring this here into uh, Export var lowercase speed like this. So we're going to take a screenshot here and we're going to talk about renaming 
these things to be lowercase rather than uppercase and what these mean here as well. So we're gonna rename this line here. We're gonna make this green. So the modification that we made. And then we need to update this as well. All right. Did my game jam gaming get done on GD script and it web build fine, but I guess people have trouble, especially with C sharp. You can't do, unless you're doing something really fancy, you actually cannot do web builds with C sharp in Godot 4 currently. There are some interesting restrictions there. I like to use the type info officer here. Yeah, so makeshift out in my own personal projects, I actually turn the setting on where I have to do the type annotations. I'm a big fan of static typing because this is designed for someone with no programming background, doesn't even know what the word type means really. We are, we are av not necessarily avoiding it, but not adding it in yet. I likely will add it in in future projects here. I like to know what the types are in my mind. I like the static type makes it more approachable, but also gives the ability to turn down. The other thing of this is you actually get performance gains when you use the type, when you do you when you add types in there. I believe someone correct me if I'm wrong, you can get performance gains by doing that. Um Nerd Waffle, I agree. As a person who loves C sharp. I think using C sharp with Godot is very painful. I do not like it. I do not like it. Uh, or me personally, I love C sharp. I'm a big fan of C sharp. I find using C sharp in Godot to be relatively painful compared to using GD script. GD script, it's all built into the editor. Um, but I want to let kids learn Godot. It's pro exactly G exactly. That's exactly my point. All right, so what I want to show them is now that the speed here shows up in our inspector. Uh, let's add a little thing here. Like this. I'm going to say in our inspector, if we select our asteroid, we can actually modify the speed here. This becomes a value that you can change. So we can have multiple different speeds. Go here. I'm going to add this in like that. Exactly, G. So my the whole thing is let's learn the Godot editor. Let's use as little scripting as possible. Okay. So what we're going to do next is we have this here. We have this spinning. Let me go ahead and get a screenshot of this. I don't know how well this is going to come across. I'm going to change this to 100. Like that, and then we're gonna record this here. And so we should have this rotating. All went well. Save as, asteroid rotates. And the next thing we're gonna do is gonna show that, okay, can't we want to be able to make several asteroids. I just see a lot of C sharp love emotional baggage from Unity users. GD script is great. Um, I understand the appeal of C sharp for what it's worth. I, I I'm a huge fan of C sharp. I think Godot's good. You know, it, comparing Godot C sharp and Unity C sharp and like traditional software engineering C sharp, they're all very different. They're all very different. I wouldn't call it emotional baggage. I would say that people like to have a compiler. That's my part. The meaningful white space um, is a deal big for a lot of people. The I am not a fan of uh, dynamic type languages for what it's worth. I'm not a fan of it. But I do, I have found GDScript to be very usable. A lot faster and better with GDScript than C Sharp. Haven't tried Python. But maybe I'm a Python guy too. I was reading about C Sharp, however, to each their own. I think, yeah, I think the thing about GD Script is you're not doing a ton of, ton of traditional programming. 
Good dough, that's right. My, welcome in. <laughs> Jits Po, I'm glad I wasn't either. Great to see you, my friend. How was your stream? Folks, be sure to go check out Jits Po. Jits Po was streaming here the other day. How has your project come along? What have you been working on? Tell us all about it. Tell us all about it. Great to see you, my friend. All right, we are here. Um, yeah, we're showing this. All right, so the next thing we want to do, adding an asteroid, we want to now take this asteroid and duplicate it multiple times and still be able to modify and separate them out. So we're going to actually add in the next part here is creating a an asteroid scene. So we're going to make it so we can create an asteroid scene so we can reuse this thing. Working on rewriting the steampunk motorcycle physics didn't get particularly far. That's okay. It happens, right? Streaming is a little bit distracting, and sometimes we're not entirely sure what we're going to do. Who <laughs> let this kook in here? That's right. I used Python at some point after using GDescript. I'm surprised how Python is bad at static typing. Like you can declare the function of Python and return the value of some type, but there's no mechanic in Python to actually check it. For what it's worth, Dr. Revert, I don't think there's any mechanic in Godot that does it either, or in GDScript. It's that you can enable it in Godot. The engine will do it for you. Someone correct me again if I'm wrong. In Python, there are external tools you can use that will validate your static typing for you. Um, Alexandra Blander, welcome to the stream. Alexandra, welcome in. And, and I could be completely wrong. There is Godot will show the error one. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. That's the editor. It's not GD scripts though. It's the editor that'll do it for you. And you can actually, in a lot of tools, you can enable static typing in Python to enforce it. The biggest thing is no one does it. In Python, typing is more like linting. I think technically that's what's happening in GDScript, although there are, when you go and you actually do your build, there are performance gains from what I understand. You know, the thing that GDScript was made to be viable outside of Godot? It, yeah, it's not. I'm pretty sure Godot will throw an error at runtime. Python will throw an error at runtime. If your types don't match, Python absolutely will. Um, at runtime, it'll it'll crash if it determines it can't use the thing. Uh, if you return assign the wrong type, it's not just linting. But Python will crash if you put the wrong type somewhere too. But it's not when you pass it into a function. So that could be the difference. There's a ton of Godot tutorials, uh, either in GDScript and C Sharp. But which one is better to learn first? G I would recommend doing GDScript first. If you're not already a solid C-sharp programmer, you're gonna struggle. You're gonna find it very difficult to learn GDScript, uh, learn the C-sharp one first because C-sharp is so new in Godot. Thank you for the hat, Surly Dev over on my stream. Thank you for the hat. Let's get a hat added to the head here. Um, I hope that makes sense. But yeah, I would start with GDScript with Godot. Yeah. For as I can tell, GDScript's goal is to provide the usability and ease of learning as Python, but in the game engine environment. I think it's just there to be as simple as possible. Um, <laughs> Jitspo, you get a lurk before you break something? Fair enough. Fair enough. Thank you so much for coming in and hanging out with us. I, we all appreciate it, of course. Okay. What were we doing? We want to make this asteroid a new scene. I want to go ahead and save it as a scene here. So we're going to show this in here. Save branch as scene. I believe this is what we want. So we're going to right click on that. Save branch as scene. Okay. So we're going to right click. I'm going to save the branch as a scene. So it's going to be the one, the old one, two. Copy to clipboard like this, All right. uh, say branch as seen, and we're gonna call it asteroid here. This is sort of what Unity would call prefab. Um, it's super interesting. I really like the way this is done. So we're gonna save this as, oh, not save as, we're gonna copy to clipboard. You'll notice it's a T scene, and then we're gonna save. So really the only thing we gotta do is click the save by default. Oop, save. It's really all we got to do. We'll make sure we see that it's named that. Then we're going to save it here. Copy this to our clipboard. Go ahead and add this to our document, like so. And then click Save. And one thing to note here is we no longer have the tree. 
That's the biggest thing to notice here is we no longer have the tree. Okay, open our image editor here. The biggest thing to note is there's no tree. And that, let me go ahead and highlight this a little wider. There's no tree, we can't open that up. And in fact, we now have the asteroid scene down here. Copy to clipboard. These are the things to notice. Zoomer Boomer, I do think the GDScript partner has some room for improvement regarding typing. For example, when I've run into issues with, with it not quite knowing exactly what it needs to do in 4.2 that have been resolved in 4.3. When you fully constrain a function, it has no measurable performance difference, at least in debug. In build, it does. It, it drops the assert information. In GDScript, sometimes manual linting saves more than 20 calls through API. Say 10 heavy operations like distance. Exactly, exactly. Uh, if like no one talk exactly yes it's very important are cheaper than a single gd script method call hang on say 10 heavy hours like distance two are cheap yes exactly is there one day a chance that godot provide visual scripting i believe someone correct me if i'm wrong i believe there is a visual scripting package you can do i have never used it but there is a visual scripting plugin yeah orchestrate uh infinitoni can you give me a link to that Okay, these are the things that we have now in our scene. If you've got a link, please drop it for us. Um, but yeah, I, I've, I've heard people talk about them um, here. And so now what I want to do is we're actually going to take these things. And we're going to move to... Is this right? Asteroid. Asteroid. Not create folder. Something terrible is that cancel. Redo. Okay. We're going to create a folder. Right click, create folder. Open our new editor here. Just gonna right click, create folder, copy this to our clipboard. We're gonna start organizing this a little bit better. Right click, create folder, call it asteroid. Already exists. What is it talking about? Okay. Well, I managed to to make it here. Let's try one more time. Create folder. Asteroid, go ahead and print this screen as well and mark it. Tani, uh, Jordy, welcome in. Tani, thank you so much for the link. There's a reason visual scripting was dropped in four. Go ready, go read the blog post if you want to know uh, reasons. Um, thank you so much for the link. Um, I think there was discussion, and I haven't, I've never used it. I think there was discussion from what I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's discussion on it being kind of confusing. It wasn't actually, it was just, anyway, anyway, I don't know. I'm not going to speak on something I'm not familiar with, actually. Jordy, thank you so much for that uh, link. I think visual scripting can be a good way to get started, but it's important. I think it's a good tool for people who are scared or intimidated by programming. I think it's a good tool to get people over that hump and then show them, hey, you can do this thing with drag and drop, blah, blah, blah. But really, um, yeah, exactly, Zaft, add on land. Shouldn't be part of the core. Shouldn't be part of the core, exactly. Jordy, welcome to the stream. Great to have you here. Hope you're having a beautiful Wednesday. I'm having a blast here. We're having so much fun making this project. All right, then we're going to take these files. We're going to drag them in. I'm going to show that you can actually control click to select them. Or on Mac, it'll be command click. Sorcery story, it is me, the Captain Coder. I hope you're having a beautiful day. How's your project coming along, Sorcery Story? Just so going to right click. One, two, three. 
and then drag them in to this folder here. So we'll mark this as a four. So one, two, three, control click to select them, drag them in, copy to clipboard. I'm gonna record a little video of me doing this so that way it's also obvious. All right, so let's go ahead and do a screen recording showing us doing this organization as well. Coming along, doing more UI as usual. How are things over here? I'm doing absolutely wonderful. I'm actually teaching a class on Godot this year at my school. So I'm in the process of creating this project. That sounds like those people would benefit more from doing some scratch instead of going into Godot right away. Makeshift L, I'm not completely convinced that's true. That said, it's node-based program where you, it's showing the flow control. <clears throat> There's actually some studies that show that Scratch makes it actually a little bit harder for people to go from Scratch to programming, text-based programming, than from people who have no previous experience. That said, I, there's not, I haven't seen one specifically with going from Scratch to Godot, but going from Scratch to Python or Scratch to Java, those are the two languages that they did a study on. It showed that students who had prior experience with Scratch actually did worse in an introductory programming course than students who had no experience prior. And it's, be, it's related to block-based programming. There's nothing wrong with block-based programming. Um, <laughs> Zap, that's, that's the standard for intro to programming in a lot of universities. Oh, I hit the wrong button here. Um, and in fact, the AP is, is all of that. Uh, here, let's try one more time. I lost it. There we go. Hit recording. What is going on? Hang on. Record. Apparently I'm going to have to close this all the way. Okay, let's try again. I lost the like little window there. Um, it's one of the reasons I start, oh, what is going on? Where is this? Ah, there it is, there it is. It ended up on a different screen. Okay. So I'm gonna just demo here. We click one, two, three, and we're gonna drag it in like that. And now we have them all in there. All right, let's go ahead and save this in uh, Asteroid Organize. And we're going to go ahead and copy that in there. I'll be curious to how your students take to Godot. Michael, I think they're going to love it. I think they're going to love it. I am slightly concerned. So here's my concern. I suspect I st I'm going to teach a class where we do Godot stuff. Students won't be required to take an introductory pro everything i've taught so far as far as game dev stuff students are required to take an introductory to programming course first it's like a c-sharp class this is going to be the first time i'm doing a class where we have programming where they don't have to do an introductory programming course first that said i'm not this is not a programming course so i think the downside is students wanting to go into my next classes Hopefully it'll get them excited to come to C-Sharp. My fear is that they're gonna go from Godot and GDScript into my introductory to programming in C-Sharp course and be turned off by C-Sharp's type system. This is what I, I've had problems with this going from Python to C-Sharp, but it's not from going from C-Sharp to Python. Students actually end up missing the type system, whereas they end up hating the type system when they go the other direction. So I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about that. So we'll see how, I'm curious to see how it turns out. I'm curious to see how it turns out. Um, so that's one more thing overhead that I'd have to teach them in the course. So the, the, the answer to that question is try not to overload students with information. So we are gonna do very little scripting in this course. Very little scripting. If we start doing more major scripting, we will. But yeah, my language was Java for Minecraft, then C Sharp for Unity. Gotcha. Did they go from GDScript untyped to more complex GDScript? Yeah, Abyss, exactly. So there's a bridge somewhere 
that I'll have to cross to figure out how to do this. This is my first time doing it. So it's going to be an iterative process, right? This will be my first time teaching it, and then I'll iterate it on it the next year. To be more, maybe help of students are briefed ahead of time. That way it's not a big surprise. Exactly. That's exactly right. At the beginning of the class, I'll have to tell students, hey, by the way, this is a different programming language. This class is more terminal. It, in fact, my C-sharp class is all terminal projects. There's no uh, fancy UI stuff. Um, using type to solve a problem would be important to build value, in my opinion. Abyss, yeah. I think that is a good a good way to go. Types do solve problems. They they more than anything, it's thinking about the shape of a function, it's thinking about the shape of data. So that's really the challenge. It's having students visualize what the data looks like and understanding that. All right, so now we have these in here. And then the next thing we can do is we can show that now we can add multiple asteroids in by dragging them in. Haram, welcome to the stream. I think it really depends what people want to do. If they want to program, if they just want to make exactly. So that's why I'm, I'm having this class. All my classes essentially require you to do programming first before you can do the game. Aside from my game maker class, my game, the class, the class I do where there's game maker, you don't have to do any program. It's all visual, visual scripting in that class if you want. But a lot of the students who tend to doing the it's I actually did a class called how to plan for a game jam. And I do a bunch of game maker stuff, but students can use anything they want. And students who haven't done programming before end up using game maker because it's so simple to get stuff up and running in game maker. The templates in it are awesome. The video tutorials are awesome. I love game maker for that regard. Um, I haven't used game maker scripting language, just their visual scripting. And it's really cool. It's really powerful. It's really empowering to students. And I found students going from that class. Don't mind all. Um, yeah, they are absolutely abyss. Absolutely. I teach a class in the spring that's eight weeks long called how to plan for a game jam. And we end up doing two four week long game jams in that class. So the students have the class six hours a week. And so they end up doing about 12 hours to make small games. So it's eight, uh, it is eight weeks long and they end up doing a game design document followed by implementing the game, game design document, implementing the game. And they work in teams of uh, two to four. Yeah, that gamer, thank you so much for hanging out. Remember to keep coding, keep growing, keep being the best you can be, and you are welcome back anytime. How reasonable is using Godot for augmented reality? That's a great question, uh, Gus. I wish I had a solid answer for you. I imagine the answer is that probably can do it. There are some challenges right now. I'm assuming you want to do it with a tablet or mobile device, right? So there are some issues surrounding doing mobile devices right now. There's tooling totally good for that, but haven't used test them. I'm my guess is that you could do it, but there's not going to be a bunch of tutorials and things out there to get doing. Have to be something that you'd be self-motivated. I, I, I wouldn't recommend it as a first project. And then using mobile stuff is a little bit finicky from what I understand right now with Godot 4, but progress is being made rapidly. Um, learning work best. Sono, son, uh, Sonco, yes, absolutely. I think allowing students to screw around and making stuff somehow is way better than exactly, exactly. And so this is, you know, this is why I'm showing like, we're going to do as little coding as possible. Lean into using the engine. Yeah. Uh, the XR group is super active. Ooh, that's awesome. Murder Veggie. That's awesome. Do you got a link for us uh, to, so where we can find that community? Yeah, Zoomer Boomer, I I do like using that in my own personal projects. This is again for students who have never done any, potentially have never done any programming before. So my goal is to not overload them with a bunch of information up front, get them making something, and then slowly introduce the problems that we solve by using typing. Uh, heretical in this chat, but I think Unity has pretty solid AR support. I've never used it. I've never used it. So I couldn't, uh, I couldn't make a solid, um, I couldn't give an opinion on it because I haven't used it. Okay. Thank you so much for the link, Murder Veggie. 
awesome. Yeah, if you want to check it out, apparently there's a bunch of stuff going on with the AR support there. If you want to check out what that group is doing, be sure to click on that link. Go check it out. Murder Veggie, thank you so much for sharing that with us. The next thing I want to show in our video, or not in our video, in our project guide, is that now we can add in lots of asteroids here very easily by dragging this into the scene. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and add this to our document here, like this. And then we're gonna do a little recording showing that we can add lots of asteroids in easily. Um, let's, yeah, get my scene recorder showing up over here for some reason. I don't know why it's off the screen. It must be slightly off the screen. Okay. And then we're going to start the recording. We add these in like that. What well, looks like they might be slightly offset. Oh, no, they're not. In the sub scene, they are, though. The sub scene has them off a little bit. So we're going to have to go into the sub scene to fix it. So I actually don't want uh, to do this just yet. We can keep that screenshot that we had before. Um, but we actually need to open up the sub scene. So I'm gonna show double click to open. So a little double click to open. Double click this to open it. And we'll add a little note to our scene here. So we got to go up before we actually drag these in here, move them in. We're going to say double click, add a little note to myself. Come on, double click to open. Yeah, I'm a big fan of screen to gif. It's a pretty solid project. Yeah, for sure. Gee, thank you so much for hanging out. We'll see you again soon, my friend. Hope you have a beautiful day. Stay cool. Stay cool. Don't. I hope it isn't too hot there. Open this up, and we're going to show that our new scene here that we created has that hierarchy from before. So we're going to show, hey, here, by the way, this hierarchy is here. It's isolated by itself. So they're connected. I'll put a little note here so we can reference it. So it's this file here. It is actually showing the hierarchy here. Copy this to our clipboard. Going through some Blender tutorials, nice, nice. Um, once I finish the course, we'll make a few simple 3D spaceships, very cool. Looking forward to seeing that. I had such a great time learning Blender, or learning a little bit about Blender for Learn You a Game Gym. I had such a great time doing that. Um, and I, I need to keep practicing those skills so I don't lose them. I need to find a project where I can practice those. So. I really need to make sure I keep doing that. So one thing we're going to do over here, is we're actually going to reset the transform. Um, all this stuff here. So over here, we're going to scroll down here. And we're going to show in the editor that we want to reset this transform specifically down here. So we're going to say that we need to scroll down. So we're going to make sure that we're on the asteroid. The root object here. We're going to scroll down. We're going to find our transform and then we're going to click reset. This, these are the things that we have to explain in the writing. For first good project, I'm basically finished with the tutorial recommended on Godot's official site. I'm not familiar with their official suggestion. What did you make for that? I don't necessarily think there's a best first project. This space shooter that I do here is often a first project that I do with my students in game dev classes. Some of the game, several of the game dev classes I've taught in the past, I will start with this. BK, let's go. Welcome into the stream. Great to have you here. The survivor style game it comes down to like, what do you want to learn next? I think there's a lot of benefit of building systems. So building in different UIs, building in some interesting things to go along with things. Um, give me just a second. Uh, I, I got to check out something real quick. Ch -ch 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 -ch. 
bear with me folks don't go anywhere and we're back okay sorry about that uh don't do love do code welcome to the stream hope you're having a beautiful day all right so we're gonna reset this here and then i'm gonna show i'm gonna go ahead and show this whole process in another little uh video so you might be asking why are you taking screenshots and then showing the video my students actually i found i used to only do the videos or just the screenshots and some students learn better with the videos and sometimes you have this video and they're not quite sure what's going on so having both here so you have references is really useful so we're on the asteroid scene we're going to click over here i didn't actually start the recording so we're going to click on asteroid click on the asteroid here come to our inspector scroll down select this click reset and notice it goes to the middle okay there we go making games never really clicked for me until i put the tutorials down and tried to make stuff for myself hey, absolutely absolutely super important to get away from the tutorials as soon as you can how hard would it be to make an xr mode for the godot editor whoa. i have no idea thank you for the whoa tawny thank you for the whoa reset Re tutorials I don't necessarily think they're a trap. I think tutorials are best for getting started and then you need to get away from them as soon as possible. So getting into what's called tutorial hell is really easy where you end up saying like, well, I keep doing these tutorials and I haven't, I can't do anything on my own. It's because you're just copying what the tutorial does. You have you need to go beyond the tutorial. Take the tutorial, follow it a little bit and then say, okay, can I do that thing again without it? Um, I think they are best for people who already know a lot about a system they are not best for people who know nothing about a system yeah exactly nixa you got to build that muscle memory repeat that process over and over and over until it's ingrained in you and i and you start building what i call programmer intuition or game dev intuition i am still building my game dev intuition uh, i've only been doing game dev for uh, two years a little less than two years like seriously trying to learn game dev Okay. Are great as exploring abstract concept, fundamental principles. Um, rest is learned by doing for me. Yeah, absolutely. So to get unstuck, then stop watching. That works too. Um, this is why I often call these project guides. I show students how to get started and then say, okay, well, now you need to do this next part on your own. I don't show them the entire project. All right, so we're going to do a reset asteroid position here. Go ahead and save this here so that we can pull it into our guide as well. For anyone who's just joining us as well, we are putting together this product. If you want to go see what we've done so far, I'm going to be fleshing this out. But if you want to bookmark this project, this is the class project we're creating for doing a top-down space shooter in Godot. It's going to be the first project in my class for students ages 10 to 14. For anyone who doesn't know me, I'm Captain Coder. Captain Coder is me. And me, it's a computer science educator. I teach computer science and programming at a school for ages 10 to 14. It's my full-time job. I absolutely love it. I'm so excited that I got invited to come and run a session here on the Godot Engine official channel. If you want to get more involved in the community, you can actually join our Discord. Captain Coders Academy, lots of people there learning about game dev, lots of people learning about programming in general. A lot of people who have a lot of experience who are willing to share and help you answer any questions that might come up. And so I'm always in. Tutorials are not the uh, panacea. For understanding the concept, it helps. Yeah, Alexandra, I agree with it. Um, style, welcome in. Currently, I'm growing interest in Godot, especially the new GD extensions look very interesting. Do you have some hints on how scripting completely through it is filling currently? All scripts in Rust or C Sharp. How is the editor support for working with Rust in order C Sharp? The editor support built into Godot doesn't really support C Sharp well. So I will say it doesn't support C-sharp well. That said, GD script is really, really useful in the in the engine. Oh, sorry, directly in the engine itself. I find it to be very, very nice. Very, very nice to use. Did this actually save? Still encoding. Um, I find it very, very nice to use GD scripts. I have found working with C-sharp to be not the most pleasant experience not the most pleasant experience so we're going to go and pull this in here and we're going to go back to our main scene and we're going to add things into our main scene here 
want to build a 2D top-down game, was thinking of using Ace Sprite for the art and Fami Studio for music. I have an idea for the story, general character design, and level design. Not sure where to start once I have the ideas down on paper. Get get uh, get a character moving around top-down in a scene. That's what we're doing here. We have a top-down game. We've added in our player here, and the player just moves around. Get your player moving top down first. Get them moving around, maybe adding a bounding box. We've added a bounding box here. We have another one we're working on as well. Um, this one here is, is a, a, a game that we're writing as well, where we have enemies, similar top down here, but it's I can't shoot. I don't have my controller plugged in, but we're adding in enemies and stuff. This is another one I'm working on here as well. I'm porting this from um, a Unity game I made into Godot. And that one we're going to attach up to uh, Twitch chat. And so people in chat will actually be able to spawn in characters. Yeah, just get a get a basic thing going here. Add in your character like that. All right, so we're going to come back over here. We're going to move our asteroid. Uh, sorry, go back to our main. Move our asteroid down. Like that. We're going to drag it in. So I'm just going to come in here and record a little video for the document here. Showing us adding those asteroids in so we can take these asteroids uh, i started this too soon let's restart and then we're going to be we need to take another break we've been going for almost uh, another 90 minutes we're going to take another quick break here once we get this added in so we add these asteroids like this and then we can hit play go ahead and stop easily add in several asteroids here and since they're separate they're scenes here i I still need to, I need to redo this. Let's do another recording here. I'm not showing everything I want to show. All right, let's try one more time. All right, so we take our asteroids, we add them in. We can add in multiple asteroids here like this. I just want to make sure that we show them like that and that we can modify each one separately. 300 negative 250 like that so we set different values on each one all right there we go i wanted to show enough to have we have all these we're gonna go ahead and process this save this out as well i have a bunch of uh other videos still up here I'll give it a second here to process for rest of the day, I'm coming from Unity. I saw most Godot coding done in the editor itself, other than that have the editor and then an IDE besides it. I think there's, I haven't done it personally, but I believe there are some good Visual Studio code extensions and probably Visual Studio and Writer extensions as well. Yeah, they support both workflows. One thing I will say is if you're doing GD script, I have found working in the editor really nice and i'll show you why in just a second let me start this export here uh, add asteroids here is one of the reasons i really like the editor say i'm working on this script here that's specifically related to this i can pull i can attach these in i can reference things directly from the inspector drag them right into my code Similar, there's things called signals, and we'll be using these in a little bit. We can actually come in and we can attach these directly to other things. So we can connect stuff like this. So the built-in editor support's really nice. I don't know what this experience is like outside of the editor in something like VS Code. Someone who has experience with that, I'd love to hear what your experience has been. My headphones are telling me my battery's dying on them. Um, uh, control drag and drop from instantly get the variable definition uh, control you do know about control plus drag and drop to instantly get the variable oh yeah so you're saying to do this to get the on ready yeah i'm familiar with that yeah thank you thank you but i was just saying like there's some niceties to this as well there's some great ways to get them in there i love the interactions that the editor has specifically GD script. It sounds like this doesn't necessarily exist with C sharp. I use exclusively of NeoVim. I use Control Shift C to copy the path in lieu of the drag. If I do Control Shift C, let's see Control Shift. Is that I, I don't? Maybe I'm missing something here. Um, to get the 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 full thing there that you're suggesting. 
Yeah, I do really like the integration. This is why I said my experience using C Sharp with Godot has been less than stellar. It's been less than stellar. This is going to take a little bit longer. Doesn't Android have copied the, the relative path? Um, even though it's asteroid here. So you're saying, all right, let's add another child node. Uh, it's just called a node 2D. So I'm going to do control shift C. Okay, cool. Good to know. I didn't know that was an option. That's pretty nice. Um, I'm a big fan of the GD script. Yeah. In Godot. I love GD script as well. I made a simple plugin that registers a new node derived from marker 2D, which is used to configure a spawn point for various things. Interesting. Yeah, I recently have been using marker 2D in my uh, for like a direction of travel, finding things. Marker 2D is a really interesting little node that lets us do some interest, uh, little simple things, calculations based off of it. All right, we do have to take a quick break here. We've been going for 90 minutes since our last break. We're gonna go ahead and stop real quick. I need to get myself some more throat coat. My, my throat's, I'm, I've been sick. I'm still recovering. My throat is surprisingly sore. I'm used to talking for hours and hours and hours, but I've been a little bit sick. So we're gonna get a little bit more throat coat for me. We're gonna get some more water here. We're gonna come back and we're gonna keep moving in on this, see what else we can manage to get done, uh, finish up today. And then hopefully, I'm sure this will be done by the time I get back, this will be done. So don't go anywhere, we'll be right back everybody. All right, folks, we're back. We've been standing. I've been standing on stream for almost five hours. I was standing for about an hour and a half before that. So we're going to switch to the rare captain seated mode here. Give ourselves a little seat. Practical, welcome in. How you doing, friend? Hope you're having a beautiful, beautiful, wonderful, glorious Wednesday. How the heck have you been? How's your project coming along? Tell us all about it. Let's go and we're going to switch to captain seated here. All right, have ourselves, whew, have ourselves a little seat. All right, we're gonna hop back in here, folks. Now that I got a little bit, a fresh top up of nice warm water to help soothe my throat here. And a little bit more water 
here. So folks, remember to keep yourself hydrated, keep yourself going strong. Okay, so we are, I can't believe how long, this one's four minutes long. There's no way that one's four minutes long. Something must've gone wrong with that. Um, reset asteroid positions, add asteroids. Is it really four minutes long? Let's take a look. Something, I must have not stopped the recording. That's why it took so long. I mean, it's too large. Yeah, something went wrong with that. It shouldn't be four minutes long. It's like, should be like 20 seconds long. Something's not right here. Recording. Oh, it, it just keeps adding. I think that's what's happening. It's not resetting. Uh, this is not the right project. Um, let's go to our asteroid project here open up this we're going to restart this program this program is struggling a little bit the four minutes is the encoding time oh it said it took four minutes to encode okay that makes more sense like why is this file let's take a look at what it shows here i want to add the asteroids it should too large we need to make it smaller anyway so let's go and record it a second time here let's go to our main i'm going to delete these Anyway, go to our 2D scene. Let's go ahead and record this. Shrink this down a little bit. Shrink it down a little bit. Ah! There we go. Record. Why? What's going on here? Oh, I had the wrong thing selected. Try one more time. Then I'll show, I'll take a second one and show doing it in the inspector. Something always goes wrong. That's right. That's right. All right, let's go ahead and save this here. Add asteroids. should be much quicker this time. And then what we'll do is we'll show in the inspector here that we can manually set these as well. Video is amazing, such a cool tool. I love it. It's a fantastic tool. Dominic does dev. What a great name. Welcome into the stream. Hope you're having a wonderful, beautiful, glorious Wednesday. We're in the process of making a Godot uh, project for a class I'll be teaching this fall. Um, honestly, I think I have this set to, I, I'm realizing, I think this is set to 30 frames per second. I need to reduce that. Um, I'm having a blast here on the Godot channel. You mentioned it, the two nerdy nerds dev chat yesterday. Yeah, I'm having a blast over here. I'm so appreciative of being able to have the opportunity to hang out on the Godot channel. I'm having a blast here. I hope everyone else is enjoying it as well. And we're having so much fun. I'm having fun. All right. Much, much smaller image here. Let's go ahead and add it in. Um, and so we're going to add this down here. Add asteroids. Uh, did you get the bot working? Kind of. Uh, so I, my bot is not able to chat on this channel for Our some dopamine. complex reasons. Oh, I got that fixed. But we can't. Oh. If you do it on my channel, you can. It should work over here too well. So a lot of the commands do work. Uh, questions in queue here just fine like this. So we're having a lot of fun with that. I did get it to work so it can hear commands, but it cannot respond to them in chat directly. Thank you doi, for the doi. Doi. All right, so we have that here. Thank you for the hat. Let's get another hat added to the stack. Lance, thank you for the bonus hat. You guys are wild. You guys are fun. Thank you there, let's get another hat on this head. Perfect, perfect, okay. Next thing I want to show is that we can modify these values independently of each other. And so we're going to record another one here and show the inspector over on the right side. We'll go and shrink this down. But we can show that we can record these values and click asteroid inspector negative 50. 
Asteroid Inspector 150, Asteroid Inspector 50, like this. So we can set them to all different values. Okay, so we want to show that they work independently of each other. You love the hats? Let's get you another one there. Let's get another one there for you, Maker. How do you feel now? Three hats. We're three hats deep, folks. Adjust rotations like that. We'll go ahead and get this into our project as well. And if anyone wants to follow along here, I'm going to be going through and updating this with more text. I'm going to turn this into a project there. You want a hat too? Let's get you a hat, Dominic. Let's get you a hat. Thank you for, thank you for that. Love that. It's even more now. There we go. There we go. How do you guys feel? We need a bonus hat. Dragon Spirit wants another one. Let's get another one. We got even more hats. Keep those hats coming. One hat, two hat, red hat. Uh, blue hat. I don't have any red hats. Not enough hats. Full box. Happy Wednesday, my friend. Hope you're having a beautiful day. Hope things are going wonderful for you. We're encoding this here. Just a few more moments. 53% almost there. Joker head. Sometimes you just wear a lot of hats. It's true. Sometimes you gotta. Sometimes it's what, it's what the body craves. It's what the body craves, folks. All right. We made it through my whole playlist. We made it through my whole playlist. We're back at the first song here. I usually don't stream this long. Usually my streams are about three hours long, but we're going long today because we're having fun over here on the Godot channel. Okay, there we go. Let's go ahead and open this up. We're going to add this in. This is updating our rotations. So we're going to update the rotations like this, asteroid rotates. Like, oh, nope, that's not it. Uh, adjust rotations. And then the last one here is gonna be actually showing them running at different speeds in the game. We'll see them running different speeds like that. So we can actually do a one more screen capture. And here is where I, I realize it's running at 30 frames per second. We, if we go down to 15, these are gonna be much smaller, much faster to render. I wish I had realized that four hours ago, but that's okay. Can't always get them. Can't always figure it out there. So we're going to record that. We have the different velocities here between them. So there we go. Save that. Can set them live and learn and then get loves, right? Uh, show rotations. You bought the plushie. Let's go. I, I, I need to get one. I need to get one. We're gonna have to get a plushie so that I can put it on the shelf behind me. Maybe it, get some Velcro to attach it to my shoulder, be like a little bird there. <laughs> they're super cute. Yeah, they're super duper cute. I love them. <laughs> we need a plushie redeem Zaft. All right, let's go ahead and add that in there. This one is show rotation. Then I'm gonna go and delete all these other ones as well. Uh, would you consider yourself a hothead or is there a hat threshold requirement for meshing? We have 18 hats in the room. We have 18 hats in the room. I used to have 26, but it was too much for, it was too much for my, my neck. It was too much for my neck. <laughs> but yeah, we got, we got a couple more hats. We can add some more. We get, we get another one right there. Maybe we got two more hats. <laughs> really cool is on this channel today dragon spirit one of my favorite teachers always positive and of course the hats Yeah, we have a lot of fun with the hats so it demonstrates we use a lot of hats so we add these in here so the next thing we're going to want to do is add in a velocity so we're going to add in a trajectory for these we're going to add in here um asteroid velocity and then we're going to want the asteroids to be able to move out of our bounds if you can reach the top you ain't wearing enough hats can we get, all right, let's try here. We got, we got another hat. You guys want to see all the hats, apparently. Hang on, let me make my room a little bit bigger. Got to make my room bigger. There we go. There we go. There we go. How, how about that? How about that? I'm, uh, oh, I'm barely tall enough. Barely tall enough. There we go. <laughs> you guys are, you guys crack me up. You ordered your plushy lens. Let's go. Yeah, some people say this hat's a little corny, but I like it. I like it. 
So we want to add a velocity to our asteroid. Okay. So what we have right now in our asteroid is we have this speed. I want to export a ver that is a vector to um, move uh, speed velocity here. Okay. And we have to specify that it's a vector two, so it'll show up in the inspector nicely. We could also do equals new, uh, equals just vector two, zero, zero, like this. If we do that, do I have to put a new there? Uh, put colon equal, hang on. Member velocity redefined original in the Nate. Oh, oh, I can't call it velocity. I can't call it velocity is what it is. Uh, so I can do direction though, or, or what was I calling it? I said trajectory, trajectory like this. We'll make it a vector two like that. So we're gonna add this to our code and then show it. Um, velocity is, well, velocity is built into character body 2D. So it didn't like us doing it. Having a speed and a velocity properties is very confusing. It should be called rotation velocity, right? So speed, trajectory, it might be confusing if you know what those mean. Anyway, we're gonna call it speed and trajectory and really this should be called rotation speed. Call it rotation speed here. Um, rotation speed. One downside to doing this, I believe that's gonna mess up all of these and it's gonna reset them. Ooh, we could have it, we could refactor this and force them to practice re, re, resetting them. Oh, I like that. I like that. Export ver, and we're gonna call this trajectory. Vector two, zero, zero, like that. This is what I'm gonna do for now. I'm gonna take a screenshot of this. We're gonna show that we're in the asteroid file. We're gonna open this up in our image editor. I'm gonna highlight the line that we added. I'm also going to highlight that we're in the asteroid GD script here. Pagorly, how we doing, friend? Hope you're having a beautiful day. I'm having a lot of fun. Add in this trajectory like that. Okay. And then if we come over into our inspector now, I'm going to show that in the inspector, we will see our trajectories like so. Okay, open our image editor. Make sure that we're on an asteroid and then we'll see that the trajectory has an X and a Y value. We're building a course on doing a top-down shmup space shooter. It's one of my favorite starter projects. Um, so it's not quite asteroids. Our ship's not gonna rotate. Our ship stays facing forward. It's more like Galaga. Uh, more like a Galaga game. Melifis, welcome into the stream. Hope you're having a great day. Happy Wednesday. All right, so they reset. All these got reset, unfortunately. Um, let me set these back to 100. Negative 50. And this one will do 150 like that. Okay. And then what we can do is we can set these values. We want to be actually to do something with them. So I'm going to set the Y here to negative 100. See how we feel about that. Um, and I'll take another screenshot here in the inspector showing us setting these values like this. And we got to edit that real quick. Let's take another screenshot. Stop. <laughs> All these pop-ups coming up. Uh, interrupting my screenshot. How dare they? Fuji, welcome into the stream. We are here working on some projects for Captain Coders Academy for the classes I'll be teaching here in the fall. So say we're going to set this trajectory down to a negative 100. All right. I've uh, been working all night on Jam Project. Are you working on Pirate Software Jam? Spent some hours making our animation state machine controller work correctly, chilling and eating out. Ooh, nice. Nice. I hope you're enjoying it. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Thank you so much for the ferret dance. <laughs> the yard dumpy. A uh, little dance there. 
All right, the next thing we want to do is we want to actually make our velocity equal to our trajectory. This is so weird. I, this is one of the things that drives me a little bit about this move in slide. We need to update it here. So negative is actually going the wrong direction. Negative is going up. So I need to update this screenshot to actually be positive. So it's coming down like this. So we're going to replace this screenshot I did before. So we're going to set this to 100 on our asteroid. Copy this to clipboard. Come over to our guide here. Pull it in like that. Okay. Now when we run it, there we go. It's going to come down like so. And so we're going to take another screenshot of our source code one more time. And we updated this here to be our velocity is equal to our trajectory. And really we don't need to do this um, every frame. Uh, why velocity doesn't, Zaft, I, it drives me nuts. Uh, it's, it's a little, it's because the magic of move and slide, the magic of move and slide, here we go. And then our last little thing here is we need to do a little bit of a recording here on our game window to show it uh, coming down like that. So we're gonna go ahead and hit restart and then F7. I'm gonna show it moving down like that, but it's gonna get caught on the bottom, okay? So the next thing we wanna do is make it so, oh, these things should be able to move off. Beegs, Beegs, raiding me, you know, Beegs is raiding me. Beegs, how the heck are you doing? How is your stream? How is, you're working on Pirate Software Jam, right? How's it going over there? How is it going? We're gonna delete this first frame. I'm gonna go ahead and save that out here as our uh, velocity moving here. We're gonna add it in. It is the big grade. How the heck was your stream? How's your progress coming along? The theme is uh, like sneaky, uh, shadows and alchemy. Shadows and alchemy. Are you allowed to tell us about your game or are you keeping it secret? My teammates and I have barely killed each other yet. Good, you're still alive. Uh, Infinity Time says, when you want to start streaming, you usually want to open my rate of a myriad of tools. What's a good way to automate all of that? Is it a batch file? Um, I can show you my process. I can show you my process. I don't have a batch file for it. Um, I've just kind of, I would say, simplified the number of things I've opened. A batch file would probably be a decent way to do it as well. Um, a script to automate opening it up. Can't tell if the hats are real or not, they're real. They're real, let's get another hat in here. Renbo, let's get another hat just for you. Let's get, oh no! I'm not, my arms aren't long enough. My arms aren't long enough, folks. There we go. Excuse me, I'm st we're still recovering from, from the uh, coronavirus there. There we go, we got another hat on the stack here. Thank you so much for chicken. Thank you so much for chicken. All right, did I, there we go. Moving velocity, we're gonna add that in here into our project, like so. So this is what we got here. So that's moving towards the bottom. It gets stuck at the bottom. So challenge, challenge. Update each asteroid to have a different trajectory. Okay. Now we want the asteroids to be able to move out of the bounds. Asteroids move out of out of bounds. So I'm curious if this is going to be easy to do or not. Um, oh man, I've had it a couple times. This time I think it was one of the worst. I <laughs> have that many. Yeah, we got. We look. This is where all the powers come from. We get all the powers from the caps. Although drinking water is quite difficult now. Quite difficult. Tani, let me show you my setup here. And I'll show you how I do it. Maybe I should have a batch file for it. But I have this button here, you see. Uh, so you guys only see this small portion of my screen. You guys only see the small part. That you know, Look, magic, magic, magic. So I know I'm going to need a web browser. Okay, so here's kind of how I do it. Um, I'm gonna just minimize that for now, close these extra windows. We've got a lot of windows back here now. Um, 
But yeah, so I have a couple programs that I run, and I'll show you my other screen here in a second as well. So I like to use um, power tools, which lets me snap these into place. So I just know that with my web browser, so I have one, two, three, four, five things open here. My web browser, if I hold shift, it lets me just pop them into place. I have this program for my question queue, just pop it into place. So I have this set up for myself to be able to just drop them and snap them into the location I want. So this is a power tools. Um, and I see both channels I watched merge into one. Welcome in the KV. Yeah, Power Toys. It's a Windows tool. So if you're not on Windows, you, there's probably an equivalent. I know that there's an equivalent on uh, in GNOME. I forget what it's called, but you can do this. Xmonad does a lot of this too. Xmonad isn't going to be uh, mouse drag and drop. And then I happen to have, let's see, can you show my other display? Do I have anything over there I can't show? No. Now my other display looks like this. Nope, that's not it. Desktop one. Here's my other desktop. So the de my other screen looks like this. So my other screen looks like this. Same thing. I have, I'll usually have my Twitch dashboard here and then my chat information here. This is a little preview so I can see what the stream looks like. I have my audio mixer and then I usually have Discord open here as well so I can sort of interact. So that's how I do it. Um, yeah, I hope it's not that I, I haven't found it that cumbersome to open up all of these programs. It takes me less than a minute, I would say, to open all of them. Uh, so I wake up. Sorry, I, I wake up pretty early. I get ready for my stream about 15 minutes before I start. So the time to get everything set up with my stream, do a mic check, do all of my check stuff takes about 15 minutes total. So the setup itself, I don't think takes all that long uh, for me. That's that's just me though. Um, imagine having to load programs to open when you stream. Yeah, Vigs, do you have, do you just, do you uh, do it as well or do you have a program? I forgot to open some things sometimes. I do not like that. I'm just gonna go and write a batch file. Interesting, interesting. Uh, well, you know, to each their own. Um, I guess I've been doing it so long, I just don't forget. I've dropped 28 applications to stream. Do you have your setup on a batch? Uh, do you, be, do you use a batch file to just load it all at once? Um, for what it's worth, you know, you saw mine, I have five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have nine, mine's not 28. But you you have a whole situation on your stream, Beaks. Yours is, is in, insanity. So I want our asteroid to move out of bounds. I'm pretty sure the simple way to do this. Um, you have a button and my stream deck, I don't have it to open up. Can you batch file the open the windows to specific power tool partitions? I don't know if that's true. I'm sure you can. If you can't, I'm sure you could do it with a uh, PowerShell script at the very least or some other form here. All right. The hats are getting heavy, folks. I'm going to take take some of these hats off. I've been going for a while. Uh, sorry, folks. We're going to have a hat stack overflow here. No hats. No hats. We're going to zoom. But we'll zoom in, though. We'll zoom in. You guys can see the damage you've done to my forehead. See the neck? I'm naked. Goodbye, hats. Yeah. My neck is starting to hurt a little bit. So we're going to take them off for now. Uh, let's zoom out. Too close. Too close. I need to get some lighting adjustments. My lighting's been really weird the last few days. I don't know what I changed. Um, the neck workout. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Get it in there. No hat. All right, so we have that. Um, I'm pretty sure on these that I can go into my file here. And I can say that these just don't collide with things, right? Let's find out. There we go. And now they can just move through stuff. So they're not going to collide with things. We're going to end up with an area 2D on them that is going to check bounds. Okay. So that's all we got to do here. We're going to go into our asteroid. So I'm going to show from the main scene here. Uh, we're going to come in. Sorry, we'll click over here. Scene like this. 
And we're gonna show that you can click this button here to open it up. Why even they give the body if they don't collide? I want them to, I want the physics system. I don't want them to be a character body 2D, right? I still want them to move using character body 2D. Character body 2D requires them to have a body. We're gonna give them an area 2D to collide with stuff though. And it's part of it was practice and showing that you can turn things on and off. They will probably collide with some things. What would you do instead? What would you do instead for movement? All right, I still want them to move with the character body 2D. Uh, we're not going to do that, uh, DB9 Dreamer. Uh, we're not going to. We're not going to say that though. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, well, you're not going to say you instead, it's okay to say the word unity, but what should we do instead? Use unity is not an appropriate response. All right. So just going to give you a warning here. Okay. Thank you. On this particular channel, that's not an okay thing to say. All right. Um, It's okay. It's okay. I know you did. I think you were trying to be funny. I know on other streams it can be a little bit. Redston, it's me, Redston. How you doing, friend? Someone who has been using the U word for the last month thought I don't recommend it. Yeah, I got myself into a little bit of trouble at, uh, at one point or another. Redston, how you been, friend? Welcome into the stream. We're having a blast here working on our project. Um, <laughs> the, 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 the U word, the U word. There's a, there's a game engine uh, that brings people together. Had to do a U turn. Okay. Um, <laughs> we're going down the U word now, is it? It's okay. Um, what am I doing? I got distracted here. Ah, uh, yeah. We're going to click on this and then it's going to open this up here. We're going to click on this, select the asteroid like this. We're going to make sure that we select asteroid and then open up in the image editor. We're going to make sure we're on asteroid, select the root node. I got the little tool tip there popped up there. Let's take another screenshot like so. I want to turn these off. We could also make it so it has a mask, so it interacts with other stuff. But for now, we're going to do this. Okay. So we want to make sure that we're in asteroid. 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 And we're going to uncheck this and this. And then we'll have a little discussion about why we're doing that. Double check we're in the asteroid scene. Click on the root node. Verify it here. Disable our collision. And I'll put a little highlight on the collision here. Go ahead and copy this to our clipboard. Pull it in like that. Would it be possible to make all the movement stuff into separate resources that you plug into a character like you have base movement stuff in one resource, jumping stuff? Absolutely. That is following a design pattern that is awesome called, often called an entity component system. I can show you an example of that in our Tofu game. So in my Tofu game, I do exactly that. If we go into my player, I actually end up with these different scripts each for each of the turns. So I have a sloped character controller. This controls it moving on slopes. Animated character, this controls how it animates and close, how we move. This controls how we stomp on enemies. This controls how we jump. So there's different things here for all the different movement behaviors we actually get. I'm making a course, all right? So our, our, our Tofu guy has a bunch of different features. They're all separated into their own scripts rather than one big script there. Ga uh, Gallo, yeah, we are working on creating, I wouldn't call it a tutorial. 
We're creating a class project. So a tutorial would say you exactly what to do. The class project is giving you guidelines on how to get started, but not showing you everything. So we're going through taking screenshots of the project itself. This is gonna be for a class I'm teaching in the fall at my school. So I'm a computer science and programming teacher at a school for ages 10 to 14. Um, yeah, so Ty, that's exactly how I would recommend doing it for anything that's as complexity grows. It's a very common pattern to use. All right. All right. So we got this saved here. Now that we have this. Um, exactly. So it's sort of a mix between tutorial and hands on. So you show a little bit. It's like you give examples and you have students apply it to their own work after that. Okay, Kaden, I know you. Would that work with resources as well as nodes or is it more sensible to use it on nodes? You can do it with resources as well. It's a little bit different on resources because resources don't have, someone correct me if I'm wrong, resources you don't end up nesting resources in unless you have them as properties, right? So you'd have properties that I think you could plug in and then you'd use sort of an interface like thing to pull out the methods that you want to call. Um, so they don't go in a tree, but you could still have a resource that has different properties that you have to specify the behavior. Yeah. Yes, I'm using GDScript. Big, sorry, I missed your, missed your question there. I am using GDScript. Okay. So we have this in here. Now we see that it will go through the bottom of the screen here. Uh, do you have a... A resource for design pattern specific to games? Um, yeah, let me see if I can find it. Game uh, design patterns. Uh, game programming patterns, this website. It's a fantastic website. This book is free. You can just download it, get a free. Uh, oh, do they not have the free? I thought there was a free PDF. Someone tell me, is there a free PDF version of this book? I was under the impression there's a free version. This book is fantastic. Oh, you can read it for free on the web, but you can't download it. Okay. Yeah, I think this is a fantastic. Last thing said, web free. Gotcha. Read now. Yeah. So this is a really good thing to understand generalized game programming patterns, not necessarily for any specific engine. And a lot of these end up being what are called design patterns and object-oriented programming, um, which you might find useful. It's giving names to common things you might see when you're programming that solve common problems. Okay. Uh, now that we have this, I'm gonna go ahead and add in different trajectories to these. So I'll add in a 25, 50, and this one is my headphones just died. There we go. Let me know if there's a weird echo because I'm listening through my computer speakers now. My headphone battery just died. Let me plug them in, get them charging again. <laughs> I normally don't stream this long. I guess they weren't fully charged when I started. Um, they usually last the full six hours. Sounds good to you? Good, good. I think my microphone setup should be fine so I don't have it. It's more so that I hear it because uh, I talk so loud. I talk super loud. Uh, let's try negative 50, um, 125 here. All right, so we'll have different asteroids moving across this way. So we have our asteroids sort of floating around like this. So let's go ahead and record this. Won't they become outdated programming pattern books? Oh, if you buy the book, you mean? I don't know if that's true. I think you can use the web for free, right? Any book, any book can become outdated, sure. There are classic concepts that I think are pretty, um, I don't wanna say universal, but are long lasting. So we should end up with different things. I'm gonna let them wait and float off the edges here. They're fairly stable, exactly. Especially because it's non, it's language agnostic from what I understand. At least those ones are. Um, asteroids floating off screen. 
but the web is it's free on the web there's no you don't have to buy it and if you do buy it you're supporting someone who has taken a lot of their time to produce content that is free but supporting them can be super nice usually found through common and widespread use they may get slight updates but the concept is what matters um, the music is echoing. All right, I'm going to turn down my speaker a little bit then. I'm actually just turn the music off there. All right. Okay. Um, okay, we saved this. Let's go ahead and pull this out. Pull it out, there it is. Add this to our document here, like so. Beautiful. So we're gonna add that in, we're gonna set those so then they can float off the screen. Okay, so they float off the screen. One thing we want to do is when they leave the screen, and I forget exactly what the line of code to do this is, but we want to make it so when they go off the screen that they end up getting cleared out. And I did this in another project recently. So we're going to go check out that project to remember. This is a great way to, I've done this once. I don't remember exactly what it is, but I know in my projectile here, I have this projectile that in this particular game, the projectiles go off the screen, they get destroyed. Let me plug in my game controller code so I can show this real quick. Um, yeah, and I forget exactly what it is, so I'm gonna go check what it is, Peace on Mars. Visibility notifier node, yeah. But I was gonna show here, in this particular game, we have these projectiles that disappear and they get removed from the game when they can no longer be seen when they're out of the scene view there. So we're gonna go ahead and add that. I was gonna come in here and double check what it is. So I open up here, visible on screen notifier. So there's this magic, this not magic, there's a special node for this specific purpose, visible on screen notifier. When these things are no longer visible on the screen, we wanna go ahead and get rid of them. So we're gonna go into our asteroid scene here. We're gonna create a child node like this. All right, we're gonna add one more section here. We're gonna create a section. Create it. Removing asteroid when not visible. Programming is magic though. It feels that way sometimes, All right? So we're gonna go in here and click add child. <clears throat> like so, take the screenshot. I'm likely not going to actually have this be in the tutorial this little screenshot here, I'm gonna take it just in case, just to remind myself, but we've done this enough times that I feel like we can say, add it as a child here. What was that sniper scope exactly? Add a child node visible on screen notifier here. Visible on screen notifier, 2D. Take a screenshot of this. Fortune's favorite. It's been an absolute blast. Thank you so much. I wish my voice wasn't fading. I've been sick. Ah, the stupid cursor's in the way. Um, I wish my voice, I wish I wasn't uh, uh, recovering from being sick because my voice is starting to go here. So we're going to have to wrap up in the next 45-ish minutes. So we're going to make it the full six hours. Um, but we're going to come in here and say this is a node that we want to be able to find. So copy to clip, we're gonna do a one, give it the old one, two, three here. Copy this to our clipboard and pull it in. Yeah, if you would like to see more stuff and we're gonna be doing Godot stuff all this month, for the rest of this month, probably into next month as well. I wanna learn a lot more about Godot. Since I'm gonna be teaching Godot for the first time, I wanna make sure I have enough information to be able to help out my students beyond what we're learning in the class, but it's gonna be an experimental class where we're sort of learning together in that class. So I'm super excited to be doing it and learning more about Godot myself. Okay. 
Now, this is the first time we're going to be talking about a signal. Sorcery Story, thank you so much for hanging out. Have yourself a beautiful day. All right, so we're going to make sure that our students know to go over here, like so. Okay. Um, and then we're going to add in screen exited. This is the signal that we're going to add in. So we're going to, this is the first time we're going to be starting to use signals here. I wish I could get that highlighted information without, all right, we're going to hide this just so that we can get that in there. Yeah, perfect. Okay, open our engine here. We're gonna make sure that we're on our asteroid. Click on the notifier we just added. Click on the node tab and look for the signal here. So we're gonna double click this. And I wanted to make sure that this emitted when this visible on screen exits the screen. So we're gonna make sure we're on asteroid click on our notifier, click on our node, and then we're gonna double click on this one here. So we're gonna go ahead and copy this to our clipboard, add this in like so. Go ahead and come back, bring this back up. I haven't had a lot of questions. Usually on my channel, people know how to ask questions. So I think people here may not know how to interact with this. And so not super useful today, but that's okay. And this is gonna pop up and we're gonna show that we want to connect it to our asteroid node. Okay. Open in our image editor. We're going to show that we want to make sure this is clicked. And then we're going to connect it. It should be all the default settings, so there shouldn't be much, but just verify that asteroid selected and then click connect. Copy this to our clipboard. I love this about the editor. Connecting these signals in this way is super, super easy, super straightforward. I love this so much more than other event systems I've seen in uh, game editors here. So this is going to actually create this code for us. We want to open up our asteroid script here. And see that it generated this for us. So asteroid, it generated this method, this function for us. Super cool. One of the coolest things about Godot is how easy to get their event. They call them signals. Uh, style, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Does attend, uh, attending the stream make my points go up? Tani, I'm not sure. I don't think so. I don't think so. But uh, if anyone wants bonus points, I'll have you guys join my channel. I can give everyone points over there. If you're over in my channel, I'll give everyone points here. It should, be, it should let me do that um, for hanging out with us. All right, so now, basically, we're gonna queue free. This is the one line of code we have to add in uh, here to our script. like this, and this just says, go ahead and remove yourself from the scene, copy to clipboard. And we can verify this in our remote inspector. You in the back, pay attention. Thank you so much for the hey. Let's come on over to our main, sorry. 2D here. Do we run this? Let's make sure everything seems to be working. Yeah, I turned the background music off. My headphones died, and so there was a weird echo. So I went ahead and turned the background music off. Thank you for the heads Our up. dopamine. Oh, I got turned that it off. fix. <laughs> oh. Thank you for the dopamine. Uh, and so they get removed here. Yeah. So if we refresh go to remote, we should see them disappear as they move off. Yeah, so I'll go ahead and record this, show students how to access this. So from our main scene here, when we're running, we wanna add a little print screen here 
that shows while the game is running. There is this in the scene, we can click on remote here. Like this. I'm actually gonna go ahead and switch over to remote. Let's refresh. Click on remote. That's too slow. All right, let's try again. Did we? Did I hit four thousand followers? <laughs> poor, poor Sijian. Sijian's gonna lose his mind. Sijian was my one thousandth, two thousandth, and four thousand follower. Did you unfollow to refollow me? Did we just hit four thousand? That's hilarious. Got a lot of follows today, apparently. Well, thank you guys so much for all the follows. Sij oh, I bet we're not quite there. Let me go check on my dashboard. Sidian's going to be so upset if we actually hit 4,000. Um, no, I'm not actually at 4,000. Yeah, no, no, we're not actually at 4,000. I'm only at 3,960. It just rounds up. So we still got 40 followers to go. Um, yeah. Um, remote by default in the editor settings. I still want to show my students how to get there. So I'm not going to do it just, well, I guess we could do it. Remote. Um, oh, it's in the editor, not project settings. I don't know if it's delayed. I think, uh, where are you seeing the 4K? So I see the 4K. Tani, are you sure? I don't think I actually have 4K. Because uh, it shows 4K here, right? So I see 4K here. Yeah, so this is incorrect. It rounds up. It rounds up to by 50s. Uh, so just so you know, it says 4K here before I actually have 4K. Uh, what does the bot say? <laughs> There's definitely a lot of songs, too. I didn't get 100 follows today for sure. Um, I can double check what the bot says. I don't think I have 4,000. We'll see what it says tomorrow. Okay. Let's, uh, uh, yes, I was in this process here. I wanted to switch to remote and take a screenshot here. I'm too slow. <laughs> We're going to go into our editor settings. Uh, editor settings. We're going to go over to remote. Um, switch remote on scene view. We're going to do that. Yeah. So now we'll hit play and go ahead and print the screen here so we can show over in our scene view that we can click on remote in our scene view and see the local things. And then I'm gonna record a little video showing this going down. JD, welcome into the stream. Hope you're having a wonderful day, my friend. How you been? How, how you doing on this beautiful Wednesday? Hope you're having a beautiful Wednesday. So we wanna be able to verify this. Apparently this didn't copy to my clipboard. There we go, copied it to the clipboard like so. Go ahead and close that in here. Yeah, there we go. And then we are going to record a little video next so that our students can see that as well. This is where I didn't want it to be turned on by default. So I need to turn it off now by default. Go ahead and stop this. We're gonna get our record going. <laughs> Just getting started. Let's do it. Let's do it. Love to hear it. Love to hear it. All right, let's make this bigger. So we're going to go ahead and hit uh, F7 to record. We're going to hit play. Click over to remote. I hate that it closes on us, but we'll be able to watch the asteroids pop off there as they move. There we go. And we'll stop that little recording. Should make that last asteroid move a little bit faster. Okay. And we'll go ahead and save this as verify asteroids destroyed. Like this. 
<laughs> a lot of songs I gotta sing to people. Yeah, I should have been slain, maybe paying attention. I decided not to sing today because I'm sick. Uh, and so my voice, I, like I'm just talking for the past five hours. My voice is already sort of losing itself. So I can't talk too much as it, as it is. Um, we're going we're gonna to be wrapping up here in the next 30 minutes. Um, let me make sure. Uh, wrapping up in the next 35-ish minutes. I start learning Godot today. Absolute beginner gonna document my whole process on stream. Let's go. Any tips on getting started? Yeah. Yeah, tips on getting started. Keep it simple. Add one thing at a time. Ask lots of questions. Join, join a team. If you want to, you can join Captain Coder's Academy Discord. Lots of people there willing to help you out. Uh, I will 100% give Godot a try in my next product certified hype with all I saw so far. Style, I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, we're going to keep going for another 30, 40 minutes, something like that. So so we're not leaving yet. I slept in. How's the class project going? It's going super well. We're getting our project together here. We're documenting. I'm going to come back through and flesh this out. If you want to, anyone can find this document here. We're going to be filling it out, making a little bit. Everything we've done today, we've documented with screenshots here. I'm going to be coming through and cleaning this up adding in written instructions on how to get through this challenges, but all everything we've done so far today is in here. And it's also gonna be on the VOD. You'll be able to go back and watch it if you want. You missed the final exam. You shall not pass, Captain Anosa. Gandalf style, Gandalf style. But yeah, I'm gonna turn this into my class project. It's gonna be the first project students will do in my class um, this fall, this fall. But yeah, if you want to, feel free to join the Discord. Lots of awesome people there. To accelerate your learning, make sure you ask lots of questions, interact with other people, find people who are also learning or want to help you learn. There's so many people on Twitch that want to help you learn as well. Keep coming back to incredible creators. Godot Engine official here has some awesome people coming in all the time. Uh, yeah, so it's going really well. Doing awesome, Godot Engine official. Is that you, Nat? In Lord of the Rings Monopoly, does Grandoff say, you shall not pass, go, you shall not collect $200? I hope so. I hope so. If it doesn't, that's a travesty. It'd be a travesty to waste that joke. <laughs> All right. Verify asteroids here. All right, so now we're going to make sure the asteroids get destroyed as we move up. Want to keep doing this for a week every month? Let's go. Yeah, guys, make sure you follow here. And thank you everyone so much for the follows as well. Be sure you follow here so you can see all the incredible people. There's also a lot of good tutorials on YouTube. It's true. It's true. There's a lot of good tutorials on YouTube. <laughs> Looking for the follow. Yeah, sorry my voice is falling apart here. Yeah, if you guys be sure to follow all the great uh, developers. JD does dev. JD does good dough, folks. Um, I love good dough, Nerd Waffle. We love it. We're, we're big fans here. Okay. We want to do something next. What do we want to do next? Um, Tim's on next month. It's your birthday. You're going to have to uh, check in with them there. All right. So we have this here. We no longer collide. We're going to add in an area 2D so that so we can't move out of these. Score, we wanna make it so we can destroy these things. So adding in a projectile is my next goal here. So the next part is going to removing asteroids. We're gonna add in one here called adding lasers. Lasers, we need, we need to get a uh, Dr. Evil meme uh, real quick, just to make sure, just to, oh, my blur button, there it goes. Uh, Dr. Evil laser meme. Uh, yeah, we need to get, lasers here we go this is we're gonna add this one in here let's go ahead and get this added in lasers uh, copy to clipboard <laughs> million dollars is this one yeah we're gonna add in the laser meme here perfect there we go lasers gonna add in some lasers my lasers are shooting backwards beat that you can do it it's all up to you okay you can make your lasers go forward if you choose to today. All right, I lost my folder here. We're gonna add in our lasers though. Let me go find these on my desk. Uh, these are my downloads folder. Downloads, Kenny Redux, go to our pings. 
effects here. Uh, effects is not what we want. Where is lasers, our lasers folder. So we're gonna have in the tutorial, pick the laser that works best for you. All right, so we'll take a little screenshot of these. We'll add it in here. Print screen, select the laser from the lasers folder that you like the best, copy to clipboard. Here like that, copy it to our clipboard. And then should we make, I guess this doesn't need to be a character body. Yeah, it doesn't. We're just gonna move it using the physics. Do I need, if we move it during the physics up, now I'm confused. Do we get an image of Sudi saying happy birthday, JD? Um, You'll be 42, which is a big number for Douglas Adams fan. JD is turning 84. I turn 18 next month. JD, I feel like you, is it really your birthday? I feel like you had your birthday stream recently. Has it really been a year since it was your birthday? Here. So challenge, we're gonna add a challenge here. Challenge, not really much of a challenge. The first, we're, we're challenge, select, a laser sprite and add it to your project. Everybody is turning 18 next month. One month, one day. Okay. Fascinating. All right, so let's go ahead and add this in here. I'm going to go ahead and choose this one here. Oops. Pull it in like that. Pull into my project up here. And we're gonna create a laser for it here. I'm actually gonna start off, in this case, by creating the laser first. So I'm gonna show the students to create the laser first. So create a folder called laser, and then add it in to the laser folder like so. So I'm gonna have the student say, can you add it to your project and put it inside the folder called laser? Do, 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 copy to clipboard. I guess I should draw. I guess I should draw some stuff on it. Yeah. All right, so we'll take a screenshot like this. We're gonna go ahead and open the image editor. We're gonna select it and say, can you add this in like so? Copy to clipboard. What's happening? Did you did they wanted to go into a new direction or why is there a captain on my screen? We're doing good dough, my friend. We're good doing it up. We're making a project challenge. Um, laser sprite, add it to your pro. Uh, select the laser sprite challenge. Create a folder called laser. Select a laser sprite. Add the sprite to the folder. There we go. You're doing good dough. Amazing as always. Yeah, we're loving it. We're loving it. The captain has morphed into good dough. I am. I am. <laughs> I am inevitable. I am Godot, Captain Godot, Captain Godot. At your service. We're going to create a new scene here. <laughs> We're going to create this scene like this. Open our image editor. <laughs> Shark DLC. When we need to add sharks in. Freedom Forge. Welcome in. How you doing, friend? How, how you doing? How did your... Uh, thank you for the doy, JD. How did your project uh, turn out for the Kenny You gym? in the back, pay attention. Right click on laser, create new. We're gonna, hang on, I want this to be a little bit. Thank you for, oh boy. Thank you for the hey, thank you for the cloud. Let's go. Things are getting crazy over Doi. here. Create uh, a scene. Our dopamine. Oh, I got yeah, that. Yeah, I was having trouble with the cooldowns. Oh. So I just made sure that there was no cooldown on them. Thank you guys so much for the fun. Thank you for the dopamine. Daily doesn't work, so I can't, so, uh, B, because I was able to get Firebot to listen to a different chat, but I wasn't get it, able to get it to send messages to another chat. There was an authorization issue I was running into. It really, really wanted it to be the broadcaster stream. <laughs> we don't have the flavor command, JD. Uh, to click scene here. Add this to our clipboard. We're gonna add it in here like this. Fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it. Yeah. All right. Um, so, our dopamine. we got that. Oh, I got <laughs> that dopamine, Milos. Oh. oh boy, oh people, people are hacking in. We got all that. We got all the hickey hackings. 
All right, going on here. So we're gonna create a new scene like this. We're gonna set it up here. This scene is gonna be called laser, like that. Take a screenshot of this here, like so, and make sure people know that we want to be a 2D scene. We're gonna call it laser. We're gonna click OK, like that. Boom, boom, boom. Copy to clipboard, paste it in like so. And our sleeping contrast showers in the morning will turbocharge jam productivity. <laughs> There's no JDs here. <laughs> you guys are hilarious. Enhance still won't work over there. All right, we got that in here. Only I have the power to enhance. Enhance, 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 enhance. In, oh boy, oh, we're enhancing, we're going crazy. All right, we're gonna create this here. It's gonna create this for us. We're gonna add our laser in like so. All right, so the challenge is gonna be uh, double click to open. We're gonna say double click to open. I'm gonna do this. So we can see all of this together. So the instructions will be double click to open, verify that you're in the laser scene here and that you have exactly one 2D node like this. So one, two, three, like this. And I'll make sure I draw an arrow. I'm gonna draw an arrow down here so that we see this draw. I don't think we need the arrow. Copy this to our clipboard, one, two, three, like so. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you for the clips. You guys, you guys are hilarious. You guys are crazy. Okay, so we have our laser here. The challenge I'm gonna give is to add in our laser sprite here and have it be centered on the screen. So the, the challenge here is to create a scene with our laser centered. So we've done this a couple times now. So we're gonna create, I wanna make sure that we add in a laser sprite. Uh, let me change here to this. I wish it wouldn't show that around it, but that's okay. Okay. So you're gonna make sure, your goal is to add in a laser that is at transform position zero, zero, and has the texture that you chose. Okay. Challenge. Word challenge is maybe, it might be challenging. Challenge, I'm not showing him, it's a friggin' laser, that's right, challenge. Captain Godot, do the fusion dance and turn into Captain Godot, or Godot coder. Which one? Challenge, add the sprite to the new laser scene and ensure it is centered in the scene. There we go, like this. I'm gonna go ahead and add that in like so. Okay. So we should be able to do that. Next challenge, go into your main scene add in a laser to your main scene like this. I'm gonna actually have them add in a couple lasers. Okay, so we'll go ahead and print this screen here. Next challenge. Make sure that they add in three lasers. I'll go ahead and highlight them like this. Open in our image editor. Are you mechanically challenged? We do have mechanically challenged. Be sure to check it out. Yeah, we have a couple more days. I don't know if anyone's gonna be able to finish the portal. I'm sorry, we, I should have been promoting a little bit more. Fear again, welcome in. It's uh, great to see you, my friend. Hope you're having a beautiful day. In your main scene, add in three lasers like so. They should appear on your scene somewhere. Copy to clipboard. It's gonna be the next challenge. So this is why it starts out by showing you how to do things and it quickly moves to not doing the command is still not updated in July's almost over captain. Uh, well, there's gonna be a new challenge in August. There'll be a new challenge. Ralph, welcome in challenge in the main scene. Uh, the first, very first takeover by Pragmatic was making a prototype for your challenge. I know he did the, uh, 
Um, slopes and Loops. Slopes and Loops was a super fun, fun one to do. Um, I had a blast doing that one. Main The main scene had three lasers um, directly below each. Add, and add a laser for each of your asteroids. Be sure to use the laser scene. Okay, like that. Okay, we add the lasers in. We run it, nothing much happens. Uh, give your character multiple hats. <laughs> what we want to do is we want to make these things move. We want to make these things move. So we have to make our laser move. So we're going to add I don't in oh, a challenge I got that here. Fix. Oh. Make the lasers move. We're going to make the lasers move. Hey, Lair accessories do you. sound cool. I was saying Kenny has such a cool asset Doyle. for doing like a character creator. It's several of them, but the one that I think is really cool for doing a character creator is um, this monster builder pack. This monster builder pack is so cool. I did a, uh, I've done a class with this as well. Have a beautiful day, Beegs. Thank you again so much for the raid. Where you have different bodies to select from. You have different ears, like these would be ex like your quote unquote accessories. Ears, you have different eyes. You have arms, different arms, different leg types, and then colors here. So I think this is a really, really cool project to practice doing a character creator. And I think this might be something that we do in our next class as well. Can never appreciate Kenny enough, I know, right? Dev Mashup, how you doing, friend? Welcome into the stream. Hope you're having a beautiful day. We are making a ton of progress on our class project. Here, we're gonna make the lasers move. Next, we're gonna add the lasers, and we're gonna make the lasers move. Okay. In this case, we're gonna add a script to our lasers. So we're gonna click over here, we're gonna click the add script. This one's just gonna be called laser.gd. Like this, it's gonna extend our just typical node 2D. And we're gonna say, so this is gonna be a little bit of a challenge. Okay, like this. Open our image editor. We're gonna add to our laser, add a script laser.gd and it should open up it should look like this here anonymous also welcome back great to have you here laser and then the default script will be selected here and we'll have this code like that go ahead and copy this uh sorry copy this to our clipboard and this in here challenge challenge in the laser scene, add a script to the root node laser. It call it laser.gd and put it in the laser folder. So the result should be this. So this is as we go, the different challenges. Who is this hatless? I, my, my neck was bothering me, so I decided to take the hats off. I'm not hearing all the audio. We had a hat stack overflow. You can find the hats behind me on the floor, but we'll get another one on here just for you, Tony, just for to you. How do, how do you like, how do you like me now? How do you like me now? What do you think about this one? What do you think? Let's see if we can get it so I can still see the screen. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you for the hat. Awesome sauce with the sign of awesome sauce. Yeah. Okay. So what we want to do is actually in our node here, we're going to export a variable. We're going to call this one speed. We need to make Godot hats. Ooh, we could do Godot hats. And our default speed, we're gonna do 500, maybe? 500, we'll set it up here so we can have this export variable. Get rid of this, we can get rid of this ready. And then we wanna change this. Let's go ahead and have it delete everything and change it to look like this. All right, so we're gonna delete some stuff, delete everything, we're gonna make our node look like this. Our script looked like this to start out. Hang on, let's take a screenshot of everything that we have here. We can explain it all in one screenshot. Okay, so we're gonna say on our laser, change it, delete the extra code, we're gonna do this. So on our laser, delete the code like this. In our inspector, we should now see this 
over here, just a value that we can set in the inspector if we'd like to. Okay, go ahead and copy this over. Oops, save directly. I don't even know where that went. Okay, there we go. So we have this basic code here. We want to add into our function physics process delta here. We want to update our position. We're going to actually modify our position di directly. So we're going to do our global position is going to be equal global position. Can we do it x here equals five? Yeah. I believe we can do our global position dot x plus equals our speed times delta. So we can add a physics process here. Let's see if this is going to work for us. There we go. And it should be in the y direction. Should be in the y direction like so. And it should be in the negative speed direction uh, like that. Um, I'm doing well. Sorry about not posting a mini showcase. No worries. But after I got the hot bar working, I thought, why not design all of the rest of the UI bar? Let's go. Nothing wrong with making some progress. Uh, things coming out on the one side, like the beanies and the gears. Yeah, Captain got his own hat business running. It's true. It's true, 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 true. All right, so we have this going on here. And so these are moving in the wrong direction. So what we can do over here is we can update this. All right, so we're going to take a screenshot of this. This is the new code that we want. And we're going to show the students, and we'll have a little bit of an explanation of it, saying that this is the code that we want to add in. Copy this to our clipboard. We're going to update our code one more time, like so. And then what we can do is we can run it. We can run the code here and I'm basically going to say, can you get the code to fix? Goob, how are you doing? Well, 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 isn't our amazing Godot? Well, yeah, we have an awesome Godot community. Uh, Goob, how have you been? Let's go ahead and record this now. If all went well, we should see this. Uh, let's go ahead and record our scene here. And then we're going to tell the student that they need to fix it. Um, well, that didn't work. <laughs> Stop. Record. We almost got it. What is weird? There we go. All right, hang on. Hang on. Can we restart this, please? Oh, I see the, I'm hitting the button here. There we go. They move off the screen. Ah, I moved, I didn't mean to move the mouse. Let's try again. Record, we're gonna get it. We're gonna get it. Make the students fix it. Hunted Storm, that's exactly right. You make the students fix it. So the issue is that they're going off the bottom of the screen. So we intentionally wrote the, didn't intentionally, I actually wrote it incorrectly on accident. But now we can say, okay, what do you think is the problem here? What are different ways? It turns out there's different ways you could fix it. You could change it in the inspector. You could change it in the code. What do you want it to do? What does speed mean in this case? Verify, verify asteroids destroyed. We're going to say lasers wrong way. But this is how you get students to start doing the thinking. How do we think? We don't just show them the correct way to do things all the time. We want to show them sort of an incorrect way to do something and get them to try and solve it. Try and solve it. Lasers wrong way. So we're going to take this. We're going to add it into our document here. Lasers went the wrong way. What's wrong here? So we'll say challenge. Challenge. I don't know why the colors are all weird. We might have to fix that. Um, how to make the lasers go toward the top of the screen. Yeah. Okay. And then the answer to that is there's a couple ways I can change this so that in my laser here I have negative 500. I could also make it so my code that my laser code. <laughs> um, what's going on here? Oh, I have the wrong thing selected. I could make this be a negative speed. I could subtract the speed. There's a bunch of different ways I can do it. I'm going to do negative speed for now. Um, and of course, in my main scene, uh, in my main scene, it doesn't like that. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this be a minus here. There we go. 
And so if you have it working, if you have it correct, go into my main scene, I'm gonna slow my lasers down so that they're a little bit easier to see when I do the recording. Here, recording, screen recording. Let's go ahead and restart F7. Here, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start my recording and I'm just gonna cut out the beginning. I'm gonna start the recording here. I'm gonna hit restart and I'm just gonna cut the beginning from it. There we go, so that they're going the correct direction. So I'll go ahead and find the spot where I want to. That's what I should have done from the beginning. There we go, we can drop those. Um, there's an option to record a specific window. Maybe, I, there is, I've never used it. It would make sense. I've never found that I needed to use it. Having it be wrapped around there usually works fine for me. Okay. I should have renamed that file, but that's okay. We can pull this in like that. <clears throat> so now the lasers are going the right way. All right, we're gonna wrap up here for now. I don't think I have time to finish up the next segment here. So the next thing that we're gonna want to add is making the make the lasers move, and then we want to make the lasers destroy stuff. Heading to make lasers destroy asteroids. So there's a little bit more of triggering this. The voice in my head would never let me have non-perfect boundaries on my things. When you say non-perfect boundaries, what do I have a non-perfect boundary? Oh, like on my sprites? You typically want your hitbox to be actually like a little bit smaller. Um, I list a lot of you, but it looks like you got a lot done. Yeah, we made a lot of a lot of stuff. We're gonna be keep working on this, but we're gonna wrap up for now. Let's review what we managed to accomplish. We're gonna find someone to raid out to. Um, now, if you have someone specifically you want to raid into, let us know. Bit Dash, welcome in. It's great to see you, my friend. Bit Dash software with the raid. Let's go, Bit Dash software. Raid and Godot official. Thank you so much for the raid. How was your stream? What were you working on? Tell us all about it. Wonderful to have you here. Wonderful to have you here. We have been working on a space shooter here today. This is what we've managed to accomplish so far. So we made a, we're working on a game. We have a ship that moves around. It doesn't collide with these yet. Doesn't collide with these yet. So we have a ship that moves around. We have asteroids that move around. And we have lasers that move up on the screen so far. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we'll see who we're gonna raid into. Um, I don't know if, if Nat has someone that we specifically wanna wait, former takeover. Mr. Liptic is good doing on his claw. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for hanging out here. We had a lot of fun. If you guys want to see where this project is going, you can bookmark this page. The, the entire project will be available at this link when I'm finished with it. Right now, it's just all of our screenshots. We're gonna go in and add in text. We're gonna break it up into chapters. It's gonna be multiple files, but this will be the core root file for it. So if you want to bookmark this so you have access to it later, feel free to do so. We will be continuing working on this tomorrow, Friday, to finish it up as well over on Cap on my uh, stream. Everyone loves Captain Coder. Awesome takeover stream. I had an absolute blast here. So if you want to join Captain Coder's Academy, see all the fun stuff that we do, feel free to join us over there. Be wonderful, wonderful, wonderful time here. I uh, let's find someone to raid here. We have a couple options. We have several options. Um, we have, um, let's see, JD had recommended Mr. Oh, Mr. Ecliptic is a previous streamer. Yeah, Mr. Ecliptic is pretty awesome. We also could do, is Johnson doing Godot? Ridiculous shipping game dev. Yeah, that could be fun. Uh, Lynch makes games. Lynch makes games. I should be uh, Lynch makes games here. Yeah, Lynch makes games. Building a psychological horror game. This is in Godot. Awesome. Been going for an hour and a half. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's raid Lynch makes games. Um, I'll text. I'll send this to you for you. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Excuse me. 
Yeah, so we're going to raid Lynch Mix, mix, mix Games. Here. Thank you, everyone, so much for hanging out with me on this beautiful, beautiful day. Um, yeah, I sent it to you on Discord. I also pasted it in chat for you to get there. Um, new people sound cool. Yeah, let's do it. Lynch Mix Games, awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. Um, thank you guys so much for hanging out. I will be back tomorrow. Uh, on cap on the captain coder here on twitch i'll be back on friday thank you guys so much for hanging out have a beautiful day remember to keep coding keep growing keep being the best you you can be you're welcome back anytime have a beautiful day bye bye love you guys